Weekly. So get it in your head. Check the back seat. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. Crossover. Oh, killer crossover. Just crossover. It just crossed him over. Dance to another victim to the crossover. Just cross him up and oh. sit him down. <laughs> Time for the crossover powered by Every Level Concrete Repair in Omaha at everlevelconcrete.com. John and Josh are out at the yard again for day number two. Gentlemen, good afternoon. Yo. Hello. Uh, so how is it compared today, uh, compared yesterday to today weather-wise? Windier. I, oh, God. This is ridiculous. Oh. This is crazy. It's, I mean, Is the wind coming into the booth or is it going over the top? No, no, no. It's still blowing out. Okay. It's still blowing out. What was your drive in like? You went, you went against it most of the way today. Yeah, it was uh, It was a little rocky. Yeah. But not as bad as last night. Rocky? It picked up last night. No, it wasn't that bad, Nick. Um, nice. But, <laughs> but yeah, and last night was weird. I didn't realize that there was rain in the area. You know, it never rained here during the game. Uh, we but... got some sprinkles. We got some sprinkles in the stands. Okay, well, it wasn't noticeable. Uh, but anyway. I walked banks and it was sunny, but also raining on me a little right. bit. It was one of those nights. But when I left the ballpark, I hit about two or three different patches along the interstate where it was like sopping wet. Like it had just downpoured. Interesting. And then, and then like a quarter mile later, it'd be gone. And then <laughs> another two miles later, oh, here it is. It's sopping wet again. And look, if you look, Stop you know, boys. you have some, you, if you see, there's some standing water, not a lot, but there's some standing water there at the end of the oh, yeah. upper deck. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's so, it's, it's so cloud or shady over here. Yeah. Rather. It's sopping wet. Yeah. So the sopping boys. Yeah. So it was just really weird. <laughs> but yeah, the wind, the wind is blowing straight out though. Last night we only had one home run hit and it had nothing to do with the wind. Mm-hmm. I wanted to see some dongs last night. I was disappointed. I mean, Nick, you there's, the, inter- could there's you, the internet, though, Nick. Could you imagine that if that grand, the grand slam dong, when the bases were loaded? If that would have donged, if it would have donged. That would have been the best dong oh, I've ever man. seen. You just got to call Ben well, North. Nick, if you would have stayed home last night, you could have watched many dongs last night hit by the Cubs. Oh, how many dongs did they hit? I think they had like five. Oh, the Rockies oh had a dong. Wow. It was a two-run yes. dong. The Cubs had many more dongs. All right, I think we need to stop saying dong. By the way, Josh, sure? it's still sopping wet. <laughs> it is. Is it sopping dong? Sopping, sopping, sopping. <laughs> sopping dong. That's gross. It's. I'm excited to listen to my friends John Bishop and Connor Happer on the call tonight. Which we yeah, all are we know sure Happer's on. We tonight? all we all know. Yeah, you're not going to cancel it again, are you, Happer? I like can you confirm that I will be on the broadcast tonight. I'll be I'll wow. be down there in just Hello? a few minutes. I'll be, be down, down there yeah. in just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Who's yeah, calling? Nick, 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 don't yeah, don't come up not tonight. Yeah, please don't listen to the grum today. You'll be confused as to who's coming on to the show uh, yeah. on the game tonight. Yeah, yeah. thanks. All this right. is always scheduled. Everyone was <laughs> everyone knew the schedule, apparently. Except for you. We had a good laugh about it yesterday as Nick and I were waiting for the show to go on the air. And yeah. He heard me talking live. Yes, yeah, he was right behind us. About <laughs> remember how, how how Connor was right behind you. Yes, that was he live. had a good laugh. Yeah, he yeah, had yeah. a good laugh about that. Yeah, we had to turn off. We had to turn down our microphone. Shh, we're Shh, on the air, Nick. Nick. And you're not even supposed to be here. It's supposed to be Connor. Yeah, exactly. How did the uh, How did the new scorebook work out for you, John? Did you like it? Oh, uh, pretty good. Pretty good. I like it. It 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 still takes a little time to get used to it. It does. They, it's a little bit smaller mm. in terms of the actual the squares Speaking where you dogs, insert you know what true. happens. It's not on each about plate. the size. So I do have to adjust to that a little bit. If I had a chance to edit it, um, you can probably. Well, I don't have the software to edit a PDF. Oh, well, you got to get that. You, you got to get some that. Adobe Acrobat. Yeah. Yeah. You got to. Oh, is that how you can do and that? And you know how expensive that is? Oh, it's it's like 20 bucks a month. So if yeah. you get on the cloud, do you get on the Adobe cloud? You get everything. And so you could design. But it's still like 20 bucks a month. Yes, correct. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot. Remember when you could that. just more buy. than HBO. Yeah. Sure. Remember when you could just buy things. And it's you the have same them? amount as getting all of the Royals games a la carte on, mm. ba- on the Bally's whatever the hell it is nick i do remember that when i was in college a long time ago i remember going to the student union 
And they had this cool thing for students where you could buy the Microsoft suite for like 20 bucks. Yeah, that was awesome. It was way cheaper. And it was like, sweet. Now I had no, no pun intended. And now I have it. Now but now it probably this. costs. Now is it probably like a costs, two bedroom suite with X baths for each It's bedroom. just like Excel everywhere. It's a four toaster uh, suite. There's a lot of dongs in oh, there. Oh, yes, yes. Is it, is it, does it have a four toaster garage? <laughs> no, sadly not. You can only edit things. By the way, everyone is enjoying the dong conversation. Uh, David says Nick better rack himself for saying I want to see the big dong. Uh, sales director Stacy says I own a triple B blue and red shirt that says here for the dongs. Nice. Nice. Many people like dongs. I love dongs a dong. Are- Dongs are great. All balls should be long ball. I'm not a small ball boy. I'm a long ball. Oh, boy. you don't like a bunt? I'm okay with bunt on occasion, but I like wow. a long ball. Anti, mm. anti- sindelar Yeah, there was only there were only two bunts last night. One ended up a strikeout, and the other one was an out. It wasn't it wasn't a great night for bunting. Yeah, they Creighton, tried to bunt more. Crane is doing this thing this year where they always show to bunt, but then they never bunt it. Mm. That's right. They, they, you, you will, will never, never bunt this. this. You will never bunt yeah. this. They're doing that a lot this year. Never, now, they, now their trick is to get thrown out at home plate in the most unorthodox <laughs> yeah. ways possible. I'm going to throw it all the way over that, there. That, that play in the sixth inning last night was one of the dumber. That was weird. Ridiculous plays I've ever seen because, you know, it's a sh- runner at third, less than two out, shallow fly ball to left. Garrett Anglum just sails one. I mean, he, 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 he overcompensated for the wind and he sails it over home plate. It hits off the catcher's mitt. But the pitcher is backing him up. Meanwhile, the runners, ra- the runners, runners racing home because like, oh my god, it's an overthrow, and the pitcher then hits. Can't remember. Uh, it was the it's new like third the, baseman, yeah, uh, Heft for Nebraska. I think uh, was the new third baseman, and basically tagged him, running him down from behind at home plate. It was the dumbest, best play I've ever seen mm. made. Put Benny Hill in the back of that. Well, no, because it actually ended up it ended up good for Nebraska. It didn't it wasn't like uh, an abject failure. It wasn't like a Rockies play. Okay, mm. got him. Yeah. Got him. Yeah, yeah, and it wasn't a, a toot bland either. Like you know, you you got to yeah. run on that. You know, so it's right. not the worst thing in the world. Josh, you know what a toot bland is? Uh, is that like what uh what's his name did at the end of the two thousand one World Series to give the Diamondbacks <laughs> the win? <laughs> No, Amazing. it's not like that. That's what I would get because <laughs> when I hear toot, what's it a toot bland? A toot bland, a toot bland. Because I, when I hear that, I think of just like a little, you know, like a, a little a yeah. duck snort. A bloop. No, a it's duck not, snort. It's not that. It's not that. No, I don't. I don't know what this is. A toot what bland is, is when you are. It's a, it's an acronym thrown uh, out on the base pass like a nincompoop. Oh, wow. that's fun. They I tried like really that. hard to make that acronym work. I like Who's it. It works. With that Craig Council. No, it wasn't Craig Council. No, it was, uh, it was a small Rod- white guy. No, no, it was. Uh, oh wait, Rodriguez. was it Gonzalez or Gonzalez? Luis, Luis, Gonzalez. Luis, Luis Gonzalez. Who scored the run? Was it, it that Tony? Was I think it was Tony Womack. Tony Womack hit the double in that inning. And didn't yeah. he score the game-winning run in the '97 World Series too against Cleveland for maybe, the Marlins? Maybe it was Craig. He Council. might have. Okay, because I thought that that guy scored this the game-winning run in two I, World Series. I feel like I can remember Craig Council with the his same arms up. celebration. Yeah. yeah. Happer, doesn't it always come back to the 01 World Series? I, I was amazed that you went to that right away. I, was, I know. I'm it's sorry. Like, it's almost like that's the, it's like a celebration. It's, I that's the that only thing, thing you know about baseball. Hey, is that like when the 2001 World Series happened? I can I can tell you about I'm trying to remember the last World Series that I can really give you like opinions and takes on. It's probably 04 when the Red Sox. No, you know, I did watch. The 14 and 15 and 16 World Series. I have many takes on those. Royals. Many takes on those. Uh, let's seconds. see. The the 15 World Series, It w- I'm bummed because the, it ended on a Sunday, and I went to a Dallas Cowboys game, drove to yeah. Oklahoma City, I believe, to spend the night to save a little cash because I had to come home anyway. And so missed basically the whole thing. Got there right before extra innings. Saw all those runs scored. It was in the, it was in, in the, that in very the, game that Eric game Cosmer five. could have gotten thrown out on the bases like a nincompoop, but instead oh. Lucas Duda wee threw the throw all the way to the backstop and the Royals. Thank won. you, Mets. Yes, thank you, Mets. Good job yeah. by the Mets. See, I was bummed that it didn't. I like seeing clinchers at the home ballpark Me or home too. arena, home stadium. Of the team, especially when I'm rooting for that team, and I was obviously rooting for the Royals. Well, but go Royals. The Cubs happened in 2016 in Cleveland. Yep. 
But it might as well have been a home game. Yeah, there were oh, a nice. lot of Cub fans there. Incredible baseball game. They made Incredible a shirt about baseball it. Game. I always see that they shirt. Did. It was like yes. something about a night in Cleveland. My favorite game was played on a yeah. November night in Cleveland. What's up with all I, those uh, shirts? So many shirts came out of that World Series, John. It's, so, it's a famous World Series. Yeah. It's a very good World Series. My, some say the best. One of my best friends. Series. Some say the world the world peaked at that moment. I mean, it's been all downhill from there. I would agree with that, John. <laughs> uh, Especially took a steep down. Uh, yeah, just Cleveland. a few days later. This just, just took wrong. One of my best friends, dearest of friends, uh, he is a huge Cubs fan, and I had him in Secret Santa one year, and I bought him these custom coasters that had – I should get this for you, John. It has the – that's a score card, a box score for the game. Very cool. Oh, that's cool. Who started the My game? My son bought, bought some coasters from the Rams Super Bowl that was the, the showed the play design. Oh, that's fun. For which play? For, the game-winning for touchdown? The game where there was like, I think it was game-winning touchdown, the sack at the end. And there might have been oh, a couple. Fun. Others. That's fun. Yeah. Awesome. What, what a my, gift. One of my favorite things that I have is um, from from the 2014 Royals run. It is a picture side by side of every front page of the Kansas City Star from well, that's cool from October of that year, and all the headlines and all the pictures and stuff like that. You could track it because newspapers still existed in yeah. 2014. Wow. It's a, a good what? time. A news then. what? A news. A news yeah, man, a they news put it on paper, Nick. It's pretty wild. It leaves inks on your fingers. Why didn't they just put it on their phones? <laughs> mm, great question. Damn well, because, is it an app? Because there were no screens on phones back. It wasn't a mm. vlog. It was a real thing that happened. There's no such thing as not a vlog. <laughs> oh yeah, I did watch the final vlog this morning. Yeah. I still haven't. Oh, you still have it? It made me sad that the end of the of the Vegas trip was there and we're getting in our fancy limo and Happer's hey, having a large Coke. Don't be cost. sad because it's over. Smile because it happened. Mm. And look what it begat. What? Because of because of my very constructive... Oh, don't bring this up. Nick seems like he's very, in a good mood. I'm my fine. very constructive criticism of uh, Nick's vlogging. Here we go. What was the constructive it, part? It, <laughs> the constructive part. Nice, Nick. The well constructive played. part is that we have created the Grim Vitational. Oh, baby, that's right. Which Nick, I asked Nick about it again this morning, and, and? he still seems a little bit concerned. Oh, come on! But ultimately, I, I'm down. I would like to do. He this. is. This would be wow. great. Down. Listen to the tone. Much like the Bart tone. Torvik to come yep. on the show. Exactly. Yeah. Wow, that is quite the tone. The Grim Vitational. He's uh, definitely like still not happy about he's not happy about that. He's yeah. Like, oh, just imagine the fun we'll have. I had people reach out to me about yesterday's crossover. Yeah. Saying Nick didn't sound very interested. Many people on many yeah. sides. Yeah. This thing's gonna take off. This thing's gonna take off. It's gonna explode like fireworks on the fourth of July. And nice. Nick's gonna be on the sidelines going, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Does it make it better or worse it, for us that Nick is is so hesitant about it? I mean, it does in a way. It kind of makes it funnier because then we're going to really get into this, yeah. and the listeners will right. be, and Nick will be it's all kind of what I'm thinking. The well, hesitation when, is only because I don't trust you guys. Just to be clear, that's and, all yeah, this, and then when this does blow up, instead of having to split the proceeds five ways, it'll four be ways. four ways. That's great. Yeah, mm. for our own, we'll be raising yeah. money for uh, incredible organizations. Meanwhile, Nick won't get a cut in some. Poor yes. organization will be left dollarless. They won't get yes. money. These, these yep. wonderful organizations that we're planning on helping with our proceeds from the Grim Vitational. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. These great organizations like John Bishop Fund. Uh, Aaron in Papillion Fund. says Edgar Renteria had the series winning hit of the 97 World Series and then ended the 04 World Series by getting out for Boston. Was but were you talking about of? who scored the run, though? I was talking about who scored the run, I'm yes. I'm sure okay. that's look. Uh, we can look. I'm going to look. Oh, yes. There well, is Womack had the double that tied it in the ninth. All right. Let's see. 1997. I don't recall if he was the one that scored. I'm pretty sure I can remember Craig Council running in there with his arms up. Let's see. Uh, Let's see. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. Bottom of the what? 11th yes, Council, 97. Council scored the game winning run in uh, 97. So now we got to go to the 01 World Series. Council scores unearned. That's and right. it was it was Luis Gonzalez who wow. got the hit. The, the, oh, no. here's here's a list of the Craig back. Council. Look at Boom. Josh. Good job. You're of baseball. baseball. You get it. I love baseball. Here's love the baseball. batters that batted in the bottom of the 11th of Game Seven of the of the '97 World Series. Uh, okay. Bobby Bonilla, Greg Zahn, Craig Council, Jim Eisenreich, Devin White, Edgar Renteria. That is the '90s. Wow. Jim Eisenreich. Yes. Exactly. What a name. Wow. 
former Royal Jim Man, Eisenreich. Poor Mike Schaefer. Poor, poor, poor Mike Schaefer. That's okay. Yeah, I was bummed about that one. Again, another example. The, the Marlins ruin everything for everybody. Well, the Marlins, for the longest They're time, the had worst never franchise lost a ever. playoff series. Uh, right. Up until, like, what, three, two or three years ago. Yeah, the COVID, the COVID year, right? Year, yeah. They beat the yeah, they beat they they beat the Cubs. They beat the two. Cubs, and then they lost. And then I think they lost the next one. But yeah, I, uh, the Marlins literally ruin everything. There is an argument to be made. They are the worst franchise ever in the history of everything. Oh, well, what's wrong about we don't like them winning the 03 World Series? We, Hell no. Josh Beckett. They beat the Yankees. No. Yeah, but it, it they came had no after, business being there. Remember, Happer, it came after what could have been the coolest World Series ever: Cubs versus. Red Sox, and instead it was Marlins versus Yankees. That blew. What year man. was that? Oh three. Who would have uh, liked the Cubs Red Sox World Series? That everybody, everybody. No, America. No, you, you guys, you guys talk about the the Boston uh, vacation of America all the time. That, that hasn't happened yet. That though. was before the Boston vacation of ever. And besides, John still liked Bill Simmons stopped. in 03. We could have. I didn't even it. know who he was. It's amazing, dude. That would have been so. Yes, cool. the Cubs would have stopped it. World Series, Cubs versus Red Sox, those two historic ballparks, those two teams who hadn't won the World Series at the time since you 1918 just, and 1908. Yeah, yeah, you just want yeah. uh, you just want Bartman to still be in in everyone's life. Bartman, he would just be some uh, guy. He'd probably have a podcast instead, now. Instead, now. instead of being a, an on. obvious Marlins plant in the stands, then now he's <laughs> you know that's the question. <laughs> Alex if Gonzalez Steve... would have still been your favorite player, John. Yeah, if Alex no. Gonzalez doesn't boot that double play, what is Steve Bartman doing in 2024? Does anyone he's probably ever... hosting a podcast? Does he's probably ever... planning the Grim Vitation. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he's a listener of the show. No. He, he would be invited to the Grim Invitational as the honorary first for all. Because we wouldn't he even would know be. who he is. Right. Does anyone ever call Alex Gonzalez a Gaz? No. They called him. No, they called him a lot of names. After that, it did not turn out very well for him. No. Mm. No. His what career, happened with him? Uh, he pretty, I, I think he disappeared. Mm. <laughs> You know, Off the face a lot of, of a lot of people who do Chicago wrong end up disappearing. Yeah, we don't oh, know wow. where uh, we don't know where Bartman lives anymore. He's somewhere in Florida, right? Isn't that what we decided? Alex, that ESPN no the magazine story. Do you remember that story? Yeah, I don't. Uh, Alex, this writer like found him at some office. That, I mean, you got to in this day and age, you have got to give him a lot of credit. Yes, for being able to hide as he has been able great, to hide. Great point. He did a great job. Uh, by the way, Alex Gonzalez played for. Uh, like 10 more, 11 more years after this. He played all the way up until 2014 with the Tigers. Hmm. Oh, the 2014 Tigers had a very interesting ending to their season as well. When the Delman Young down the left field line, crazy times in Baltimore, then that team got swept out of the playoffs by the Kansas City Royals. Mm. I always bring up the 01 World Series. Happer always brings up the 2014 Royals. <laughs> I sure do. John, John, you barely bring up the Cubs. It's my Roman run. Empire. That's your, it is it's, your Roman it, Empire. That's what that's the fair. kids are saying. Yeah. Um, it's my Roman Empire. Hey, John brings up the Cubs in general, though. I think just every Cubs game yeah. is John's. Yeah. Yeah. Because I live in the here and now. Oh, do you? I live yeah. in the present. How nice. about the Rams, John? Oh, yeah, I'm you, living in the present. You do go back in time with the Rams. You're always like, yeah, remember yeah. the old days? Oh, oh, wow. Two years ago. It was a long time a ago, long John. A long time ago. Wings were cheaper back in 2021. <laughs> they were. Everything was cheaper back then. It was a different time. I did that. Everything was cheaper, including our soda in the pop machine. It was oh, under a dollar back I then. I miss 85 cents, Dr. Pepper. I used my card to purchase a bag of chips and a Diet Coke, and I it was $3 total. Three! Yeah. Dude, you, that is stupid. Back when we were in high school, Happer, we yeah. could go buy meals at mcdonald's for three dollars i know it was i would be full too. yes was three whole mcchickens for that price. i got a dr pepper oh. today and i hit the button and the machine said you will not have this <laughs> you, will not, you will not you will never get this so then you i had to do it this. again and then i only got one dr I mean, pepper i mean as much money as one that dr. machine pepper. has stolen the price <laughs> should be going down it's true because I swear to God, I donated are, I, to that machine. There is not a person who has used that machine more than three times that hasn't lost money in that machine. Nick, are you putting, are you the money. one putting pennies inside of the machine? No, I stopped that after the sticky note got put up. Nick. <laughs> I still want to know who did that. <laughs> I saw, oh, we know who did it. We do? Yes, it's people that don't regularly work in the building. This, oh, oh okay. you don't think it's the same people who... Peter Krenzer? Oh, the Peter man. <laughs> so you guys haven't been here the last couple days. We've had a peanut butter jelly bar set up in our break room. That's true. Have you and heard about this? Yeah. There are people yes. like vultures, animals, who refuse to 
close the peanut butter after they're done with it, close the bags after they're we done, work leave with the jelly out of people. the fridge. Yeah, the, the person who set I can't all this participate. up was discussing this yesterday, and and she had done this before at, at a different company that she was at, and she was like, "Well, I had to adjust it a little bit this time." Because we work with heathens, apparently, who <laughs> yes. can't close the the yeah. bag of bread. She assumed we and... were all adults. <laughs> well, this person this person wasn't here back in the day when we had the old refrigerator, and people would leave there from the 1940s. That's true. That was uh, a bad. We were fridge. basically growing a science experiment in the refrigerator. It I was hated disgusting. that fridge. So yeah, that um, ah. no offense to the person who organized this, but if they if they knew the history of food, if they knew just the history of that room, they would know probably not to do any of this. Mm. Oh, look at this coming from Jordan. It was Jimmy Allen. Mike Trop is a bust and pennies belong in a vending machine. <laughs> That's not the plural for penny. No, it's not, but it's okay. We get the point. That's like a person named Penny. Yeah. Don't put the penny person lane. named Penny. It's okay. Don't put Penny in the vending machine. Uh-oh, Otson. We can't read Otson's. Oh, That's John. That's pretty funny, too. <laughs> Austin wakes up whenever work stuff <laughs> whenever work stuff comes up on the crossover. Austin chooses violence. He does. He, he does. just vents in our chat after his show. <laughs> after he goes back to our office, he's just like, yeah, "Okay." And Josh goes and sits down. He closes the door. He turns Nick's lamp off in there, and he's like, "It's time for me to get busy in the comments." Busy. I like it. Busy, busy in the comments. Josh, I can respond to Josh's comment very simply because most of those things happen while we are on the air. Yes, yeah, sadly, we'll be missing something because it's going to happen while we're on the air. Happer is very excited, though, because he gets to attend. Yeah, congrats yeah. on going to the second one ever. Thank you very much. I'm excited to yeah. be there. That'll mm. be great. Bring That'd me back awesome. some food, please. Mm-hmm. Well, why? Why? You can just go in and, you know, dive into the company shared peanut butter. <laughs> They're Put your so finger in there, did, Happer. Did, did, did they at least bother to have separate knives for each jar? Yes, oh, there's a thing yes, of knives. There's a there. thing of knives. Oh, I'm okay, confused. One good. of the things. So there was peanut butter. There's a lot of kinds of peanut there butter. There was creamy yeah. and crunchy. Then there was creamy yep. honey. And then there was cookie butter. I don't know what cookie butter is. Yeah, I don't either. I've never heard of cookie butter. Also, yeah, the marshmallow fluff. Yeah, they've got garbage. marshmallow fluff. They have yeah. not Nutella, Nutella. Cookie butter. Let's see what cookie butter is. It's not is. good. They had just honey. Two cookie butters. Overview. What is cookie? It's a creamy spread coffees. made from finely ground Belgian speculoos spice cookies. Yeah, it's not, not good. good. Yeah, it's not good. I, I tried mean, uh, one of the nut butter. butters once, not peanut butter that Costco has. Not a fan. It just tasted too much like other nuts. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Look, Thank you, Nick. Here Josh you is still sopping <laughs> wet down there. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Can't we be adults? <laughs> Miss like Cynthia that. said yesterday she made a peanut uh, peanut butter and banana sandwich. A honey nah. peanut butter and banana oh, People sandwich. do that. Yeah. that that's, yeah, a normal sandwich. That's, that's, that's perfectly yeah. fine. Also, that's perfectly uh, legit. The toaster is back downstairs, but the cord doesn't reach the outlet that it's on, so I had to make floor toast today. <laughs> <laughs> Floor toast. Floor we've, toast. We've had a toaster on the floor in there for a long time. We now. have. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. What? What? So what is, we all agree, it's got to be peanut butter. Now I'm crunchy. Some people are. are no, crunchy. Not. It's got to be. You and I, I are. Crunchy. So I like crunchy peanut butter, but I've actually gone to smooth because I like the you, the oily. You have to yeah, stir I know. it in. You, you, I like it from Costco. Oh, you like the you, old you, the old peanut butter. Yeah, you Josh, yeah. Josh likes the stuff where you have to remix it. Yeah. It's basically Josh, just you mixing like to, it the When Josh time. gets milk, he likes the milk to be <laughs> separate, the cream to be separated. Say, go Josh, in there do you like to churn your own butter? No, this dude, this this peanut he butter from to, Costco is ridiculously good. He, he likes is, to come and tell the butter churns. Remember the song that Neil had? <laughs> I do. That is a that's it. That's a song. It is. It's a great classic it's song. Also it's also another song. drop. Yeah, yeah we should use drop. it as a new bump on the show. Um, what were you saying, John? But I'm a crazy guy. Is, by the way, what is what is yeah. your what is your preferred jelly? Great. Don't like jelly. Grape. Oh, that's right. Or, You're afraid of fruit. Grape oh, or uh, peach jam is really good, but I'm really picky. It has to With be a homemade butter? peach jam. Yeah. Oh, interesting. It's a good contrast. The grape, sweet and the savory. Grape jelly. Although I did put grape jelly on the PB and J that I made in, in our PB and J factory yesterday. It was too grapey. There was too much grape. Too much grape. Yeah. Just too like, much grape. I, I like a subtle grape. A subtle grape. Too much grape. I like strawberry. <sighs> Big strawberry guy or peach. Yeah. I like peach. What's Josh Man. laughing at? Just a lot of comments right now. <laughs> many comments on many sides. 
Uh, Star Wars Fiend does say buy PB2. That's what us gym rats use. What's that? I got into that before. It's like, it's like this powdered peanut butter. Yes, it's like a powdered peanut butter that you mix in with stuff. It's, it's actually scam. pretty good. Gym I people would... <laughs> love peanut butter. <laughs> Sounds like a scam. Babe. Nick, it's great for you because it's healthy, but oh, it also protein. has a lot of it also has a lot of calories, right, like but healthy it, calories. But it yeah. already comes with protein. Why do you put more protein in peanut butter when it's already protein? Because if you're That's trying to build muscle. Peanut butter. Yeah, it's because you're trying to build the uh, the muscles there, Nick. Mm. You need protein to build muscles. Mm. Tony said a strawberry rhubarb jelly. Oh. Rhubarb is bad. Oh. If rhubarb was good, you wouldn't have to mix it with other things. Chance says this crossover <laughs> is suspect, and I haven't even said anything yet. Well, welcome to the <laughs> welcome to the crossover, Chance. Uh huh. It's been a wild one so far. Yeah. Been a wild. It's been a wild. I'm sure nice. this will take a very dark turn here in a little bit. Yeah, oh, Chance, calm down. Mm. <laughs> Uh, John yeah. says, uh, wait, you guys have community peanut butter? No way I'd eat the peanut butter that other people are using. There are way too no. many people that I see walking out of the bathroom without washing their hands. Yeah, I, I saw know. this a lot in Vegas. A I lot of people not washing their hands Which, in Las Vegas. Honestly, and then I, they go and immediately start you know, playing the slots yeah. and all the other stuff. Everything is so disgusting in Vegas, though, where it's almost like, yeah, it's it's." I, I'll be honest. I'm I'm guilty of that a couple times in Vegas. I'm like 50 50 on washing my hands. Well, they do say they do say they, wow. do say they do say that what you know happens happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. That includes venereal diseases. It does, and it <laughs> includes the stories yeah. from our Uber driver, <laughs> Hector. Hector, I love Hector. you. Jordan says you never know. Becca could have used that peanut butter. Oh God. We should publish the Hector <laughs> stories on a on a separate private vlog or something like that. I oh, didn't so record so those. I feel like Hector wouldn't have wanted me to. No, he would have been mad at you. Yeah. 1620 the uncensored blog. We can include it. You know, podcasts can be uncensored. What if we included the stories on the 1620 the Jays pod? This week? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Good idea. All right, Damn let's it. send it to Connor Happer who's going to regale us with Hector's stories from Las Vegas. I could do it. I could do it. I could oh. do the accent too. I don't know if you should do that. Probably however. don't do that. Well, for yeah. it's already uncensored, then. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. Might as well make it mm. uh, suspect in that regard as well. Why not Horberg says, I don't always wash my hands, but that's because I use hand sanitizer religiously. I don't know if that cancels it out. Mm. Good question. Does hand sanitizer cancel washing your hands? Yeah. I'm like, I, I'm, I, I wash my hands coming out of the bathroom like the same amount that I like ask for a receipt at places. <laughs> it's just, it's 50 50. I don't know feels why. Right. Yeah, whatever. Feels well, you did right. ask for a receipt everywhere we went to in Vegas. In, this in time, that though. case, True. yes, I did. Yes, but I yeah. didn't wash so my hands. So you asked for more receipts than you washed your hands. Check the receipts. That's right. I, I washed. Wow. Did you did yeah. you ask for the the actual product and the sales tax to be on one receipt and the tip to be on another receipt? Uh, it just all came in one receipt. It's up for us to do the math okay. on that one ourselves. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. It right. is indeed. Mm -hmm. It is indeed. Just very curious. That's all. And he says, get someone to animate Hector's stories as you narrate. My them. God. We, we couldn't post that on YouTube. Cartoon. We could not pay actors to act out those stories. We would have to post that on another website if we animated that. Oh, my God. Did you guys see this CBSSports.com story? Sports Flash? No. no what well, happened? Go to, go to Dennis Dodd's Twitter, Josh, and read me the first thing you see. Oh, I don't follow. Oh, him. not all Dennis right. Dodd. Oh, all it's right. going to be a doozy. He, I haven't he, clicked on he, it yet, but I'm whoa! excited. Oh, look at this. My sit down with former coach in Scottsdale. Scott Frost dying for chance to coach after growing older, wiser, oh, from disappointing Nebraska God. tenure. Hello. Ah. Hello. Oh, boy. Maybe this is a sports flash after all. Can we read this word for word? Scott Frost is voice? available. Okay. Actually, Scott Frost is more than available. For uh, the first time in my life, I don't know what's next. I'm dying to get back in. Maybe it shouldn't have sucked so much, Scott. <laughs> I Nick, can you get <laughs> yes? Nick, can you get Farron on the line? We may need a dramatic reading. Oh, okay, okay, yes. I can do that. We may need a dramatic reading from Mike Farron. You think if you think he ever fixed his truck and the big dent he had in the side? Great question. Maybe, Maybe that was. Just, I, I, it's in here somewhere. Are Maybe. we sure I'd that like... truck dent wasn't staged, like sliding down the pole? I don't trust anything he did mm. after. You know, that's that a, good, a good question there, Nick. That's a good question. The, you know, I don't know. Do you guys have the same problem? When I click on a CBSSports.com story, it goes there for like five seconds, and then it goes back to the homepage. Oh, oh yeah. It, is, it has been doing that for months. That's and, annoying. Yeah. I So I've now gone to quick control uh, 
control a control C. Yeah. I'm good to go. I, I got it open. Yeah. Well, I've got the, I, I, I was able to control a control C on this, but Oh, looks like we have some fun reading Josh in between commercial. Mm, I'm looking today. forward to this story. Yeah, here it is. The first quote for the first time in my life. I don't know what's next. The former Husker coach told CBS sports. I'm dying to get back in. Nice. Let's see mm. if there's any other quotes. Maybe he can do a live Twitch stream of the new EA Sports college football game. There's nothing too crazy in here. I do like the kick. Oh, here, here's one. Uh, the former Husker quarterback chooses not to reflect on those days, speaking of Nebraska. In fact, he prefers not talking about Nebraska. Understandably so. Quote, this is bad to say to a media guy, but I've never wanted to be a critic, Frost said. I've wanted to be in the arena. Apparently, that Scott Frost is not the same as the Scott Frost who used to write a blog for the Lincoln Journal Star mm -hmm. criticizing the administration. Yeah. Great point, John. Various message board posts, things of that nature. Yes. Uh, I know this. There's some good coaches out there. I'm a good coach. I belong doing it. I just don't know for sure where that's going to be right now. If the right head coach job comes along, I would take it. If the right coordinator job comes, I would take it. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I like the last line. You guys Ooh, got all that? the way to the end. Check. Here we go. The part I love about college football is taking an 18-year-old kid and watching him leave as a 22-year-old man who has life figured out. You played a part in that. He says, uh, uh, "I would say this: 22-year-old uh, people don't normally. I, have life I still don't have my life figured out. No. Uh, you think the Steelers, with the immaculate reception, said we really got lucky and the ball ticked off somebody's foot and Franco Harris caught it? We shouldn't have won. Frost said, "Whatever it takes, you win." Oh, nice. That's a callback to uh, 97 and the player that we will not be talking about at all. No, <laughs> we're never no. talking about him again. That's, a, that's right. Very How about problematic. Kina? Selling Macs, MacBooks wasn't as lucrative <laughs> as I thought. <laughs> that's a game. Uh, hey, bring the draft back today. Frost quotes that weren't in this story. Ooh. Oh, oh, Happer. That's a great idea. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, it's kind of, I mean, just kind of skimming it. It's not all that. No. Yeah, Did you see Jordan's comment? It's kind of a bummer, Where's, actually. The 18-year-old players Frost had usually transferred at age 19. <laughs> ah, that's true. Oh, man. Okay, well. Cool. We did all that other prep. We had so many things. So many things to talk about. Oh, this show Scott is the, your, your show. No. Is, yeah, yeah. Canceled. Yeah, We're it, talking Frost again. No, not really. Okay, no. good. Honestly, okay. it doesn't look all that exciting. Okay. So we will not be booking Dennis Dodd to join the show. <laughs> Dennis Dodd no. not. No, we're not. Mm. Okay. Understandably so. We De had Dennis Dodd is still years. talking to that Illinois professor that said that half a dozen people would die playing college football during COVID. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's like Dennis Dodd. That banger. was Dennis Dodd, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. They're all dead. All of them. <laughs> all dead. <laughs> well, certainly Scott Frost coaching in Nebraska. That's dead. That's true. COVID may have played a part in that. Yeah, uh -huh. I always wonder why we don't hear from those people anymore. It's because they're dead. They're dead. Mm. All right. Well, uh, Connor, I don't know if I'll see you later today or not. Um, <laughs> I, well, I'll, I'll just kind of roll the dice and play it by ear. Yep, yep, see yep. who shows up. Maybe you're doing a baseball game with Josh tonight. Who knows? Nah. I'm going to go. Yeah, I'm too busy. Oh, yeah. John, can I show up? I, I can think, do some baseball. I, I only talk about the 2001 World Series. That's Josh. <laughs> oh, don't Ooh, bring up 2001 me of that play here. in the 2001 World Series where a guy struck out. Yes, <laughs> Glenn did ask me to do a baseball game recently, but I, I was actually busy that day. So I said, sorry, I can't I do this. Busy. I'm busy. It was a Saturday. He asked me on Friday night. I was like, I can't do that. Also, I've done no prep. Mm. So I have I a feeling punch. I remember which day that was. I, I'm guessing that you do, Happer. I'm guessing mm, that you do. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> Connor, have a have a great day, and uh, I will uh, see you later. Yes, that is the plan. Feel free to stop by the booth before the show is over. I'll, Happer. I'll be there. Hi I'll be there likely within the hour. Honestly. All right. Perfect. Cool. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see you then. Okay. Bye. Sounds good. That is the crossover. The program. On this Wednesday, a bright, sunny, but windy Wednesday. Yes. Starts next windy. on 1620 The Zone. You get a lot of junk in your inbox. This one, not junk. Not junk at all. 1620 The Email. Exclusive content, contests, other stuff probably. Subscribe today at 1620thezone.com.
your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. More sunshine for your afternoon, but it's going to be very windy outside. Winds gusting to near 40 miles per hour out of the northwest. High temperature near 53 degrees for today. We start tomorrow in the 30s, but eventually warming to near 56 degrees with sunny skies. I'm meteorologist Luke Vickery, KETV Newswatch 7. 1620 The Zone's unsportsmanlike conduct brought to you by a great friend of the program, Union Bank and Trust. Host is roasting every morning. Host is roasting every day. Put your coffee department in good hands with Host Coffee Service, providing direct delivery and loaned coffee equipment with service programs. If you're ready to change to a better coffee provider, it's time for Host Coffee. Omaha's best coffee since 1972. Host Coffee is always roasting something good for you. Are Nebraska craft beers and ciders important to you? Whether you just love Nebraska brewed beers and ciders or you're a full-fledged craft brewery, there are benefits to membership for anyone with the Nebraska Craft Brewers Guild. Their sole mission is to foster and help grow the Nebraska-centric brewing community. Become a member today at Nebraska.beer and help advance the craft beer and cider industry in the state of Nebraska. Find out more about the Nebraska Craft Brewers Guild at Nebraska.beer. Is your concrete cracked or uneven? Hey everyone, Coach Greg McDermott here to explain why you should choose Everlevel Concrete Repair. Many people think they need to replace broken concrete, but repairing it provides durable protection and comes at a fraction of the cost. Everlevel provides permanent repair solutions to fix your concrete and protect it against future damage. And it all comes with a long-term transferable warranty. They offer free inspections to walk you through the entire process. Call Everlevel Concrete Repair today. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Sharp for Lindley Clothing and Well Suited. My fit check has never been better, and you're noticing and you're thinking, you look different. Yeah, I look different because I've trusted a place that has been dressing men for over 88 years in Lindley Clothing. Top brands, top customer service. They've got me covered. They've got you covered. They simply have something for everyone from tailored clothing to sportswear to even jeans. And now they've upped their game with Well Suited right next door to 132nd and West Dodge in the Linden Market. They have taken care of us men. Take care of yourself and stop by. They got the big spring sale coming up April 4th to the 14th, including 15% off all new spring sportswear. You can host the best backyard barbecue. When you find a professional on Angie to make your backyard the best around. Connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. Inside to outside. Repairs to renovations. Get started on the Angie app or visit Angie.com today. You can do this when you Angie that. Hi, this is Doug Nodgard with Equitable Bank. Great service never goes out of style. When the digital age dawned, many said computers would be able to handle many of the interactions that used to take a person. Boy, were they wrong. How many times have you called your bank and gotten a recording to press one or two? Not at Equitable. Not only does Equitable answer your call in the first ring, it's answered by a human being. That's because Equitable Bank values its customers. Equitable Bank. We take banking personally, member FDIC. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile and the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time, there's Granger, offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger. For the ones who get it done. We're going abroad for the first time in years. To Spain. But we don't speak Spanish. So we started using Babbel. And started learning Spanish fast. With Babbel, you can start having conversations in another language in just three weeks. Babbel's conversational method teaches you real-life words and phrases. And with Babbel's interactive bite-sized lessons, you'll remember what you learned. ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿De dónde eres? ¿De dónde eres? When you learn a language, you want to actually use it. Babbel is designed with that goal in mind. In just three weeks, we're starting to have conversations in Spanish. Estoy muy emocionado para ir a España contigo. Aw, he just said, I'm very excited to go to Spain with you. Nos vamos a divertir mucho. And that means we're going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> sí. Gracias, Babbel. Babbel, language for life. Celebrating 10 million subscriptions sold. Now try Babbel for free at babbel.com. 
Just go to Babbel.com and start learning a new language today. That's Babbel.com. B-A-B-B-E-L.com. This edition of Unsportsmanlike Conduct on 1620 The Zone is proudly presented by Union Bank and Trust. The program starts now. K-O-Z-N. Unsportsmanlike Conduct on 1620 The Zone. Sorry, but I just saw Chance's comment in the stream. Oh, right? speaking of the Dennis Dodd Scott Frost story, breaking Dennis Dodd has tested positive for Luke. Oh no, Dennis, <laughs> we're sorry. Yes, I was able to skim the story during the break. We'll talk about it a little bit later on if we have the time. The yeah. skim boy. The skim boy. Just and like Josh not... skims the oil from his peanut butter. Oh, no, I, you got to mix it I in. Skim, I skim Dennis Dodd stories. I don't want to work usually they trigger me. I just want my peanut butter to be ready to put on the bread. Well, or the toast. I, will, I like it to, or bagel. I put it on a bagel, Nick. I had that as a snack last night. It was very tasty. Mm. Very tasty. Welcome back. We're at the ballpark again. Again. We'll be here on Friday, too. I Must know, man. Must be nice. Josh doesn't even like he's, baseball. Let me talk, there, John. It's a further drive. I actually would rather just be at the station. It's farther to it's drive It's a further here. drive for me. I know. I, Nick says it must be nice. I don't think it's that nice. I mean, it's. I like the windows. I like seeing all the glass. Well, I like the windows except for this spot where it looked like yeah. the bird splooged all over the window <laughs> here. Whoa. I mean, look at that. I mean, just look how dirty that is. Holy crap. It is nasty. It is. And all up there. It's just like all this, all this rain and other stuff. It's just... because they're not playing the College World Series here yet. If this was June, that thing would yeah. be spotless. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can you can only do so much. There's a lot of, I mean, you look oh, around, baby. there's a lot of glass in this ballpark. Behind the glass. I'm really surprised we haven't broken, at least that I recall, any of the glass. Maybe it's it really has. hard, right? It is, but as many foul balls have smacked off of the facing of the press box and the suites. Yeah. You know, I'm surprised we haven't broken more glass. I still remember when they, uh, when Creighton was still in the Valley. We uh, opened up a new ballpark at Illinois State, yeah, and they had this really nice press box. With the exception of, it was like a what? What are they? Uh, it, it was like a um, what, the place where you grow plants indoors, but it's got a lot of greenhouse. So, uh, yeah, it was a yeah greenhouse. Thank you. And we were sitting in this booth, and we were baking because the whole thing was just glass. Who was your partner? Was that Cooler? That was David. That was David. Oh, back David. Then. David Gustafson. Nice. And in the first series played in that ballpark, we opened it. Creighton was there. And one of our guys fouled one straight back in the press box and just shattered Oh, glass. man. Just busted it to pieces. This this is really thick. Yes, it is. What's it called when it's like this type of glass where it's uh, uh it's like the Thick Boys? The Thick Boys. Yeah, it's like Dylan Thick. I think it's just here. called Thick Glass. T-H-I-C-C Glass. Is that I what it's called? the scientific yeah. name. Trigger Ryan says, go figure. Kami Josh hates America's greatest pastime. It's not about hating baseball. It's about... Okay. It's a little further dry. First of all, first of all, uh, That's what Ryan, called. you too are a commie because it's the national pastime, not it's America. America's. You called it America's pastime. No. I have audio. I have a sound cloud. Audio. Oh, do you have a sound cloud? Yeah. When you were a tiny baby John. Hey, it's me, John Bishop, everybody. America's pastime. <laughs> you sounded like Nick doing his vlog. You're probably really close to the camera, too. Yeah. He's like, he's like what? what's up, everybody? It's time Scared. for baseball. By the way, again, shout out Nick. He did a great job with the vlog. Yeah. And when we are having fun with him, it is in fun. Yes, it is in fun, and it inspires great ideas like the Grimvitational Grim yes. Froth yes. Tournament. Yes. The 1620, the Froth Grimvitational. Yeah, indeed. So I recommend going and watching it. 
Yes. I recommend going So subscribe it. to our emails. And subscribe. Oh, Nick, these are all great ideas. Nick, what do the listeners get if they subscribe to the great 1620 the email? It could be anything from prizes to being yeah. able to play fun games and participating in contests and then content. Oh, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. How about that? And then content. Yeah. And content. We love content. Yeah. We deliver it. Mark is red. Yep. Oh, it's been Mark, John. Uh, 42 degrees, the source hotline. By your mom's house. We want to get in touch. 402-951-1620. The textual machine. That's the same address. Yep. Uh, Mike Schaefer will be joining us today Let's on the Grum. Let's go! As Finally. we bring you the Grum Down presented by the referees at John Higgins, a weather guard. Jays take round one of mm. the I-80 rivalry. They do. Last night, Mike Schaefer is back, folks, for a limited time. I sent him he's the like, link. He's like the McRib of regular guests. Nice. He'll be here for a limited time, and then he goes back into. But he's back better the than the McRib because the McRib is mid as hell. Wow. I sent him the link, and he said, whoa, we're back. Whoa. We whoa. are back. We folks. are back. We are getting Schaefer back. Can a new stadium. Get it? Oh, N-U. nice. NIL and winning live together. Nice. Blair Kirkhoff is going to join us from the Kansas City oh, Star. Oh, nice get, Nick. The Thank Kansas you. City, speaking of stadiums, the Kansas City sales tax boat Uh-oh. rejected. Uh-oh. Coming soon to a town near you, the St. Louis Chiefs. Uh-oh. And the Portland Royals. Would you root for the Chiefs if they moved to St. Louis? No. Oh, okay. Because they're not the Rams. Because you were a St. Louis Rams fan. But I didn't that's know. because they're the Rams. Congrats to Rob Sims on having a new favorite NFL team. Yeah, and they'll get a good one. The St. Louis Chiefs. They get the best Most one. of the time, most of the time when teams move, they're bad. Yeah, they really suck. It's mm-hmm. like, okay. Oh, now, I, I, will, I will correct that because... Uh, that's when the Browns when moved to the, Baltimore. Yeah, when the Browns moved to Baltimore, the Ravens won a Super Bowl within two years. Can you imagine how mad you would be if that happened if you were a browns fan and you're like are you serious and they did it with the greatest defense of all time yes oh i'd be so pissed i'd be livid and that franchise still hasn't won anything still doesn't want anything and the ravens have won two since they moved to baltimore speaking of moving yeah. oklahoma's looking to move out of norman that's not that's impossible they're oklahoma they're the university of modern math caitlin clark equals oh Bird john and Magic. you need to stop disrespecting caitlin clark this isn't disrespecting her. Well, you did spell her name wrong. That's the disrespect. Yep. He did that on purpose, oh, okay. John. I can't oh, believe you're doing that. No, thing on I purpose. did not. I'm sorry. I did not. Okay. I'm the, giving you know, it out, John. No, yeah, I think you're disrespecting her. I was not disrespecting no, John, her. John, I'm here's, helping you. Here's the problem. <laughs> uh oh. There are too many damn ways to spell Caitlin. We need to come up with <laughs> one way to spell it and then just keep it that way. I mean, there's a lot of names that are like John Your says there should multiple. only be one type of person and we should get rid of the others. Oh, boy. Well, that's an under. <laughs> the under hits today. Wow, the that's under hit. No, seriously. Is there any more different ways to spell a singular name than the name Caitlin? Uh, there's a no, There's got to be. That's a good dumb debates question, actually. Really I need well, time to think about that. This. Dumb debates is coming up uh, yeah. today as well. Uh, it has been a while. Been a while. Been a while. Since we have done some quality prime schadenfreude. It's it's time to bring this back. We I think everyone got scared off last year because they started 3-0. Oh, and, oh. and then they beat us. Yeah, we need to start not, talking no. trash We are again. not scared of Prime. Tiny baby yeah. Nobody should be scared of Prime. Yeah, they we suck. all know why Prime beat Nebraska last year. Because Nebraska did not have a quarterback. Yeah. Uh, Happer and I talked about Coach Prime a little bit last week. And salesperson Josh sent like three texts. Boom, boom, boom. Just ultra mad at us so yeah. let's see if we can get him mad at us too yeah and uh afc power change the texans Ooh. trade for stefan day yeah let's Ooh. talk about that today do you dig yeah. it nice nick 402-951-1620 the two degrees hotline by your mom's house by your mom's house the J Tech construction zone twitter feed is at usc 1620 nice and the equitable bull, 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 bank inbox. Ah. John at 1620thezone.com. Josh at 1620thezone.com. We encourage you, if you have a dumb debate, yeah, send it to us in any one of those ways. Please, if you're using especially the uh, Twitter page, yeah. use the hashtag dumb debates. It makes it easier for us to find them. Or if you send us a dumb debate in the email, just put dumb debates dumb. in there. In the, in the subject line. Don't put your entire email in the subject line as one of our psycho friends does. No, we have multiple emailers who do that. It's I don't understand it. Do you not have the body? 
What? Do you not have the body? The body of the email, I... right? You have the subject line and the body. No, the only they're time just I... they're just their body. They're just they're just emailers with a head. Yeah. I, uh... <laughs> Maybe they are. It's They're very like odd. Williams. It's like, this is Just too many words. I this know. Too many words. It's, I'm surprised it, it doesn't work. Email titles or subject lines allow that many characters. Great uh, point. Exactly. It should be like the JTEC instructions on Twitter. Yes, it, it should really be a does. character limit on the subject line. If there is anything that ever deserved a character limit, it's the subject line. A hundred characters. That's all you need for a subject line. Great question or great point john mm. you are spot that's, on that, with this take seriously come on microsoft come on apple come on whoever controls the email who does control the email uh i think big email does. is it jed mm. yeah maybe it's jed by the way maybe jed, you need to shorten it's, up the, oh, it's the not character old man limit doug? on the subject line old man doug just doesn't control no he just sponsors email. it oh. he just sponsors it by the way jed many delivers many it. people are commenting on what you had to say about uh spelling things and Names. Yeah, yeah. Riley says John getting mad about multiple ways to spell Caitlin and it's old man yells at Cloud from the Simpsons. Seriously, <laughs> multiple people are reminding you that your name is John and there are multiple ways. There to should spell only be John. one way and it's with the H, like mm -hmm. God intended. Uh, Day fight says Mackenzie has entered the chat for most spelling. And there's a lot of those. Again, I this will be should, good for. Shouldn't debates. we do this? Shouldn't we have? I mean, shouldn't, shouldn't we, we eradicate other way? people's names? So you know, no, how not eradicating the name is just making it a common spelling across the board. It's like it's like proper names, like baseball. You yeah. only spell that one way. You know how there was the tower, the sixteen twenty, the Bible time, folks. Remember the uh, the Tower of Babel, mm -hmm. Come down like sixteen twenty, the the Babel. So you had the Tower of Babel, and the the story goes that that is essentially why we have a lot of languages. Yes, why we don't all speak the same language. It's like God cursed them i don't remember the right nomenclature but he essentially was like you guys are being a bunch of jackasses so this is what you're going to do now you don't understand each other do you think when the tower of babel happened that that's also where other names uh, or other spellings of names came about too god was like you're john you're john but there's no h in that one and they were like what and they couldn't even understand each other yeah but in the bible the john has an h it does have an h that's true that's a great point the heathens that don't have the h like my uncle like john the Atawa? <laughs> yeah Travis says, stick. No, hell no. This is Bible time. Is, by the way, a serious question. Kind of. Is that why we use the, the phrase babbling? Yes. Does it come from the Tower of Babel? I believe oh it is. Oh, my gosh. Wow. I just learned something. Whoa. I, no, I'm, I, I don't know if I learned something. I just asked a question. Is that where we're coming from? It probably has to. It makes to, sense. Right? Wow. That You're does babbling. make sense. Babble. 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 Is that where babble comes yes, from? Yes. Because different languages. Wow! Well, look at Where, you guys. Why, why Rosetta Stone? This is the most learned because the Rosetta Stone was uh, an ancient text that they had uncovered, and then they were able to. It was it was one of the first ones that they could use to translate ancient languages. It was the first was Ipe. It was the first Ipe, and then it got suspended for stealing Shohei's money. Nice. Well there done, were a Joe. bunch of different ancient languages <laughs> well on one stone, and then they were able to translate them all with using each other. Do you suppose in 400 years, instead of people referring to Rosetta Stone, they'll just call it Ipe? That'd be awesome. He's got to be the most famous translator in the world, right? Oh, easily. I don't even know other translators. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, great point. Yeah. Oh, and you know what? Genius on his part. He stole $4.5 million, but at least he's become famous. Rosetta Stone says, stolen valor, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, no, stolen, stolen, stolen money. Don't accuse me of stealing stolen valor. Was given, the valor was given to me. Oh, it was given to me. By the way, two quick emails because they were sent in the subject of line. Of course they were. Greg, I, Greg, this is why I know, you are jackals. This is why you are jackals, people. Greg and Lincoln, can we see how many characters the Gmail website will allow to go into the title? I mean, really, who types everything into the subject line? There should be a limit, right? Get Biden on this or old Pete now that he's in D.C. Yep, still no limit. This is ridiculous. And then Adam emails in. I'm not following. Are we not supposed to compose the body of our email in the subject line, or would you rather see it in the body? Either way, it doesn't make sense to me, and I need John to help me understand you how to work this new age computer electronic jackals. email. Oh, it stopped for him. He got Ema, and then it stopped. He couldn't finish Okay, email. so there is a character limit. The problem is it's set way too high. It right, shouldn't be so high. I'm it should be a, maybe even 50. All right, I'm going to figure out what this how many shouldn't characters. even need 100, right? Let's see. I'll all compromise. Right. 75. All right, this 75 was, characters, that's all you need in the subject line. This was 52 words. Where's the character count? Does it show that down there, too? Doesn't it say at the bottom of the oh, screen? Oh, here we go. I have to change it to, okay, with spaces, this was, here we go. Uh, here characters we go. with no spaces, 204. Characters with spaces, 255. It really is kind of like Twitter, actually. It needs to be Twitter like now is 280. Yeah, it needs to be like 75. We need an old Twitter, 140. 
I think 140 is still too much. 75, 75 is enough. A subject should be quick and concise, like the title of a book. Yeah, nice, Nick. Like today, when I sent, well, when Nick sent content. Yes, he did a great job. It just said content. Yeah. That's all it says. Indeed. It's all, we know what it means. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, well, um, wow. that's what we got coming up on the Grum today. Last night here on This Hill Field, Creighton beat Nebraska 5-3. to three. Yep, and now we're past time for a break. Time to talk to Mike Schaefer. I don't have any takes. Baseball. Of course not, because you were too busy to watch. It wasn't on TV, John. I'm it not, was on Flow Sports. I'm an announcer that's for TV. Flow. I wish that I had a login for it, but I don't. I wish well, I did. Well, if you had stayed here last night, you could have watched. I had to go home and watch our movie. Even Flow? Even flow. This is definitely a John movie, by the way. Is this it? Is very, have you oh, watched it is yet? this like no. that dumb not baseball movie? Hold on. No, it's not that bad. Okay. It's a dad movie, though. It's a, definitely a dad movie. Dads love certain movies. I saw that I saw that uh that uh Brian Cox was in it. And I thought, I oh, this looks interesting. Yeah, you love the top ten list on Netflix. Well, occasionally, if I see, it's like the on for there. you tab on on Twitter. I don't know anyone who uses it either of those except for you. Okay, I the use for, the for you, you tab. tab. I get more good stuff off of for you than I do off my own timeline. I do really? use for yes. you. Yes. Wow, tough look for Sam McEwen. Well, Sam shows up on the Brian Christopherson. Brian Christopherson shows up on the for and you. What about Michael Severe? You probably have him muted. I have gotten a no, lot of good I don't have Michael off of muted. for you. You've gotten a lot of good follows off of for yeah, you. Yeah, there's yes. a lot of good stuff on the for you tab. You know, not every idea that that uh, Elon came up with was a bad one. Mm. Yeah, I don't ever go to the most for of you them, tab. but not all of them. I, yeah, most of them for sure. Well, coming up next, he makes his triumphant return. He's probably got a lot of takes bottled up inside of him. Oh, I mean, yeah. when he left us, when Mike Schaefer left us. He left us with some of the steamiest hot takes out there. Remember when he went on the whole spiel about how how, how fun it was to watch the Lions lose? Oh my mm-hmm. God. That was I mean, his he, last time. He went out with he went out with gusto, but now he's got all of that pent up anger, angst, take whatever factory built up inside of him. He's just got to let it burst. I can't wait to get his opinion on uh, Trev Alberts leaving Nebraska. I can't wait to see what he no, has to say. We might him. break the news to him that That's Trev right. left. Hey, Nebraska. you know they have a new AD, Shafe. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. So Mike Schaefer will join us next here. It's on Sportsmanlike Conduct. We are live at Charles Schwab Field, Blue Jays and North Dakota State tonight. Just a one gamer before the weekend. And uh, we will be back right after this on 1620 The Zone. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. When I heard the words, you have breast cancer, I said, I have no idea what I'm going to do. My OBGYN called me and said, I know exactly what we're gonna do, which led me to Nebraska Cancer Specialists. From day one, I felt that I was at the right place. There were some pretty rough times, but together we are stronger and they are there for you. You do not feel that you are alone. NebraskaCancer.com. A team succeeds when they work together. Banking's no different. At UBT, we're in your corner for every financial move you want to make. Your money's backed by a roster of experts who put in the work to know you and your community. So whether you're opening a savings account, buying a home, or planning your future, you always know who to turn to. Working together toward your financial goals, that's a win in our playbook. Union Bank & Trust, Equal Housing Lender Member FDIC. Mexitli Restaurant by Chef Alberto Cardenas offers you an authentic Mexican cuisine experience with the traditional flavors of your favorite Mexican dishes with an innovative touch. At Mexitli Restaurant, they offer you the experience of tasting Mexico in every bite. The best tacos, birria, quesadillas, and more. Visit them at Mexitli Restaurant in downtown Omaha at 16th and Harney and look them up on Facebook at Mexitli Restaurant or call 531-772-0550 to order. Many people go back to the dealership out of habit or because they think the dealer is the only one who knows how to fix their car. At Omaha Car Care, we offer a better option. We have ASE certified technicians, the technology to service any vehicle, and free loaner cars. The dealer will sell you a package of services, will provide the service you want for your car as your trusted partner. I'm Rick Betker, owner of Omaha Car Care, and we'll be along for the ride. 
It's spring. Now is the best time to shop at Lenaha for all things garden or landscape. Our garden center is filled with the largest selection of homegrown plants, flowers, trees, and more. The area's best mulch and soil available for delivery and pickup. Rooted in quality, unmatched value. Lenaha Nurseries, 192nd and Center. Baseball season is here again. And Tickets for Less has another reason for you to root for the Royals all season long. When Kansas City scores seven or more runs in a game this season, you can get 7% off your next ticket purchase at ticketsforless.com. Simply use the promo code ROYALS7 at checkout the day after the Royals score seven or more runs to redeem your discount. But be sure to act fast. The code will expire at the first pitch of the next scheduled Royals game. Learn more today at ticketsforless.com slash Royals. Easy Cater has everything you need to make food for work work. From ordering to reporting, we even keep your receipts all in one place, which means all you need to do is sit back and enjoy. You're not having any lasagna? All I can taste is hours of expense reports. Relax, you used Easy Cater. Enjoy the food, Ray. Oh, no, thanks. That's Enjoy it? That's... Hmm, amazing. Yes, Ray. It is amazing. 100,000 restaurants and everything you need to make food for work, work. Order 24-7 at easycater.com. Omaha Maverick Baseball is coming off a series victory over 2023 College World Series qualifier Oral Roberts. And the Mavs are ready to take on crosstown rival Creighton on Tuesday, April 9th at Tal Anderson Field. Don't miss this classic matchup. Plus, it's $2 Tuesdays when all Pepsi products and Bush Light cans are $2 when the gates open until the third inning. Get your tickets for this game and all baseball and softball games by calling 402-554-MAVS or by going to omavs.com slash tigs. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash radio. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. When you shop local, you help strengthen our community. So if you need roof repair, gutters, siding, even windows, call Local Pyramid Roofing. They're the number one roofer in Omaha for more than a dozen years. Let Pyramid Roofing come and give you a free estimate. Give them a call at 402-502-9300. That's 402-502-9300. Or visit them online at PyramidRoof.com. Never settle for less. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. Mike Schaefer. There's a part of me that really thinks that there's a Sasquatch. Mike Schaefer. I think the issues here are largely football-related. Mike Schaefer. People are like, oh, the Vikings are terrible. It's yeah. Like, yeah, terrible teams always go 13-4. and four. Mike Schaefer. And I, I don't feel good for anybody. All my entire life is rooting for sports teams that get as tantalizingly close as possible and then don't win. Mike Schaefer. I have no joy in my heart for you or you <laughs> or you. Mike Schaefer. We told you oh. the last time he was with us, he let it all out. And now it's been building and building and building and building and building back up. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Dad mm. to the Grum, Mike Schaefer. How's Dad life? Man, I don't know that I could build to that level of a uh, to that level of a of a rant right now if I even wanted to. I don't know that I have. I did read the Scott Frost story, but I don't know that that could. I don't know that that could get me there. Um, I got to be careful. We're we're under the same umbrella, at Paramount. But oh, that's right. You and Dennis yeah. are coworkers. Oh, that's right. Yeah. We we don't see each other in the water cooler very often. But I'd have questions if we did. Mm. 
how, how, how was that breakfast uh, at the Scottsdale eatery? Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure Scott bought and he's got the money. Uh, at least you think he does. Uh-huh. How is Hudson? He's good. He's good. He's uh, he'll be two months here next Tuesday. Um, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of spit up and sleepless nights, but it's been good. I mean, when he the last couple of I'd say about the last couple of days, probably four or five days, he's really started smiling. So, you know, now that there's a little bit of a personality there, it seems like there's something going on, uh, you know, in the, the brain activity. I don't know what, but it <laughs> makes it a little bit more manageable, um, you know, right after he spits up on you and then he gives you a big smile. But no, he's good. He's good. We uh, good. we can't really complain. I sent an example of one to, uh, to Josh earlier. He's up. Yeah, here, I'll show this to you. Uh, look at it. When he found out dad was going on on Sportsman Like ah! Conduct, how great is that? Yeah, you're right. It's 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 when they start to interact like that, yeah. just those early stages, we're like, okay, now there's a person here, right? You know, it feels... Yeah. It, Do you have any takes, baby? Surreal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my kid will have takes. I have no doubt about it. I look, I look forward oh, yeah. to just being inexplicably concerned about what these takes are, but, I mean... My dad was familiar with me. I think it just passes down the line of secession, if you will. Uh, hey, speaking of takes, Shafe, while you were away from the sports scene, what were you, A, most sad to miss out on in terms of the take machine, and what, B, were you like, thank God that I don't either have to cover that or have an opinion publicly about that news item? And could it's it be not- the same thing? Uh, no, <laughs> it's, it is not the same thing. I okay. mean, B is the easy one to answer. I was more than happy to sit out the Trev Alberts um, thing. I'm still, you know, like I'm still a little surprised even just how much vitriol there is over this. Uh, I said this on the Happer show on Monday. I mean, my my strongest take on the whole thing is that he left the place in a far better spot than he found it. And really, ultimately, that's what you want with an athletic director. And yeah, I mean, it's a little a little concerning a guy who um sort of made his name being a linebacker playing for you and and uh was an athletic director in another school in the same university system uh before coming over to nebraska but he had clearly large ambitions that probably extend beyond being an athletic director even at texas a&m uh, but the important thing is i think he set nebraska up really well and not just football uh, but you look across the athletic department where things sit right now versus where they were in july of 2021 and I think you would really struggle to find someone to tell you that things aren't dramatically better almost across the board, certainly at the key sports. Uh, but there is a lot of success uh, for Nebraska athletics this year that extend beyond, you know, football is probably still one of the ones dragging it down, uh, if we're being honest. So um, I I think you, you look at what Trev Alberts had uh, accomplished in that time period, and it is disappointing that he left, but ultimately Troy Dannon inherits a much better situation than Trev Alberts or his predecessors had, quite frankly. Uh, so that in itself allows Troy Dannon, in whatever direction he chooses to go, um, to, to start with strong footing. And so I think that's important. But I was I was quite excited to to sit all of that out for the for the couple of weeks that it raised. There there really isn't anything. I mean, obviously basketball, and I got to, I, that was the one thing I sort of engaged with throughout. Um, you know, because it it was a fun story. It uh, remains to be a fun story. We'll see if they build on it. I. The skepticism I have is Nebraska hasn't done back-to-back strong seasons um, since what, 90. Since you were Hudson's since, age. Since the 90s. Uh, yeah, basically. So uh, we'll see. We'll see how the transfer portal and all of that plays out. But, uh, you know, when when the ride presents itself with Nebraska basketball, you just you climb in and you throw your hands up when you go, you know, throughout the roller coaster. And then eventually the ride stops. And we see if you get back in line, you get back on the ride or – you know, if we're just waiting around forever. So I basketball was fun. I felt like I was able to kind of participate in that. I don't think I had had much more to add than I did. Uh, but like I said, very happy to, to largely avoid the Trev Albert thing. Well, nice. on that subject, though, I am curious, Shafe, if you think, are there too many political cooks in the kitchen, in Nebraska's athletic kitchen right now? I, I mean, I don't even know that, yes, in the, in the totality of the athletic kitchen, uh, there are way too many. There has been for a while. Like there's a lot of people that want to align themselves as power brokers in Nebraska, um, whether it is from a political standpoint or whether it is from the athletic standpoint, whether they had something to do with Nebraska athletics in the past and just continue to retain some sort of shadow or hold on to things, 
or whether it is that they are now in an elected position that they can oversee stuff. Everyone wants to have their hand in it. And this, you know, it's it's as innocuous as when Hank Bounds made the president a fully involved athletic direct or athletic department figure uh, to, you know, just the most recent decision to where they made the athletic director, um, you know, beholden to the to the president. The president oversees those those operations like they did with Ted Carter and, um, you know, all of it. But to me, it just feels like there's a lot of people who want to do things that you put people in charge and you let them go to work. And I think that Trevor ran into that. I don't, I can't speak to it as well as obviously he could. He's chosen to largely sort of hint at it without really diving into it. Uh, but yeah, but that's an, that's been an issue for a long time. I mean, how much was the conversation when Scott Frost got hired? Well, now everything is aligned and everyone's pulling in the same. It's all BS. There is no same direction. There's people who have what they want for them. And that is true today as it was yesterday, as it will be tomorrow. And I think the more we can understand that, the more that you can accept that you can still win in those scenarios. But when it goes wrong, they look for a lot of, you know, finger pointing and a circular firing squad. And that's been Nebraska athletics for more than a decade. now. That is a great point, Shafe. Because I think we do have this idealistic view of the world. I mean, if we really dive back and, you know, if I really, you know, go into the deep into my archives, it's not that, you know, that during the Osborne era, everybody was pulling in the same direction. It's just that you had enough smart people pulling in the right direction to get you down the road versus staying stagnant or getting pulled in the wrong direction. Well, it just feels like a perpetual Game of Thrones power struggle, right? Like, yeah, you know, and and nobody has usurped enough power that and has wielded well enough that it's gone in the right direction that they haven't faced a mutiny. So it's you know we're we're going to see this, and you know to, to continue this weird example, maybe Matt Rule ultimately can be the person that rises to seize the throne, and people can throw behind it. I I think he's as well positioned as anyone has been in a long time due to the popularity, due to the desperation, due to the fact that they just lost the athletic director that hired him and the president that helped bring him there. And because no one wants to lose him, I think his power is even you know stronger than ever. And that could be a really good thing for Nebraska football. Or it could not. We just we don't know. And spending too much time analyzing it isn't really worth it for anybody either. But I just think you have to accept that there's always going to be a lot of people that want to have their hand in this. There's a lot of people from from the outside that are getting more and more involved, too. And the NIL world makes that a part of it all, too. Shafe, I don't remember our conversations last fall when the stadium announcement was made. So I can't remember what your opinion was in the moment. But, like, do you look back on that and wonder if it was just like, was it always doomed to fail and to, to become this thing now that we look back on as the beginning of the end of his time in Lincoln? Um, I think, I think I'm relatively consistent with this. When they were announced, it was kind of a shoulder shrug for me. I have a lot of questions as to how you can kind of do this, you know, live in a house under renovation kind of thing. Um, and how that looks for Nebraska football. Uh, I know as then a season ticket holder with season tickets in North stadium, not that I use them, but Shelby does my wife or other people have. Uh, it was very curious how every other part of the stadium would have renovations and I would still be asked to pay a donation uh, for no change that would come to North. Like there was there was certainly, you know, personal parts of it, whereas like I don't really understand how this works. But overall, it didn't feel like there was much enthusiasm or excitement for it. And the people I know that have been very in, interested in the what the stadium could look like and, and the renovation and all of it, just sort of kind of like ho hummed um, the Trev Alberts plan. I think it's, I think it's going to be really difficult. Like, I don't know that there's a really easy solution uh, to, to get what they want here. And I think Troy Dannon's going to have to take some time to, to kind of look at it and say what you will about what Trev put forward. But I mean, they did studies. They tried to get as many opinions as they possibly could. I think the reality is it's really hard to change that stadium right now while also playing in it. And, you know, decades of just building offices and, and classrooms and you're landlocked on top of everything else. I just don't know that there's a really easy solution uh, to bring this thing up and make it more modern and appease everyone while doing it. And make, you know, get people who want to donate for it, too. Like, that's the other yeah. thing. You don't win football. Which is probably games. the most important component. 
nobody wants to donate money right now. People like me that are in their mid thirties, uh, you know, I'm in the media. I don't view it the same way, but you know, other people, it's like, why would they want to donate expendable income for a football team that hasn't gone to a bowl game, hasn't threatened for a conference championship uh, since what, 2012 hasn't really been nationally relevant since 2012, ha, you know, like has seen some notable players and had some fun experiences along the way, but this isn't, 25 years ago where you grew up with a football team that you never saw lose and you're completely captivated by it and you want to bring them back into the promised land of the 90s and it's the early 2000s and everybody's got money it's it's just not that anymore i mean i just don't know where these donations are going to come from you're losing such a huge piece of your donation base just because they've gotten old and unfortunately they're passing on or they don't have the money to give anymore and so i think that's a really tough reality that confronts this athletic department as they look at this massive change and it has to happen, but how do you do it? And how do you appease everyone? It's really difficult. Mike Schaefer, Husker 24 um, seven, Tony white yesterday uh, speaking to the media after practice said, quote, I've said this from day one, I'll say it to the end of the season, this group of guys talking about his defense, they haven't done anything. I almost feel like this is one of those deals where a coach has to say that, so that they, you know, the guys don't get fat and happy because it's obvious this is going to be a very strong part of this football team heading into next season. And this is the group that has to deliver if Nebraska is going to get to a bowl game. Uh, so in, in a way, is he just trying to tamp down some expectations right now? Because I think a lot of people are going to be leaning on this defense to really build off of what they ended the season with last year. Yeah, you know, it's interesting when you sit out seven weeks and you don't really read any football coverage and you don't really dive into anyone's opinions on anything, you kind of forget and you have to go back and you have to look at what they have and you have to look at what they're bringing back. And I was reading through the message board and reading through comments of what people had after Tony White sort of said that. And there was a theme that was presented where this is like Nebraska's best defense since pick a year. I mean, you saw a lot of 2010s and 2009s in there. I just am sitting there thinking to myself, like, is it really going to be that good? Like, it's it was good last year. And they they gave themselves a lot of opportunities to win games, and they couldn't do so because their offense was so putrid. And yet, I look at it, and it's like, was that just a one-year help extremely by the fact that the Big Ten West could not play offensive football as a whole, and the Big Ten West doesn't exist anymore, so your schedule is – like, it's – I, I do think there's some of it where Tony White's trying to also say out there like, hey, like whatever we did, that's great. But it's a new year. It's a new set of opponents. We've got to figure out how we can move forward. I, I think internally they're very excited about what they have over there. I do wonder if maybe we're putting the defense on a pedestal a little bit too early uh, because there's still – you still have questions. Like we don't know what it's going to look like in the middle linebacker. I still wonder if they have enough flash players on that defense or if it's just a group of extreme competency, which isn't bad, but does that mean you can stop teams quickly or you can force, you know, backbreaking turnovers or do you more survive in terms of war of attrition and win by stopping teams before they can get to your side of the field? I mean, it's, it's just a, it's just one of those things where, when you've stepped outside of it and you step back into it and you're like maybe wondering if we're hyping this defense a little bit too much too soon. So I think his, his comments are twofold in that regard. Speaking of hype shape, before I let you go, are you surprised that Dylan Riola is speaking? He's speaking tomorrow, which I didn't realize. He's speaking. Yeah. I had no idea. I didn't know he could talk. Yeah. I didn't think <laughs> that he would speak. I thought that they would like hold him away from doing anything until at least fall camp, let alone the season. Are you surprised at all? I think it probably speaks to his maturity, um, their comfort level that he's not going to say anything incendiary. The fact that he's been doing interviews since he was probably four years old about being a quarterback. I, I just think he's such a unique situation. And I also, this staff, probably more than previous ones, um, when they get a gauge on somebody like that, I think they're going to be more than okay with it. I mean, I, I just, it's a controlled enough environment you know, he's not going to get a bunch of random questions. Uh, he's probably going to give some pretty, you know, if, when you look back on it, relatively empty answers. I don't think that's going to be a big surprise. Uh, he's going to be excited about the opportunity in front of him and working with the team and, and all of that. But um, I, I I guess anymore, I'm not that surprised by it because I, I think 
think we all know where this is headed. And I think it's easier to go ahead and rip the Band-Aid off now instead of, can you imagine the first time he spoke was August 17th and he's just been named the starter? So I, I think some of it is you just do it now. You get everybody prepared for it. And maybe they're going to do it where Daniel Kalen talks as well. You just have all of them talk. He is. I'm pretty uh, – Happer said yeah. that earlier, that all three of the quarterbacks are speaking. Well, there you go. Yeah. Well, get it all out of the way. Yes. I mean, it's a great point, Shape, because if he speaks tomorrow, then we can all – it's just one less box that they have to check by the time sure. he's named the starter later this year. And I just think so many of these guys, and, and I've obviously talked with Daniel a lot more than, than Dylan. I've actually, thinking about it, never interviewed Dylan. Um, these guys have done interviews for years. Like they are – well, quarterbacks more than maybe any other position are very well prepared to sort of handle, you know, maybe not the Nebraska media in terms of total size, but to be able to sort of represent themselves and their teams well in this scenario. All right. Well, uh, I, I assume you and Hudson have already taken a couple of uh, Guardians games sitting on the uh, on the oh. recliner. I know the uh, Guardians are just underway right now. Oh, so I, ho- show then. hopefully uh, you're not being blacked out like you were last year when you had that issue with the. Yeah, that uh, was very weird. And no, it's been it's been quite good. Uh, shout out MLB beginning. Very nice to throw that on at night. Uh, on one of the TVs, can put the Guardians game specifically on another. Hudson has had many a bottle late at night while watching baseball. I can't tell you that he's particularly interested in it, and it is a little concerning how often it puts him to sleep, but that does work well for me in that regard. So um, I don't know how soon I can start using him as an example of whether the youth like baseball or not, um, but for now, he has uh, he has paid attention somewhat. Awesome. Shave, it's good to see and hear you again. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, we thank you for coming back on here and at least for the next couple of weeks. By the way, after the next spring practice, we'll be a third of the way through spring I can't football. Believe it's almost over. Oh, it's almost over. Oh, man. Oh, and Shafe's beautiful words up. to hear. <laughs> yes, they are. Yeah, indeed. Thanks, Shave. Bye, Shave. All right, guys. Have a good one. Thanks for having me on. Happy to be back. Mike Schaefer, ladies and gentlemen of Husker 24-7. Good to see and hear him again. Uh, John, a reminder that you can go to 1620thezone.com right now for a variety of reasons. But one of the reasons is to make sure that you make know sure. how you're doing in the college basketball playoff stuff. Where are you at? How did you – you have like eight brackets over there. Is one of them in uh, the no, top five I only still? Have, yeah. I only have two. Because uh, the winner, John's going to get $100 to cops in Omaha. You can check the leaderboard at 1620thezone.com. Yeah, how far How far? I mean, I know I'm in great shape because, you know, like a smart person. I you cheated. UConn. I picked UConn. No, yeah, I did cheat. I did cheat. I picked UConn. Cheat boy. That mm-hmm. is that is cheating because that's like, you know, it's like knowing the answers to the quiz before it's given. I'm John Bishop. I'm going to submit two brackets. Wait a minute. Where's the, the link's not there anymore. It's right there, John. Yeah, you no. got to get to it, John. No, there's the there's the censored sixteen twenty. Mm-hmm. There's something about the Astro Amphitheater. Nice. A day there's, to remember. Uh, Young the Giant and Baycar. Cage the Elephant. There's uh there's Benghazi. Nice. And then there's the Sharp and Hanley, the Connor Happer, and there's our tab. Well, I guess we just learned something on the air, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Just go to sixteen twenty the zone. I want to know. I want to know how I'm doing. Yeah. Because I, I was in fifth place. We just said to go to 1620thezone.com to see how you are doing. There's no tab. What am I going to do? You're not wrong, John. You are not wrong about this. I, I know. I know. Well, all right. Well, when we continue. It's am- it, 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 re- it is very surprising. What? As hot as they are. How hard it is to find your standings. How hot it is they are. They have never been more popular, both locally and nationally. And yet the Kansas City Chiefs took an L yesterday. Uh-huh. Indeed. Hey, and don't disrespect. Blair, and and no. The, the Chiefs no. fans disrespected. Kansas City disrespected the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. You know who won't disrespect the Chiefs? St. Louis. They got a stadium all ready to go. They do. Yeah, they it's right there. That dome. Right there. They got a dome. Yeah. That means if that means if they host a playoff game, they won't freeze to death like they did last year. All right, That and more as we continue. It's Unsportsmanlike Conduct live from the ballpark tonight. Creighton and NDSU baseball action, which will be heard on our sister station, 1180 The Zone. This is 1620 The Zone.
Mornings with Sharp and Handley. I wanted Nebraska to settle in, make some shots early, and then get into a moderate pace yeah. because they're not built. Like, start with their Air Jordans and then then slip on the uh, Skechers or the Hocus. Nebraska got sped up at the beginning of that game, and they got into, hey, let's just trade threes. And they did it to themselves early, and it became durable. Mornings with Sharp and Handley. Weekdays 6 to 10 on 1620 The Zone. The following is a test of the KOZN emergency system equipment. The data tones you just heard are used in the emergency alert system. This concludes testing of the KOZN emergency alert system equipment. This station serves the Nebraska operational area number one. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. More sunshine for your afternoon, but it's going to be very windy outside. Winds gusting to near 40 miles per hour out of the northwest. High temperature near 53 degrees for today. We start tomorrow in the 30s, but eventually warming to near 56 degrees with sunny skies. I'm meteorologist Luke Vickery, KETV Newswatch 7. 1620 The Zone's unsportsmanlike conduct brought to you by a great friend of the program, Union Bank and Trust. Host is roasting every morning. Host is roasting every day. Since 1972, family-owned and locally roasted Host Coffee Service has been roasting the finest coffee for businesses and restaurants. If you're ready to change to a better coffee provider, it's time for Host Coffee. Omaha's best coffee since 1972. Host Coffee is always roasting something good for you. If you have a large amount of gold or precious metals and want the best price with no waiting, Sol's makes it easy and fast. Any amount of gold, silver, or jewelry, no limit, immediate payment. Sol's Jewelry and Loan. The world's largest sports book in Las Vegas is available right at your fingertips in Iowa. The Circus Sports Iowa app is sports betting the way it should be. Bet anywhere in Iowa and experience high betting limits, tight money line splits, and exceptional customer service. Download your new bookie today. Visit CircusSports.com and start betting like a pro from anywhere in Iowa. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7633. When it comes to concrete repair, Everlevel has some serious game. Coach Greg McDermott here to coach you on why you should choose Everlevel Concrete Repair. They've got the fundamentals to fix your cracked and uneven concrete, and their products will give you the best defense against future damage. It's a fraction of the price compared to replacement, and their solutions come with a long-term transferable warranty. Working with Everlevel is a slam dunk. Call Everlevel Concrete Repair today for your free inspection. Don't miss this week's Zone Deal. This week's deal is to McSintley Restaurant in downtown Omaha at 16th and Harney. Get $50 in gift certificates for only $25. McSintley Restaurant offers authentic Mexican cuisine with the traditional flavors in your favorite Mexican dishes with an innovative touch. McSintley Restaurant in downtown Omaha. This week's half-off deal. Zone deals go fast. 9 a.m. Friday, 1620thezone.com. Hi, this is Stacey McGilligan, Director of Sales for NRG Media Omaha. NRG Media is looking for an accomplished bilingual new business development salesperson who wants to take their success and skills to the next level. Is this you? Our multimedia account executives work with local businesses to create marketing plans to help them get more customers. On air, digital, on site, audio, video, it's all part of what you could sell. A sales career with NRG Media lets you make a real difference in our community. Get more info and apply online at nrgmedia.com. NRG Media is an equal opportunity employer. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, clickgranger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Hey, baseball fans, are you ready to win big this season with the Royals? 
and tickets for less, then sign up today for the MJ Melendez Home Run Sweepstakes. For every home run hit by MJ Melendez this season, one lucky fan, you're going to score big with a signed baseball and a $50 Tickets for Less gift card. Swing for the fences and sign up now at ticketsforless.com slash contest for your chance to win. Winners will be announced the day following a home run, and a multi-home run game equals multiple winners. So don't miss out. Learn more and sign up today at ticketsforless.com slash contest. The Zone Hotline is powered by 42 Degrees, the source, by your mom's house. This is Unsportsmanlike Conduct with John Bishop and Josh Peterson. A little slippery inside of uh, tight spaces. The 1620, The Zone. Looking out over the beautiful green field here at Charles Schwab Field on a very windy day, but there will be baseball tonight, a very... Happy Ed Service out there right now, talking to the grounds crew, talking to Dan and the crew. He was uh, a little excited last night. Ed? Yes. Oh, I could tell. He was pretty intense in our interview. He was, but then after the game, uh, and there was a video shared by the Creighton social media team. You know, Ed Service likes to do a lot a lot of the post-game huddle. Most teams do. Yeah. They all meet at the end of the third base or the first base line, and they, they meet about the game, and you know, just some things to go over. And and there are times where Ed's huddles can go pretty long. You know, if he really – and it doesn't matter, win or lose. I mean, if he if he saw something that he didn't like or he really liked or he really wanted to emphasize – He'll talk about he'll it. He'll talk about it for a while. Last night's huddle lasted all of about 15 seconds, and it was it was him just a long pumping time. his fist and screaming. Mm-hmm. Yeah! <laughs> and then as I was walking out of the ballpark last night, you know, they were doing the post-game interviews outside of the clubhouse, and – I just kind of gestured at him behind the cameras and he actually stopped his cam. answer. He actually stopped his answer and said, that was a big one, John. That was a big one. It's funny because we and had him on. really excited. I mean, I haven't seen him that pumped in a while. Yeah, we had him on right before the game at 530 in a live interview. Very yesterday. tense. Very yeah. tense. And, yeah, very and, live. But one of the one of the questions that I asked him uh, was about every game being the same and how he's like, look, I, they're not going to approach it and it's understandable. But interesting that he also afterwards allows himself to enjoy it just a little bit more. And you wonder, Happer was talking about it a little bit earlier. Your broadcast partner for tonight, John Connor Happer. Not last Perhaps night. Is it him? No, it's no. I'm saying Nick for tonight. It's him. It's, it's Connor him. Happer. It is. Are you sure? The Connor Happer show on 1620. But okay. he was talking earlier on his show about just like he, he's not really concerned with Crate losing, but just given the the emotions of last night, now you got to play again today versus not your in-state rival and so how does that show itself well, that's one of the things about baseball that's always been different than other sports is y- usually you're playing the very next day or if not maybe two days later it's Ping! not it's not something where you get a week to let it soak in or a couple of days it's usually you're right back at it the next day and of course in a situation like this where you're in a midweek where you're not lining up your regular weekend rotation um it can be a little taxing but how about Last night, we set the line. Oh, at, incredible at stuff. 12 and a half. Creighton uses five pitchers. Nebraska was on their seventh pitcher. And then in the middle of the count, with a runner at second and two out, Nebraska trying to keep it a two run game in the bottom of the eighth inning. In a 1 1 count, Rob Childress comes out and replaces the pitcher, brings in the veteran, Kyle Perry. And the over hits. Amazing. <laughs> As Michael Brunts tweeted me last night, this should be on bad beats. Scott Van Pelt should be, should this should be in bad beats because that was a bad beat. That was a baseball version of a bad beat. You don't see a lot of baseball in bad beats, right? Well, it, at this time of year, you do because do bad, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like overs. It's total. Okay. I mean, you got, again, you okay. got to be a real sicko to do that type yeah, of stuff, but yeah. it does exist. But yeah, yeah this, this, this was a baseball version of a bad beat where you replace a, a pitcher in the middle of a count with two outs in the eighth inning. Cause Creighton wasn't going to, they, they were going to keep Mason cook in. He was going to pitch the ninth inning for Creighton. Mm-hmm. And that was going to be the guy. And unless the game goes into extra innings, they were going to have 12 pitchers used Nebraska, seven Creighton, five <laughs> Rob Childers changes the pitcher with a one, one count. <laughs> Amazing stuff. Mm. Amazing stuff. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why the unsportsmanlike conduct sports book and casino in beautiful downtown Irvington. Irvington is thriving. Not not, not doing well. Today. Oh no, it's not thriving. No. Yeah. Oh, because mm. everyone bet the overs. Yeah, we had, I guess we, 
we had some we had what's, some over betters yeah. yesterday. What's the opposite of thriving? Um, Decaying. The Oakland Athletics. Oh. Mm. Jacob Wright, Colorado Rockies. Jacob Wright, no. so you played a great game. Nebraska's new AD is going to find out real quick that his fan base does not like losing games like that. Right now, CU Sports owns Nebraska. Sad to admit, but I tip my hat to them. Crane has had a lot of success in a variety of sports against Nebraska in recent vintage. Can, it, 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 but, but These are the good old days for Creighton fans can I, Nebraska, I would say. Can I yeah, say something it, I noticed last night that rubbed me the wrong way? Notice? What oh. rubbed you the wrong way? There was uh, that second baseman for Creighton when he was seemingly, was he hurt or he was down for a little bit? He was hurt, yes. Yeah, he was hurt. Uh, yeah, they pulled him up in the game. They Kyle started Hess. a Go Big Red chant. The Nebraska fans started a Go Big Red chant while he was hurt and while they were checking on him. That oh, rubbed so me the wrong right. way. Wow. And this is from a neutral observer. That's soft ass Gen Z garbage. That's get out so of here, Nick. With the I'm sorry, I don't cheer for people to get hurt, Josh. They're not cheering for him to get hurt, Nick. They're just saying go big red. Because Gee, they hurt you know him. What happened? That's what Phil Philly fans were cheering when Michael Irvin was oh, hurt. Oh, they were saying they were was, cheering. He they, broke his neck. They were cheering. They were saying go birds. What? Did, did Is that you, what they were saying? Yeah. Did you want Husker fans to throw batteries on the field too? No, I, I actually will say I I'm with Nick on this. I'm quiet when there's an injury. Did it seem serious? Uh, no, no, it wasn't like, um, who's the most recent, didn't we have a recent gnarly injury here happen here at the, no, 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 no. I'm trying to think in a recent sporting event. Well, there was the Super Bowl where what's his name tore his Achilles running out of the field. Oh, yeah. We have one in basketball here yeah, recently. Geez, you're laughing. That's like doing a chant. But yeah, it wasn't a gnarly injury. And I will say in the defense of the Husker fan, it came because the play that was heard on the Huskers scored a run and made it five to three. Yeah, but they and they had and they had the momentum at that point. Go big! But red. they were chanting well into the "Hey, let's stop the game because this kid is hurt." And they mm, were just okay. doing it during. Interesting. Tough look for the Husker fans. Did you stay the whole game, Nick? I did. Look at sports, Nick. It was only a two-hour and fifty-nine-minute game. Yeah, they didn't even oh, do the bottom of the ninth. Oh my. Well, yeah, because the home team. Also, won. it would have gone over three hours if they would have done the bottom of the night. Yeah, it's not very fast. We're in new for, for college baseball. For Creighton, for Creighton, college baseball, Creighton moves lickety split. Their for, games but, are like Rick Pitino. But for college baseball, I mean, I'm not going to complain. I mean, yeah, especially yeah, for yeah. a game that had you know eight combined runs, four errors. That's fair. Steve writes JFC. Nick is a wiener. JFC. Oh, it sounds like a Husker. Now, fan. I would, I would, I would say this. If that if the shoe were on the other foot, I guarantee you somebody would be complaining about you know whatever the other team was doing. Hundred percent. But that, but for the record, what about as the so as as the voice of the Jays didn't bother you? No, I understood why it was happening. Yeah, and they it, just again, scored. Like you it said. was it was it would have been different if it was an obvious you know bad injury. Yeah, like Michael Irvin hurting his neck. He was not paralyzed, but he was really oh. injured. Yeah, he wasn't paralyzed. He still. Talking up a storm he on does, the NFL Network. He does talk. I like listening to him talk. Yeah. He does say a lot of good things about the Cowboys, and they never. Yeah, they never I know. And they through. always let him down. It's always, oh. always, always, always let him down. Yeah. Uh, Brad writes into the uh, Equitable Bank inbox tell Nick that his long emphasis on a word every time he talks is rubbing the listeners the wrong way. <laughs> he does do that, doesn't he? No, I he don't. He was at the game. I was at uh, the game. No block, no rock says Nick is soft, and he spelled it soft. I'm soft. S W A F T. Johnny Pig says, "Does Nick know they don't hand out participation ribbons and orange slices to all the players after the game? I'll hang up and listen." I <laughs> I've never wanted participation trophies. That's John's generation that did that. No, to us. I know. No, I did they, not. You created them. Your generation created. Yeah, them. they're like, I here you go, anything. kids. Yep, I didn't create. Like, anything. Thank you. Mom you're like, and Dad. we always wanted these, and we never got them, so we want to give you them. Yep, you I want didn't. a better life for your children than the life that you had, and now we get that life, and you bitch about I it. I didn't create mm. a damn. Oh, thing. we didn't have for cell phones. That's not my fault. It's stop inventing them then. That wasn't. But also, what's okay. wrong with orange slices? I think we could all use some. Who wants yeah, scurvy? vitamin C for Hot crying cake, out loud? Oranges, mid as hell. Wow, oh. I don't remember the last time I had an orange. Josh thing. Peterson Ooh. here for scurvy. I do like putting oranges, like the peel, on my old fashioned though. That is yum town. By the way, Oscar fans, if you want to take at least a little solace from the act, the activities of last night, mm. the uh, D1 baseball midseason field of 64 projections. Yeah. They do their own bracketology. Okay. 
has Nebraska hosting a regional. Host. And Creighton in that regional. What? Is that legal? What? Yes, it happened in 2005. It did. Nebraska last made the College World Series in 05. Yes, they did. Oh, man. That would be and, intense. And LSU in that same region. What? Oh, my gosh. Can this happen? Would John be allowed to it call can. that game? It can, of but he uh, why wouldn't he be? It well, because can. of the bias. There's announcer bias. He's the voice of the Jays, Nick. Of course, I would want to. But call he's supposed that game. to be the voice. I would want to call that series. game because no, Nick, I'd want to call that game because I know we're going to win. Oh, well, you'd have to play them. You'd Spot have to win the, the two line. versus three game. Yeah, first. we'd have to beat LSU, but that obviously would be easy. Dude, that would be Creighton <laughs> LSU. How fun would that be? I'm trying to think if Creighton has ever played LSU in any. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can't remember a time. That would be fun. I want this to happen. Fun. Shopping. There's a lot to work to do. Uh, a lot of work to do before lot that. to work to do. <laughs> what? <laughs> Happer just tweeted us, what's going on here? <laughs> and I thought a ghost was behind us. See, it's your partner for tonight's game. It's Connor Happer. What's up, not Nick Hanley? What's up, not Nick Hanley? We will be back. They both have the same haircut. Mm-hmm. Look, I'll hop wow. out of the way. Oh, wrong way. There they he is. Do they do. Look at him. Look at that guy. Yeah, they have no hair. The hairless boys. Hey, it's Happer. Yeah, but he's got a hat on. All right. You know what? Since you guys are calling the game, why don't I just go home? Happer, you can do the rest of unsportsmanlike conduct. You just sit down and shut up, lazy boy. You skipped a bunch of shows last week, Happer, and I, I didn't skip seven anything. Hours a day. I didn't skip I'm anything. I'm traveling. I'm busy. <laughs> Uh, Coming up, yeah. uh, we're going to talk to Blair Kirkhoff of the yeah. Kansas City Star. Speaking of happen. The stadium vote in Kansas City did not go the way of the Chiefs and the Royals, no. and we'll find out why. But they may not be the only franchise trying to get out of their city. Tell me more. Next on 1620 The Zone. Now live on Twitch, YouTube, and 1620thezone.com. Hi, this is Doug Nodgard with Equitable Bank. Great service never goes out of style. When the digital age dawned, many said computers would be able to handle many of the interactions that used to take a person. Boy, were they wrong. How many times have you called your bank and gotten a recording to press one or two? Not at Equitable. Not only does Equitable answer your call in the first ring, it's answered by a human being. That's because Equitable Bank values its customers. Equitable Bank. We take banking personally, member FDIC. The NBA season is heating up as we head towards the playoffs, and you can bet the NBA with a no-sweat same-game parlay from FanDuel every Thursday with TNT Thursdays. It doesn't matter if you're new to FanDuel or you already have an account. You're going to get bonus bets back if your same-game parlay doesn't win on any NBA on TNT game. NBA same-game parlays are the perfect way to combine your bets for a chance to score a bigger payday. Look at the playing games just around the corner any way you want to Stack up those same game parlays. You can do that however you want to play. Just head to FanDuel.com. Use the promo code ZONE to bet the NBA with a no sweat same game parlay with TNT Thursdays. Again, use FanDuel.com promo code ZONE. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. 21 plus and present in Iowa. Minimum three leg parlay required. Refund issued as non withdrawable bonus bets, which expires seven days after receipt max. Refund $5 unless otherwise specified. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 bets off. Trees. Are they all the same? Not at Lanaha. Grown from a quality seed source, handcrafted in our local farms for generations, and acclimated to our tough Midwestern climate, Lanaha's trees are different. Simply put, they're better. Much like our trees, we take great pride in being homegrown. Visit our garden center to find your next tree today. Rooted in quality, unmatched value, Lanaha Nurseries. 192nd and Center. When it comes to protecting your home, J. Stennett Contracting takes pride in ensuring every detail is handled. Roofing, siding, gutters. When it comes to the exterior of your home, J. Stennett Contracting has you covered. Have you noticed stains on your ceiling this winter? With storm season around the corner and the damage it can bring, let J. Stennett Contracting ensure that your roof is durable and holds up against the weather this spring and summer. When you need an honest assessment, J. Stennett Contracting has you covered. JSCRestoration.com 
Omaha Maverick Baseball is coming off a series victory over 2023 College World Series qualifier Oral Roberts, and the Mavs are ready to take on crosstown rival Creighton on Tuesday, April 9th at Tal Anderson Field. Don't miss this classic matchup. Plus, it's $2 Tuesdays when all Pepsi products and Bush Light cans are $2 when the gates open until the third inning. Get your tickets for this game and all baseball and softball games by calling 402-554-MAVS or by going to omavs.com slash ticks. At Union Bank, people don't have your money. Your money has people. First home people, investment people, people people, people who answer the phone and your chats, dream car people, dream retirement people, driving your dream car in your dream retirement people, small business people, credit card people, and all the other people you need. At Union Bank, our people help you do more than you dreamed possible. So stop in and say hello. We can't wait to see you. Union Bank and Trust, member FDIC. 1620 The Zone's unsportsmanlike conduct is brought to you by Union Bank and Trust. Now back to the program. It is no surprise that college sports is a big business. Big business. Yeah. Though I never, when I read this excerpt from a story out of the... um, Oklahoma student newspaper. I thought I was I thought I was reading something about the Kansas City situation and their stadium sales tax vote. But from the OU Daily, okay. This is uh the president of the University of Oklahoma, Joseph Haraz Jr. Apparently, there is a proposed $1 billion entertainment district that they are wanting to create in Norman. And for those of you not familiar with the geography of Oklahoma, Norman is basically a suburb of Oklahoma City. Mm-hmm. It's just out, just a little south of Oklahoma City, but it's all part of the larger Oklahoma City metro area. But the, but the University of Oklahoma is, of course, in Norman. And... I'll just read from this expert, Hurrah, or excerpt. Haraz told OU Daily that if Norman City Council does not approve the proposed $1 billion entertainment district that would feature a new arena for OU athletics, then the university, alongside donors, would look to other cities to build an arena for which its basketball and women's gymnastic teams would be anchor tenants and possibly the entertainment district as a whole. Quote, I'm very hopeful and can do everything I can to keep it here in Norman, Haraz said. But if this isn't approved by the city council for whatever reason, we're going to be looking at other cities, Oklahoma City, more surrounding areas, and figure out, is there a group that wants to do this? Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, John. (laughs) Now, how many cities are, okay, real quick. I mean, there's quite a few. I mean, more I was um, going to say, so other campuses for Midwest the University City, of, I believe. of Oklahoma, there is uh, other campuses in Oklahoma City as well as Tulsa. So it's not just the main Norman campus. Right. But that really does not make a whole lot of sense. This isn't – I know that their name is the Kansas City Royals, so I guess it would be funny to, to move and then they'd have to change the name. But we've seen that in professional sports. Mm-hmm. Not to say that I want it to happen because I obviously don't, but we've gotten used to pro sports teams moving out of a city and then taking – the new city or the new state's name. I do not remember a college moving their the location literally out of city limits like this could happen. That would be very odd. Now again, this would be akin to you know you know if Omaha, we'll use Omaha as an example. Let's say the Mavericks build a new stadium in Gretna or something. Mm-hmm. You know because that's where everything's going now is Gretna. Um. It, it, obviously, it's it, we're not talking about you know something akin to the Rams leaving St. Louis for Los Angeles or the Raiders leaving you know. Uh, Oakland they're not moving up to Nebraska. Yeah, they're not moving states. They're not going far, far away. But it's just the idea of moving that out of now, Norman. That now you have universities basically holding their fans hostage, holding holding, holding taxpayers holding hostage. taxpayers hostage in the city in which they reside Ridiculous. to say, if you don't do this for us, we're going to take our ball and go somewhere else where they're willing to play. And I get it. It's, it's big business. Now, you know, we've seen a lot of it, obviously this facility here, CHI health center across the way, 
that is a, these are city run facilities, but there is a partnership with Creighton University to have their teams here. Nebraska's got a similar situation with Pinnacle Bank Arena and Haymarket Park, where that's a combined effort between the city, the county, and the university. So I get it. There are there are these types of things where these entities can combine, but this is different. It's not like it's not like you know back twenty years ago when they built Haymarket Park that. Well, City of Lincoln, if you if you don't come up with something here to build us a new stadium, we're going to take our baseball team to Waverly. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just it's kind of antithetical to the entire concept of college sports when you're willing to take your home events off campus or far enough away from campus where people where the students especially have to pack up and load up the car and go somewhere versus just walking across campus or something within relatively short distance to go watch your, your regular season sporting events. It's, it's, there's just a, there's an arrogance Totally. With all of this. Because they just, think that they just, can do it. Yes, they, they, they think that they, they can get away with and I, it. And again, I get it. It's big business. You know, uh, You know, sports draws a lot of revenue. Business. Obviously, Creighton does here for Omaha. Nebraska does for the city of Lincoln. I get all of that. But there is a certain level where you just got to say, you know what? We're not a professional sports team yet. We're not professional sports. This is, while it. While it is seemingly run like a business and we can run it like a business, we don't have to have a business like attitude of, well, we don't like this neighborhood anymore. We're, we're getting out of here. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. It, and it, this is coming from the university president. Yeah, Katie says this plan by OU seems like a great way to lose donations and cost the president and the AD their job. It, it definitely seems like something where it's like, are you sure you want to do this? Aren't you biting off a bit more than you can chew right. with this? That you need a billion dollar entertainment center, or you are going to move to a different city? The University of Oklahoma Dash Norman is going to move yeah, out. And and, and what and are again, we doing? Again, we're just talking about a new arena for basketball. Correct. We're not talking about moving all of the campus building and the dorms and the fraternities and the sorority houses somewhere else. We're just talking about sports facilities. Mm-hmm. That's it. I mean, it's just just the the message it sends behind this to me is just wrong. Mm -hmm. And and it's part and parcel of what what is making college sports, especially big time college sports, less and less attractive all the time. Yeah, it really does. It absolutely does. Well, coming up next on that same. I was going to say on the heels of that. But speaking of professional sports Mm -hmm. last week. The Chiefs and the Royals kind of sent veiled attempts at telling folks, hey, if you don't vote for this, we may have to look at other options. And they were a little vague of what other options are. But when we've heard other owners of other franchises say these types of things in the past, it's a threat. It is sometimes led to the Mayflower vans backing up to the stadium and hauling the team to an entirely another city. Well, guess what happened last night in Kansas City? The voters there voted down the sales tax that would have helped fund a new downtown ballpark and improvements to Arrowhead Stadium. What will happen next? Let's get an explanation from a guy we've had on many times. Talk college sports, but he's been in on this story as well. Blair Kirkhoff of the Kansas City Star will join us next as we're live from Charles Schwab Field on 1620 The Zone. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. 1620 The Zone Traffic. From the Pyramid Roofing Time Saving Traffic Center, currently no wrecks to avoid this afternoon. We are getting reports, though, of delays on 204th Street for north and southbound commuters at Q Street. If you're headed east on West Center Road, delays from 192nd to 180th. Same goes with delays on westbound Dodge from 680 all the way to 108. And then it looks like there's some delays on L Street for both directions at the JFK. I'm Mike Neville. This time-saving traffic is brought to you by the Nebraska Lottery. The Nebraska Lottery has raised over $978 million, which has helped provide more than 117,000 college scholarships, save wildlife habitats across the state, and fund new facilities at the Nebraska State Fair. The Nebraska Lottery, helping to build a better Nebraska. 
Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same, but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash radio. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to Hims.com slash radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit, H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. Hi, this is Stacey McGilligan, Director of Sales for Energy Media Omaha. Energy Media is looking for an accomplished bilingual new business development salesperson who wants to take their success and skills to the next level. Is this you? Our multimedia account executives work with local businesses to create marketing plans to help them get more customers. On air, digital, on site, audio, video, it's all part of what you could sell. A sales career with NRG Media lets you make a real difference in our community. Get more info and apply online at nrgmedia.com. NRG Media is an equal opportunity employer. You're spending $300 a month. Binge drinking is the most common form of excessive drinking, which costs the United States more than $191 billion each year. By drinking less, you will save $300 a month. If you or a loved one is looking for help, find a treatment facility near you at findtreatment.gov. For immediate support, call, text, or chat 988. Brought to you by Nebraska DHHS in partnership with SAMHSA. Email any of our shows anytime into the Equitable Bank inbox. At Equitable, we take banking personally. For me, John at 1620thezone.com. The Equitable Bank inbox from 1620thezone. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential. But finding those people can be a major hassle. Unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. How powerful is Cox Fiber? Powerful enough to let your band members in Vegas... Phoenix, and Omaha. Jam like you're all in the same garage. Introducing Cox Fiber from the company with the fastest download speeds eight years in a row. It's internet built for tomorrow, today. Cox, always building better. Limited availability in select areas. Speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms and the restrictions may apply. Analysis by Ookla Speed Test Intelligence in Las Vegas, Omaha, Phoenix. Fixed media download speeds Q2 2016 to Q3 2023. Welcome to this episode of RV Ready. Brought to you by Leach Camper Sales in Council Bluffs. Outdoors? Leach Camper Sales has a great website. LeachCamper.com. Folks can see what they want and then head out. Don't forget, the coffee's always on. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. Welcome back here to Charles Schwab Field. Creighton Baseball tonight against North Dakota State on our sister station, 1180 The Zone at 545 tonight. John and Josh with you up here top side. Uh, producer Nick Grimm back at our studios at 50th and Capitol. And we're joined now on the 42 Degrees of Source hotline by Blair Kirkhoff of the Kansas City Star. Blair, good afternoon. Hey, how you guys doing? Doing good. We're doing good. I was really fascinated. I know we talked about this a couple of weeks ago here on this program, but how this vote was going to go. And and quite honestly, you would think just about anything regarding the Kansas City Chiefs right now would be a winning proposition. 
and consider that this is what was a three eighths sales percent sales tax that KC residents and visitors to Jackson County have already been paying since 2006. Why did this vote fail? Yeah, well, I was uh, I was with you guys. I, I didn't think it would. I, I thought it would pass uh, barely, but I, I thought the, the yes would end up prevailing in this. And it, and it not only lost, it lost in kind of a border, borderline landslide, uh, 58 to 42 percent. I think there are a few reasons why it lost. Um, first of all, the Chiefs and the Royals were together on this. And you're right, the, with the Chiefs' success over the last few years, it would seem like anything they're attached to would succeed. But it, I think it was the Royals' plans that probably uh, brought down the, the entire uh, vote. And, of course, the Royals are set on moving out of Kauffman Stadium and building a uh, a ballpark elsewhere, in this case, uh, in, in the downtown area, um, there th- th- there were some inconsistencies with the messaging by the Royals. In fact, the, the site that it had selected to build a new ballpark didn't come into focus until just a few weeks ago. So and it, it had shifted from uh, an original destination. So there was some, uh, you know, inconsistent messaging and a little bit of confusion. And and I don't think a a very well run campaign, Um, you know, I was but I was still of the of of the belief that the Royals and the Chiefs could roll the balls out there. And uh, and the fans of those teams would just, um, you know, give them the support just didn't happen. And so now, you know, they've got some they've got some decisions to make. Blair, I'm, I'm with you. I certainly thought that this was going to pass, and, and yet it, it didn't. And, and I think the thing that, that I'm taking away, and I know a lot of other people are too, is how resounding the, uh, the defeat was for those two franchises. What does it say that the no won as strongly as it did? Well, I'll tell you what I think it says. You know, for, uh, it says that there are some, some big Chiefs and Royals fans that voted no. And, uh, and, and so if, if I'm the, if I'm the, you know, John Sherman, the owner of the Royals and Clark Hunt, um, you know, CEO and chairman of the chiefs, I'm trying to put together a focus group of the no voters, uh, uh, that, that are your season ticket holders or your fans and find out what, um, you know, wh- where it went wrong for the team, because in a, you know, in a, in a, Jackson County, where the stadiums are located, those are the only people that voted this election. The Kansas City metro area is five counties, but only one county picks up the tab for the teams, and that's Jackson County, Missouri. Um, I, I would be I would be fascinated to hear a, 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 a discussion between those owners and their fans that buy their gear and go to their games and cheer for Bobby Witt and Patrick Mahomes. I'd like to. I'd love to know why they voted against it. And I would suspect that it's you know a lot of it, like I said, had to do with the, the messaging and the rollout, by especially by the Royals. And there's and I still think that there's part of that argument about you know why are why are we supporting um, you know billionaires with with our tax dollars when they can afford to build this themselves? I think there's an element of that, but I, I but I think it runs a lot deeper. Blair Kirkhoff of the Kansas City Star joining us, a a three-eighths of a cent sales tax proposal died yesterday in a vote of uh, Jackson County residents. Thus, for now, uh, the Royals Stadium plans and renovations to Arrowhead Stadium would be on the back burner. Blair, the, the, the concept of a downtown ballpark, it's become very fashionable now in Major League Baseball. Most new ballparks are in the downtown district. We've seen a lot of success stories with ballparks in a downtown district, namely the one across the state from you in St. Louis, for example. Uh, and it, and it's not a foreign concept. It's been talked about since going back to the 60s that, that the Royals uh, having a stadium downtown would be a good idea. But because Kaufman, which has now been around for 50 years, and I think for a ballpark that's that old, and yes, they've had some renovations, still stands very, very firm, in my opinion. It still looks like it's a very great, great place to go watch a game. Is there an affinity for Kauffman Stadium and being in that spot next to Arrowhead that is just so much more appealing to Kansas Cityans 
than the idea of a downtown ballpark? Well, I think there was a, a nostalgia feeling about, and, and is a, a feeling uh, about Kauffman Stadium in that way. It opened in 1973. It is a gorgeous stadium. It, it, it always has been. It's just the fountains and the, um, the, the outfield activities, that, uh, uh, the, the grassy area. There's just so much to like about the appearance. I know that when interleague baseball, uh, it, when, it, when the schedule changed a few years ago, and now basically every you know, National League team comes in, to the cough. And these are people that haven't seen the state, you know, announcers and so forth, teams that haven't seen the stadium in years. And they, they marvel at how, you know, how beautiful Kaufman is. And it is, it's a great ballpark. Um, but yeah, you're right. Uh, the, the, the tendency, you know, with the, maybe the exception of Atlanta is for uh, ballparks, especially when, when they're being constructed to be built in the downtown area. One thing that, 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 occurs to me is um, the convenience of Kauffman Stadium is something that fans have really appreciated. And that when, when the team was, uh, its first year was 1969, and they moved into Kauffman, like I said, in 73, one of the selling points was it was going to be a regional team, not just for Kansas Cityans, but for people of Missouri and Kansas and Nebraska and Iowa and Oklahoma and Arkansas. And it would be easy to get in and out of the stadium. Parking would not be a problem. Traffic would not be a problem. And it really hasn't been. Now, having said all that, John Sherman's on record saying they're not going to be in Kauffman Stadium after the 2030 season. The lease runs out in January of 2031. So, you know, those who voted against it because they like where Kauffman Stadium is or don't want to deal with downtown, well, Kauffman Stadium, you know, for all – Everything that we've heard isn't going to be there after the current lease expires. So, so the Royals are going to have to make some decisions about where their future home is going to be. Yeah, and Blair, I wanted to ask you about that because you began the story. Your lead mentions that the teams shared no plan B scenarios, as in what if the re- uh, the voters were to reject their proposal? I mean, what what does going back to the drawing board now look like, again, given how resounding that no vote was? Yeah, that's the you know that's the big question everybody's asking in Kansas City today. Um, you know, every referendum for uh, a new arena or a new stadium in Kansas City, ever since there's been pro sports here, has always passed. They've never had to deal with it. Now it's not like they haven't had teams and lost them. They Kansas City certainly has the the A's in baseball, the Kings in basketball, the the Scouts of the NHL, but. They weren't necessarily because of stadium issues. There were other reasons for them to leave. They've never had to confront a, a stadium issue. So um, that, that is what, uh, what they're talking about in the boardrooms for the Chiefs and the Royals and what the options are. And I think one of the possibilities is to come back to the ballot, you know, have the issue on the ballot in a year um, with, with, a, with a better organization, better answers for people who are concerned about traffic and parking and, you know, downtown issues and see what, um, you know, see what the mood of the, of the electorate is a year from now. And it's also possible that maybe the Royals and the chiefs go divergent ways when it comes to going to the voters. They, you know, they, they basically say, well, you know, the chiefs will, you know, the the chiefs upgrades for arrowheads will, will be one vote. And then a new downtown ballpark for the Royals would be another vote. Um, I think that's a possibility. There's also the idea of relocating within the metro area, um, either in, you know, you know, on the Kansas side. For we're, we're running, I know the Star is running a story that's going to be posted later today that there are politicians on the Kansas side of the state line that are uh, eager to to talk to the Chiefs about relocating. So that's a complicated issue to take a you know to, to move a team like that, but. Uh, um, but it's um, but now you know all everything's on the table for for both the Chiefs and the Royals. Talking with Blair Kirkhoff of the Kansas City Star, I want to, I'll focus on the Royals side of things because I, I think you know for the Chiefs, obviously, um, to me anyway, just looking at this from you know several hundred miles away, I think the Chiefs are probably in better shape in Kansas City, or at least would have better options in the Kansas city area than maybe the Royals do. I may be wrong on this, but, but we know how hungry some cities can be to pull in a major league baseball team. And how real is the possibility that 
the Royals could leave Kansas City altogether based on last night's vote? Well, first of all, you're right about uh, the Chiefs. I, I, I think they'll figure out a way to uh, to make it work out for them in, in, in the city. Uh, the Royals are the one are, are the team of the two that uh, that that, uh, that there's a little more uncertainty involved. And um, listen, John Sherman, the owner, he's been the owner for four years. He took over for the Glass, David Glass, and the Glass family. And um, and, and John Sherman uh, is a, he grew up in Kansas City. He's a Kansas City, and he um, uh, loves the team, loves the, loves the city. He's one of the most philanthropic people that Kansas City's ever known. A lot of this didn't really come out during the. Um, or wasn't promoted very much during the uh, the campaign, which I thought was a mistake on the uh, on that side of the vote. That uh, John Sherman has done a ton for this city, and uh, and, and he, he it sort of flies under the radar, which which is too bad. He's not eager to to move Kansas uh, the Royals out of Kansas City. He does want a new ballpark though, and um, you know the, the there are w- will there be options you know, within the metro area, you know, one of the reasons he wanted to move downtown is because originally when he, when he expressed this initially a couple of years ago was to help uh, underserved areas of downtown, you know, put it on the city's, you know, where it uh, touches the city's east side, which is uh, an underserved part of the, uh, of the downtown area. And, uh, and, and I, he, I think he still has those types of thoughts. Um, so that, that's why I said earlier, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Royals didn't come back and take another swing at this, um, uh, maybe a, a, on a ballot either later this year or next year with some better messaging and a, a way to convince voters of Jackson County that um, he has their interest at heart and maybe maybe ask for a little less money in, in, the, in a tax ask. Would it have been better for the Royals, Blair, if the the drawings and the plans for the stadium that included maybe dis, uh, relocating or dislocating some businesses downtown, if that hadn't have happened? Or did it need something real firm uh, to give voters, hey, this is what we plan to do and, and really let everyone know this is exactly what you're getting for your buck? Well, I think it would have helped the the the, the um, voter education and therefore the Royals if the site had been determined, say, eight months ago and not just a couple of months ago. And okay. even within the final week of the the campaign, the, the the mayor of Kansas City, Quentin Lucas, didn't endorse the uh, the yes vote until three days before the vote. And one of the reasons was because the Royals' uh, drawings for their uh, for their new stadium in the downtown area included uh, uh, the, the the space covering what is a pretty pretty important artery called Oak Street here in downtown. And the mayor said he wouldn't endorse it until you took Oak Street out of the equation, which the Royals did. But you know here they are making significant alterations to the plan just, you know, a week before the vote. So that's why my, my thought is to, you know, again, understand why it, it, it was voted down overwhelmingly by the people who support you in every other way um, and, and then come, come back with a better plan. And, again, I've, listen, I've lived in town for 35 years. I, I can't imagine um, the, the Royals leaving the area. They will leave Kauffman Stadium, but I can't imagine them leaving the area. Blair Kirkhoff, Kansas City Star. Blair, we appreciate it. Thanks for catching up with us. And uh, we will certainly be fascinated where this all ends up uh, down the road. Thanks for having me on, guys. You're welcome. Blair. Blair Kirkhoff joining us on the 42 Degrees, the Source Hotline. It is kind of ominous, though, when you hear John Sherman and and he, he, um, Blair, uh, pronouns pal, mentioned that Sherman is a Kansas City native mm-hmm. and he was asked by the the star about you know the question of would you ever move the team would you ever move the franchise out of Kansas City and he says I will answer that question with this is my hometown now I will remind you that 
Stan Kroenke was from St. Louis. Yeah. He moved the Rams to Los Angeles. Uh, the Cleveland Browns, Art Modell was of Cleveland. Yeah. He moved the Browns to Baltimore. I'm not saying that John Sherman necessarily is, are those gentlemen and others like them who have been entrenched in a city for a very long time and say that they love everything. Heck, we just had it happen here. Trev Alberts is of Nebraska. Yeah. And, it, and when a better thing comes along, it can be very enticing. And there are a lot of cities out there that would love to have a franchise like this. And you might be saying, well, don't, aren't there cities that would love to have a team like the Chiefs? Well, of course there would. But there's a little bit more to moving an NFL franchise, and especially one that is so popular and so good right now. There, this is one of the best local fan bases in terms of like television ratings and that type of stuff from their, their city. There will be other options. The, the folks over on the Kansas side of the border would, would, would more than welcome the Chiefs over there. And it sounds like their politicians are more than willing to play ball if there is an opening. If the Chiefs are unsatisfied with their situation at Arrowhead, they'll move them across the river or across state lines it and, would be akin to the Warriors going from Oakland to San Fran. Or, or yeah, or akin from the 49ers moving to Santa, Santa Clara. Santa Clara, yeah, for Or the sure. Giants moving and Jets moving across into New Jersey. I mean, it would be be very similar. Um, so it I think like the it, Royals are the bigger risk. The Royals are the lose. bigger risk right now because, A, they don't have as much of the support. They, they are a franchise that has been, since the World Championship, floundering yes. just a little bit and probably a little bit more vulnerable to a potential move. I mean, you just heard from Blair. John Sherman says, after our lease expires, we're, we're not moving anyway. Yeah, exactly. Guess what? There's no stadium in Kansas City for them to play in right now. Correct. So if that timeline is going to be followed, and sure, anything can change, but that timeline is going to be followed, you got to poop or get off the pot. At some point. At some point pretty soon. Yeah, at some point in the next not even decade. I mean... <laughs> God, everything's going by so fast. 2030 is six years away. It's not that you know, long. When he first Gross. said that earlier, I was like, oh, that's almost a decade away. No, it's not. It's barely a half decade away now, 2030. So they're going to have to come up with uh, whatever is next regardless. Uh, going back to the story, I really did like the lead of what Bear, uh, Blair had to write. He said, uh, in the run-up to Tuesday's vote in Jackson County, whether to extend a 3-8 cent sales tax to help pay for a new Royals baseball stadium and upgrades to the Chiefs Arrowhead Stadium, the team shared no plan B scenarios, as in what if voters were to reject their proposal? It, it really seems like a lot of people went into this thinking, of course they're going to vote for it, of course, because they don't want the threat of losing their team. Uh, and to go to what Blair said uh, and what the owner said, like they're not going to play at Kaufman by the time that the, the 2030s roll around. So what does what ultimately does this look like? Um, I mean, it's it's pretty wild, man. Like, yeah, we have the, the best franchise in the NFL. And uh, I know that they're not from Kansas City originally. They're from Dallas. But still, that they are so entrenched there. I've always felt the Royals entrenched as well. But with a lot of cities being very interested in the sport, obviously we've talked a lot about Oakland uh as of late but there are a bunch of cities around not to mention montreal up in canada a lot of cities around america that really want a piece of the baseball pie well we'll see where that one ends up but it, it is it is surprising for a team and and, I, and 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 honestly and again not to pick on the royals but blair himself even said i think the royals side of the package was the less appealing of the two because the, the Chiefs aren't talking about leaving Arrowhead. They're just talking about making some renovations there. Um, but the Royals are actually talking about moving and building a brand new stadium. And there's been some controversy over the location and, you know, where it's going to go and everything else. Um, but that is the side of it that seemed to be the thing that maybe had derailed this. But it's well, hard to believe. Well, and the plans were changing so close yes. to it, right? And, but it's just, it is surprising. That the, anything involving the Chiefs right now, you would think just attaching the Chiefs name to something know. down in Kansas City would be enough to say, sign me up. Well, that's what Blair said right early in the, the conversation. The margins only happen in that way, 58 to 42, because a lot of diehard Chiefs and Royals fans voted no. You know, if it, if it went down to the wire and it was a 50, you know, 0.01 
to, to 49.99, well, you'd say, oh, it's the non-sports fans that voted for it. But no, this is a lot of people that are diehard fans of either franchise. Star Wars Fiend says, as a lifelong Royals fan, they go to another state like Tennessee or Indiana, just an ex- as an example. I'm not sure I can still be a diehard fan. It won't feel or be the same. I don't know how you did it with the Rams, John. I'm sorry, say that again? Uh, Star Wars Fiend says, as a lifelong Royals fan, if they go to another state like Tennessee or Indiana, just as an example, I'm not sure I can still be a diehard fan. It won't feel or be okay. the same. I don't know how you did it with the Rams. Well, easy. I was a Rams fan when they were in L.A. first. Yeah, but you followed him to St. Louis then too. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then followed them back. Yeah, it didn't. It, 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 I was a Rams fan because I I'm not from the area. Yeah, right. I was a fan of the franchise, not necessarily the city they were in. Mm-hmm. And actually, in the moment when the Rams left for St. Louis, I was happy because it felt like the Rams had kind of expired, and the team wasn't doing well at that time. But the Raiders had kind of taken over the city in a way, which is ironic because the Raiders left the exact same year to go back to Oakland. But it just seemed like the Rams had fizzled out there. Yeah. Uh, moving to Anaheim, I thought, was a mistake um, when they did it. And I think it, it took away a lot of the, the, the hardcore fan base. And I was happy because they were moving closer to me. And I thought, oh, I'll be able to get, see more Rams And games. you never went to a home I game, right? One. One home game? I went to one game. Which year? Uh, it was oh, 12. 12? 12 or 13. Oh, okay. So it wasn't that long. So you didn't get to decade. see the greatest show on turf. In no, I never did see the greatest Sad. show on turf. Uh, in there. person, but well, no, I did. You saw him against the Chiefs, him, right? I saw him in Kansas City. Was that the game Kurt Warner broke his thumb? Yes. Oh man, what a, a horrible game! game. Wow. I can't believe that John was, was bad luck. Was Kurt Warner classic. broke his thumb because of John. Classic John. That's amazing. Mm. Also, you hate when teams don't play defense. I you had to despise the 2000. Oh, I did. Was not a fan. Yeah, yeah. Even when they, they were undefeated, any, they didn't play any defense at all. Man, they played incredible. I would have loved that Rams team. Yeah. Now I would be curious to know if the Royals did move. Let's say they moved to the Royals, Portland. I've been joking about the Portland Royals. Nice. How many of the folks around here? Oh, they're done. Who are Royals fans? Happer said he'd be done. Your partner tonight, Connor Happer. He says he'd be done. Mm. Yeah. But I think it's different for him, right? Like he grew up, you know, and they're three hours away from him. So I, I think right. the, the ties yeah. of the of geography really do bind him as well. Sure. Whereas they didn't. For you, it was a Husker goes to the Rams, and you are a Rams fan. You're not a <laughs> Los Angeles Rams. You are a Rams fan. Correct. And I think that that is that's a difference for you versus someone who's grown up in Omaha has been a Royals fan their entire life. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, not to get too much into stadium talk, but we are going to discuss Nebraska's situation coming up. But coming up next, mm. maybe to move away from stadiums. Okay. The stadium is Caitlin stadium. Clark's Caitlin, spelled, not with spelled, a K. spelled one of the 879,000 different ways you can spell Caitlin. Mm. Is she the next magic slash bird? Ooh. Mm. Winning time well, with Caitlin Clark? <laughs> nice, Nick. Well, yeah, that'll be about. I still need to finish that about show. About thirty years. Down. They didn't even finish, finish that now. show. It, it doesn't was, matter. Yeah, yeah it, was a, it was. It was. It was. We have like five episodes. It left. was a terrible way to end the show. Yeah, it seems like it. And it sucked because they canceled it like right before they uh-huh, shot. The yeah, I think they stuff. added like one extra. Yeah, they scene. added one extra scene. Very much said. And this is what happened. It's like really. Mm-hmm. Uh, that and more as we continue. It's on Sportsmanlike Conduct sixteen twenty. The zone. Nick Grimm for Circus Sports Iowa. Baseball, basketball, racing, all of these sports and more are available for you on the Circus Sports Iowa app. Say you want a fun yes or no prop like, uh, let's see. Oh, will Michael Bush on John's Cubs record an RBI tonight against my Rockies? Oh, if you think that's a yes, that's at plus 215 right now. And say you want something a little more straightforward, then of course they have your spreads, your totals, and your money lines. And they are very nice, tight money line splits, too. So you'll be making more with the Circus Sports Iowa app than you might with another app with that same exact line. They also have really, really great customer service. It's full of real-life people who want to help you and help you get back on their app as soon as they can. No bad AI, no chat bot, a real-life human being that you can email or tweet directly at. They'll get you sorted. Go ahead and check out the Circus Sports Iowa app today anywhere in the state of Iowa and level up your sports book. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7633.
Previously on The Crossover. I have mostly sports things that I want nothing to do with muted. Okay. Major League Baseball, muted. <laughs> Baseball, <laughs> muted. Don't you love the Mets? Uh, I did. Yeah. Mahomes, Chiefs, Harbaugh, Wolverines, Michigan, FIFA World Cup. Goal? Qatar. Goal. World Cup. VAR, USMTNC, World soccer. Cup, Wordle. I got lots on here. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley, the Connor Happer Show on Sportsmanlike Conduct, 6A to 6P, 1620, The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV Newswatch 7 on 1620, The Zone. Sunny, windy, and cool into the evening with the temperatures in the lower 50s. We'll be cold tonight with clear skies drop back in the low 30s for a low. Sunny and still chilly and a little bit breezy on Thursday, high in the upper 50s. I am Chief Meteorologist Phil Ramby from KETV News Watch 7. 1620 The Zone's unsportsmanlike conduct brought to you by a great friend of the program, Union Bank and Trust. 1620 The Zone Traffic. From the Pyramid Roofing Time Saving Traffic Center. Looks like we've got a wreck reported on center at 99th Ave, causing delays in there, so be ready for that. Otherwise, slow going on eastbound L Street from I-80 all the way to 90th. Delays on West Center Road for both directions around 180th. A slight delay on westbound 370 at I-80. And then if you're west on Dodge, delays from 680 all the way to 114th. I'm Mike Neville. This time saving traffic is brought to you by Fernando's Omaha. Spring, it's the reward for surviving another winter. Fernando's, it's the reward for any day that ends in Y. Great Mexican food, awesome margaritas, and a wonderful family atmosphere. Fernando's, Omaha's favorite Mexican for more than 30 years. A Nebraska craft beers and ciders important to you? Whether you just love Nebraska brewed beers and ciders or you're a full-fledged craft brewery, there are benefits to membership for anyone with the Nebraska Craft Brewers Guild. Their sole mission is to foster and help grow the Nebraska-centric brewing community. Become a member today at Nebraska.beer and help advance the craft beer and cider industry in the state of Nebraska. Find out more about the Nebraska Craft Brewers Guild at Nebraska.beer. What moves you? Whether it's running a race or playing with your grandkids, orthopedic specialists at CHI Health are dedicated to helping you keep life moving. We offer the latest surgical and non-surgical treatments, so you have options for painful shoulders, knees, hips, and every joint in between. Don't let joint pain put life on pause. Count on our team of orthopedic specialists to begin your journey back to what moves you today. Mexitli Restaurant by Chef Alberto Cardenas offers you an authentic Mexican cuisine experience with the traditional flavors of your favorite Mexican dishes with an innovative touch. At Mexitli Restaurant, they offer you the experience of tasting Mexico in every bite. The best tacos, birria, quesadillas, and more. Visit them at Mexitli Restaurant in downtown Omaha at 16th and Harney and look them up on Facebook at Mexitli Restaurant or call 531-772-0550 to order. A team succeeds when they work together. Banking's no different. At UBT, we're in your corner for every financial move you want to make. Your money's backed by a roster of experts who put in the work to know you and your community. So whether you're opening a savings account, buying a home, or planning your future, you always know who to turn to. Working together toward your financial goals, that's a win in our playbook. Union Bank and Trust, Equal Housing Lender Member FDIC. Roofing, siding, and gutters. Make the right call with the rooferies at John Higgins Weather Guard. This is unsportsmanlike conduct. He's OG, as the kids might say. Hmm. The 1620. The Zone. Hey, John. Yeah. You love food. Yep. We all love food. Yep. Why, well, you sound like Nick right now when I say you love Frisbee, right? He says, yes. I love food. Tell me I about food, I don't, Josh. I don't, well, Nick. I don't want you talking about food if you're going to mention it as a way to make fun of you're me. You're going to pick on me. Uh, this week's zone deal, <laughs> Nick, is to Mexitli Restaurant, which is located near us, John, in downtown Omaha. No way. Authentic Mexican food prepared in an artisanal way. They have fresh products highlighting the original flavors of mexican cuisine and it goes on sale friday morning it's a 50 dollars voucher or two 25 dollars vouchers rather for just 25 dollars. that adds up nice. to 50 bucks you can get all the details right now at 1620thezone.com
Probably it. Hey, Jack Nine. Grace is back, folks. He's in the lineup tonight. Oh, man. I was wondering about that. Awesome. I'm a big fan. Uh, Steve uh, says in the 99 season, the Rams were sixth in total D and fourth in scoring D. Yeah, and they were good in 01, but man, in 2000, yeah, 2000, it just went. I don't, what I don't happened? Know. Did somebody leave? Like, why did they get so bad? A bad D. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Because they brought in Lovey Smith for 2001. Lovey Smith was 2001. Yeah. So what in the world happened? And they drafted Adam Archuleta. Remember Adam Archuleta? They got you Adam Archuleta, but they also got uh, Aeneas Williams from uh, the Cardinals. He was fast, and that helped a lot. Yeah, I think I, I, that's a great. I would have to. I'm gonna. I'd have to take a deeper dive. Right, it's well, been maybe that could be years. a Thursday topic for the show. Why it were the 2000 Rams defense so bad? I didn't realize this, but man, they. You talk about your quick turnarounds because Iowa just won on Monday night. Yeah, and they're playing Friday night. Correct. Yeah, against UConn. In the second, right? Yep. The yes, they are the later the, game. The second of the two final fours in the women's tournament, NC State and South Carolina. Is that why? Okay, quick aside. Yeah. I'm driving into work today. Would you do me a favor? Google the South Carolina state flag. Okay. It's I'm, the. It's like the tree. Yeah. Yeah, that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. With so I'm move. driving in okay. on the interstate. And there's that uh, office building. It's now the uh, election systems uh, Where at? Where's this? This is off I-80 at L Street. Okay. It used to be the Z92 building. Oh, I, no, I know where this is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they got a huge American flag. Yeah. Flying under that flag was the flag of the state of South Carolina. So somebody who works there must be a huge is South it... Carolina flag. Well, you would think if they were a big game Cox fan, they'd just fly a Cox flag. Wow. And not the state flag. Is it they love just, the state of South Carolina. Is it just the blue South Carolina flag, or is it yes. where it's yes. the flag, yes. the tree and the moon on one side, then the stars and bars on the other? Yeah, it's, it's the tree and the moon. Uh, it's the state flag right, of South so, Carolina. Uh, the person that I know who works there just texted me and said that they have people that are from South Carolina that are there right now. So there you go. That's your answer. Oh, how about that? Oh, so, how quick was so that? They turn just, so they just have visitors there. So if like a California visitor came in, I guess we'd see the bear flag up there. Wow. I would assume this person could uh, respond. I don't want to say any names on the radio. I mean, right now. and it's a big flag too. So Behind you got to have the flag. You got to have a lot of flags there. A lot oh, of big you got to yeah, and that can sustain these winds. Hey, listener, do they? You have fifty flag? I guess you probably have. Oh no, flags, would yeah. they fly the Georgia state flag? What's the Georgia State flag, Nick? Or the, or the stars State and bars flag. on that one? Yeah. Is that the one no, with the tiny thought, stars and I bars? They took that off. Oh, did, did they? they take it off? Because I keep seeing Didn't it. They take everywhere. it off. Georgia State. Didn't flag. they take it off? Uh, no. It looks like they're. Oh, no, it's they now did. the stars and yeah. not bars. It's Nick. There's stars. stars in a there's bars, but they're not together. There, I guess there are. I mean, those aren't really bars. Those are lines. Oh, okay, yeah, that's not. That has nothing to do with the Confederate. Yeah, flag. that one does. That one does, that but one does. Not, not the other the, one. Not the new okay. one. Not the new one. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, he says that this is the first time they've ever seen that he's ever seen fl uh, a flag of another state flying. Oh, so there you go. it just looked very odd. I'm driving along and I'm like, man, the they must hell They're not that? rooting for Iowa this week. That's for damn sure. Hmm, interesting. That's right, because Caitlin Clark. We don't know how to spell her name. Name. That's true. There's so many ways to spell it. But in all seriousness, Caitlin yeah. Clark, obviously, she is she is the alpha and the omega of women's basketball, and has been one of. I mean, if you think about it, of all of the top sports celebrities we have in this country, she's in the top ten easily. Oh, by far. And I'm not. I'm talking all sports. I mean, we're talking LeBron. We're talking. You know, she has entered into a different Patrick stratosphere Mahomes. over the last couple of right. Years. We're talking about the elite of the elite. If she's not in that group, she's banging on the door like Connor was a few minutes ago. Just I mean, staring is, at us. She is right. <laughs> Caitlin, there. what are you doing looking into the zone studio at the ballpark? Oh, and there's been a lot of there's been a lot of um, conversation and speculation about what is going to be the Caitlin Clark effect. We obviously know they drew 12 million viewers for a regional final. It's never been done um, uh, in in women's basketball history. It was an audience bigger than last year's title game that she was in. So the popularity is only growing. There's been a lot of talk about what she could mean for the WNBA and what she will mean when she leaves college bas women's college basketball. Yes. Will the sport take a dive uh, in popularity, or will this be the ushering in of Will she be kind of the uh, Pied Piper that leads in a new era? But it does beg the question, moving on to her future prospects, 1979, Bird yes. and Magic, 
most watched NCAA men's basketball game of all time. It was really the game that that brought the final four and the end men's tournament to the levels it now enjoys today. It was the gateway to making this. Do you remember it? Do yes. You, okay. Why Why was that the, like, was it just that you knew who they were? Was it the undefeated they, they, season? They were stars. Yeah. They were both it, stars. Yes. And Indiana State was undefeated, but they were both big stars. So, like, you knew who they were. It wasn't, like, yes. uh, this out of nowhere thing. By the time the title game arrived, everyone was excited to yeah. watch Bird versus Magic. It, I just looked it up. It drew a 24.1 rating. I don't right. know how many millions of people watched it, but it is the highest rating a championship game has ever had and obviously that begat then the NBA really taking yeah, off because, leaving tape delay behind because those two those two entered the NBA at the same time and they became great rivals and then they and, played in in three NBA finals and and it did it ushered in a new era of popularity of yeah. the NBA and so the question is could Caitlin Clark do the same thing for the WNBA yeah, and I mean, so you, you think about right now and the interest level that suddenly we have seen in the sport. And look, I am not going to pretend that like I have been this, you know, dyed in the wool WNBA or women's college basketball fan throughout the majority of my life. I have not. No. Um, and I, I, I certainly was not as a young I, I was like a typical young teenage boy. Women's college basketball is stupid. I didn't watch the sport. Right. Now part of this is that I have gotten to, to call over the last decade and change now many many women's basketball games majority of them Creighton I think I've called maybe one non-Creighton Nebraska basketball game women's basketball game and I guess a few in college too when I was uh at Lincoln but I have grown to really love and appreciate the sport and I I, I it's not just doing it in person it is getting to watch it on television but the the I mean it's pretty obvious that the game is having a moment right now where it yeah. went from this kind of underground uh not so much underground but it just it seemed like there was like a typical type of women's college basketball fan I I, I don't think that I'm out of pocket in saying that no um and and I think that you don't John you don't get 12 point whatever million viewers because it's a bunch of uh women's college basketball hipsters for lack of a better phrase but because you were drawing in a national audience and and you know that's why I wanted to ask you about the 79 game because that happens and it leads into the 80s in the NBA. And and remember, the NBA entering the 80s, the NBA in 1980 with Magic Johnson versus the 76ers, the Lakers versus the Sixers, that was still a tape-delayed finals, Yes, which is incredible when you consider what happened by the time that 1984 rolled around when it was Celtics versus Lakers, by the time 1988 rolled around and it was Lakers versus Pistons, which was the most-watched basketball game uh, in the NBA until then Michael Jordan took things into an entirely different stratosphere. There were a lot of people that if there was sports talk in Twitter in 1979, they would have said, you know what they would have said? Why is Magic John? I mean, I guess there wasn't NIL, but why was why is he leaving? Why would he want to go to the NBA? Yeah. College basketball is where it's at. And then the NBA took off in a, in a way that, uh, you know, I don't think that any of us would have foresaw. And so in a way, I guess we're trying to kind of predict like, will the WNBA have the similar type of tail? I can tell you this. I am much more interested in that product than I have ever been before when she enters into the league. And it certainly seems like there are a lot of women's basketball stars at this exact moment that are all about to go into the league, which has already gotten more talented in recent years. And you wonder if this can be the beginning of something different. I'll tell you this ESPN is going to throw their weight behind it, yes. given what is oh, happening. They'll promote the ever love. I mean, they promote it. I mean, they promote it pretty heavily anyway because they have an investment in it. Correct. But it will be over the top. Oh yeah. I mean, they that first game. The, I bet the chit chat shows will be doing uh, pregame cover, or not pregame coverage. They will do their shows probably from the arena. Yes. They will do their shows from the city, and she'll play for Indiana. They will do the shows from Indianapolis or wherever her her first game is. I think. That oh, and they'll going... massage. They'll make the schedule to make mm -hmm. sure that it is the most attractive possible matchup because it's all about this. And by the way, if you're curious, the WNBA season begins in in mid May um, and ends. The playoffs start in late September, and then the last possible date for the WNBA finals is October 20th. So it goes through the summer and ends in the middle of football season yeah and I, I i think if there is an opportunity 
certainly in the regular season to build up some momentum. This would this is a good calendar for them because the only real competition they'll have is Major League Baseball. And Major League Baseball is obvious. It's different Dog now. Dog days of summer. It's different now in how people consume baseball. Baseball is very much a localized regional sport where, you know, fans follow the teams in their region, but the national broadcasts on Fox and ESPN don't get that big of viewership. Um, that, that's just the way people now consume baseball. So the potential for a, a singular WNBA game featuring a star like this drawing in a pretty sizable number on a random Saturday or Sunday whenever they might play the game, it, it, the potential is certainly there. Now, will it carry over? The The thing that doesn't exist here, and I know um, Angel Clark, she just declared from LSU. You Angel know, Reese. Angel Reese, I'm sorry. You, have, you had Magic versus Bird. Correct. It was two guys going in together as one and became a rivalry we've seen that and then Reese, we got lucky to get that matchup in the finals yes. multiple times and and my guess is that wherever Reese ends up and wherever Clark ends up there's going to be some intrigue there because there's that will be one of the national television games certainly there, there will there will be there's a pass between those two but throw on Paige Beckers as well and that's what Asian Joe sure. says you know Caitlin Clark does more for the WNBA than women's NCAA basketball the WNBA has stars like Sabrina but it needs more recognizable figures like Clark Reese and Beckers to add depth to the league yeah, I, Clark is diff, Clark is just different altogether. Where this is a national phenomenon. What is? I, I keep asking this question, and you were gone uh, at the very end of the, the regular season and, and throughout a lot of the the you know women's uh, Big Ten tournament. What is it about her that she has been able to cut through all of this? And I like I do have an answer to the question to my own question, and that is that she reminds. A lot of us, I think, of Steph Curry, and yeah. she's shooting these logo threes. Yeah. But she is not the first good women's basketball player. Paige Beckers is still in the sport. She will play. They will play each other on Friday night, which is, I mean, just awesome. What is it about her, John? That you, I mean, you've been, you were a PA guy for a, many, many years for a women's uh, college basketball team. So you have been around throughout the Tennessee days, throughout the UConn days. You have been around for the explosion of popularity. Uh, Brittany Griner, this is different. This is different than anything that I can ever remember in the sport. And that's, it's an obvious statement. Her game just got 12 plus million viewers the other night. Why has, she, what is it about her? Do you think is it, or is it just the obvious? She takes deep threes and she plays a unique brand of basketball. I mean, the, 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 the Steph Curry component or the Steph Curry comparison is, is very apt. Plus there's, there's a, there's a flair to her game. She's also the type of person that can be polarizing. I mean, there's a lot of people that don't like her, and they like to nitpick 100%. her behavior on the court or if she's pouting or anything like that. Flopping. And, and flopping. So there's a lot there. I mean, she can. she's one of those people who, you know, can play the face and play the heel. Right. When she's making like all, all these, good stars, like honestly. all good stars. I mean, Patrick Mahomes, he is loved and hated. Correct. By a lot of people that watch the sport. And 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 yes, there's a lot. There's there's a, an element of greatness to it. There has to be an element of great skill and great performance that goes into it. But then it's the way that it is done. And I think all of those things together, you know, have combined into this. And I, I think part of this, too. And I, I think I think this part of the conversation is being ignored a little bit. And it, And I don't bring it up. To just say, well, yeah, but, but we are in an era now because of the way the television audience is fractured that live sports properties almost across the board are all seeing some kind of bounce, whether it's in local ratings or in national ratings. And, and because, and those properties have become more valuable because there's no longer the must see event. Literally, NBC Thursday night was called Must See TV because the only time you could watch the episode of Friends or Seinfeld or Cheers was when it happened. Correct. And not many people were using VCRs at the time. And, it, you know, we didn't have DVRs at the time. And you had to wait for have... reruns, but you didn't know which rerun you were going to exactly. get. Exactly. And, and, and on-demand programming did not exist. And now you're seeing scripted television is no longer, hey, it's an event. I got to be there exactly when it happens or I'm going to miss out. The only thing that exists are live news 
and live sports. And live sports is obviously something live news, breaking news, that can't be scheduled. Correct. Live <laughs> sports is scheduled, and it's become a lot more valuable as a property. So I do think some of this, not all of it, but some of this rise that we're seeing in the popularity of women's sports, especially basketball and volleyball, can be attributed to just an overall rise of live sports. But when it comes to Caitlin Clark, this is something that takes it to another level. And it just shows you, it's it's why the growth of the NFL, if you really look back in the history, is rather unique. Yes, there have been great players and great stars, but that was something where the sport became the centerpiece. The sport became the draw was the, the sport. thing. The draw was the sport, the drama, the physicality, the all of it. Whereas like basketball needs stars. Where basketball needs stars. Yeah. They need they need people to usher in. When the NBA kind of fell into a lull post Jordan, they didn't have those types of stars. They needed LeBron. It took it took Kobe, it took LeBron and uh, LeBron Steph. and Steph to bring it back up again and, and it's the same thing here and i think we are now also moving josh remember we now have a generation your generation nick's generation who it was a, a lot more normalized that women competed in sports mm -hmm. in my generation yes we had girls and women's sports but they were always on the back burner they were always in the background they were always ignored but since, you know, we've we've seen more, dare I say, women's empowerment and things like that. Those were things that your generation, it became normalized. It's commonplace. It became commonplace. So it's a I long think, tail of Title IX, right? Yes. Yeah, so, T-A-I-L. So I think, I think, you know, it, it, there have been people, granted, not with the exact same skill set. But yeah, there have been little Rebe Rebecca Lobos of the world, the Cheryl Swoops, others, it, un, other great women stars. Lisa Leslie. But they happened in an era where people still looked down their nose at women's sports. We're now about, I would dare say, 15-ish, 20-ish years into women's sports now is more readily acceptable societally. That it's okay for girls to play sports. And it's been that way for a generation. And so I think that also has helped. And now you've got this first real amazing unicornish like superstar rising up in an era where women's sports has been normalized and it's and it's accepted by society and it's created this perfect storm that has seen the rise in popularity of these events and let's add on top of it too for the the, the matchup that drew the the most watched women's basketball game ever Let's not pretend to that race didn't play a part in it as well. Just like Magic and Bird, oh, yeah. white player yeah, versus yeah. black yeah. player. And what was so interesting about that to me is like the Kim Mulkey of it all. Because when I think of Kim Mulkey, I'm not going to think of her rosters or her as a person. Maybe like I would have like a John Thompson back in the day, for example. But I think that race, it's always going to play a part in it. Yeah. And that doesn't have to be a bad thing. A couple uh, other comments that I think are good. Asian Joe says the timing, the way she plays combined with this day age of social media and max says something i think she is different because the three-point shooting can be just as good as the men's game and she does that let's be real griner couldn't dunk like a shack lebron zion clark shoots like steph i think that that is spot on where um you know what was one of the the, the disses that people had against women's basketball for so many years it's like old people like it because it reminds them of the 50s because they're playing because it played below slower, the rim below the rim this and and like look right now women's basketball they're not dunking like they are in the men's game uh at any level but the game has evolved and changed where you, and the three point shot is now it, oh more God. exciting than the dunk. I keep saying it, but Paige Beckers, because I have had a chance to see her in person, is the best player that I have ever watched in person um, in the women's game. And the way in which she handles the ball, I, it's just like, oh my gosh, this is absolutely incredible. So I, I think that, that what Max says there, I think he really hits on something good. All right, need to take a break. We've still got dumb debates to come, so yeah. stay right there. Unsportsmanlike conduct rolls on from Charles Schwab Field right after this on 1620 The Zone. Omaha's most listened to all sports radio station. Again and again and again. 1620 The Zone. For 
forget their drive to Colorado or Missouri. Stop into any Omaha 42 Degrees and indulge in a curated cannabis experience. Premium flower, cannabis, pre-rolls, and cannabis accessories paired with an elevated customer service experience. All are waiting for you at 42 Degrees. From novices to connoisseurs, we are here to elevate your cannabis journey. 42 Degrees, your destination for top-tier cannabis, second-to-none product selection, and exceptional service by your mob's house. Do you like to shoot fireworks? Would you like to get paid to shoot fireworks? j Displays wants you. Help shoot an Omaha Storm Chasers game, Memorial Park Display, or any of the major shows in Western Iowa and all of Nebraska. If you like to travel, j covers Nebraska, Kansas, and most of Missouri. They offer free training and great daily pay rates, which makes it a perfect part-time job. Visit j and Displays.com and click the Join Our Team tab to find out more. j and Fireworks. Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. EquitableOnline.com. At Cox Mobile, we know you're smart. You brush your teeth in the shower to save time. <laughs> Make coffee ice cubes for your cold brew. Mm. And wear goggles to cut onions. You also added Cox Mobile. So smart. Now you're running on the network with unbeatable 5G reliability and saving on your Cox Internet. It's ingenious, just like you. Oh, thanks. Cox Mobile, the smart way to mobile. Cox Plus paid internet required. Cox Mobile runs on the network with unbeatable 5G reliability. It's measured by Ookla LLC in the U.S. to H 2023. Other restrictions apply. Learn more at cox.com slash mobile. When it comes to protecting your home, J. Stennett Contracting takes pride in ensuring every detail is handled. Roofing, siding, gutters. When it comes to the exterior of your home, J. Stennett Contracting has you covered. Have you noticed stains on your ceiling this winter? With storm season around the corner and the damage it can bring, let J. Stennett Contracting ensure that your roof is durable and holds up against the weather this spring and summer. When you need an honest assessment, J. Stennett Contracting has you covered. JSCRestoration.com Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash radio. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you, discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to Hims.com slash radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free, with zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. eBay Motors is here for the ride. Go ahead, feel your engine. Admire that perfectly installed exhaust. Your vehicle's moving along this freeway like it was made from fresh installs and a whole lot of love. With eBay Motors, you get over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. 1620 The Zone's unsportsmanlike conduct is brought to you by Union Bank and Trust. Now back to the program. couple of uh, comments coming in. John putting a bow on the Caitlin Clark. I mean, really, it was more of a women's college basketball discussion in general. But Travis says, Josh, I went to the Big Ten tournament in Minneapolis, and the thing I found crazy was the number 10 to 12-year-old boys wearing Clark jerseys was crazy. When I was a kid, I can't remember a time I ever saw a boy wearing a jersey for a girl. Just crazy the impact she is having on both girls and boys. I've noticed that, too, when I see games on TV. And, you know, one of the things that we I always talk about or I always think about with representation is that I never had to think about it growing up. I turn on the television and you see a see a white guy playing quarterback. It's like you never think. I never thought twice about it, and so it just shows the importance and the impact that she is having, and that Angel Reese is having, that all these women are having, just on a bunch of little girls everywhere. Say, I mean, volley, you can say same thing about volleyball day or when Creighton and Nebraska played here, you know, across the way at the arena a couple of years ago. There's just thousands of people that you know in the '70s or in the '60s they wouldn't have had that chance to watch something like no. that. And so, I mean, the impacts of all of this, we can try to predict what's going to happen, but we really won't see it for many, many years to come. 
Uh, if you missed it earlier, Dennis Dodd of CBSSports.com. Your friend. Got a sit down with Scott Frost. Scott Frost really has not been quoted publicly since his firing from Nebraska. Correct. His last post-game press conference after the Georgia Southern, was that the team? Yes, it was. Yeah, I, you I, and Nick bleep this. You and Ravi on <gasps> Bigger Over Reaction. As I made my way stuck in traffic listening to you guys on 101.9 The Cake. What a great but signal, John. To be yeah, fair, we don't, we don't awesome know that signal. Frost has never said something to somebody at a bar like, hey, kid, get away from that golden tea machine. It's my turn. <laughs> I, have, uh, I, have, I have talked to some people who have spoken to Scott Frost in the months since he has been away. Uh, and let's just say that the quotes that I hear off the record make me annoyed by him even more. Mm. So, But now he has spoken on the record. Are he these quotes spoken, annoying? Well, he has spoken on the record uh, with Dennis Dodd and just reading some excerpts. But he was asked about his days at Nebraska and how Nebraska has now gone through quite a few leadership changes. As Dodd points out, three school presidents, during Frost's tenure, um, you know, they've gone through now. This will be the third different athletic director uh, since Scott Frost was was first hired. And Frost said, quote, this is bad to say to a media guy, but I've never wanted to be a critic. Mm. I've wanted to be in the arena and the arena is back in the world of college coaching. Are the off the record things that you have heard? Does that jibe with I've never wanted to be a critic before? Uh, no, it does. That I haven't heard any of that. I mean, but as you pointed out earlier, he used to be a blogger for the Lincoln Journal Correct. Star, and he also filled in on, on sportsmanlike conduct and yelled at Tom Chattel once. Mm. So it seems like he did like doing media things. Well, uh, give him a podcast. According to Dodd, Frost is comfortable living in Scottsdale with his three young children. Um, he has time to plan. The family prefers the location so much it might be hard moving back to a small college town. Quote, my whole life I was a little league player and a high school player, then a college player, then an NFL player, then a grad assistant, position coach, coordinator, and head coach. It, I, it was on a trajectory, and I knew what was next. Another quote um, from him. I know this. There's some good coaches out there. I'm a good coach. Mm. I belong doing it. Mm. I just don't know for sure that what what that's going to be right now. If the right head coaching job comes along, I'd take it. If the right coordinator job comes, I'd take it. You want to coach our flag football team? Let me ask you this, John, unless there was any more quotes that you wanted to hit on. No, no, we do please, debates. go ahead. Um, why do you think he's doing this? Sit down. Do you think that the response to him wanting to coach again has been so cold yes yeah i think so too absolutely i, I think th that he wants to coach and that he has probably reached out to people and i wonder if maybe there is interest in in him from the analyst perspective but not from the coordinator certainly not the head coach right I, I, he flamed I, out so bad and so many stories like not to do the whole michael's video bit because we have enough fun with it so many stories got out after the end of his time that I hear mentioned in passing yes. on a variety of college football podcasts that I listen to. People forget I listen to college football podcasts. Um, at and, normal speed, it, right? At, yeah, definitely not. Uh, that I think that has happened to such a large degree that I think the Scott Frost name is kind of toxic right now in college football. And this is me taking a lot out of some very rare mentions of his name. But I think that things got so bad at the end, and finally people were willing to talk, that a lot of folks within the world of college football now know about it. That's my opinion. I don't think there's any doubt that it, that's one of two things. It's either he's been he's tried to put his name out there, and the response has been very tepid, or he's now comfortable having his name out there, and this is his way of getting getting that ball rolling. It's one of those two things. There's no he he wouldn't be doing this if he was just bored one day and said, gee, I haven't said anything in a while. Maybe I should talk to somebody. No, there's a purpose behind this. And that purpose is to get his name out there or and or to. Cleanse his resume, if you will, cleanse his reputation and. Give him another shot, mm -hmm. because I agree with you, I think there's enough out there that Frost for lack of anything else became rather toxic. And it's funny how you can become toxic in this business. You can become toxic by cheating, by doing something untoward, by doing something unethical. You can become toxic by becoming bad at your job and a laughing stock. Mm -hmm. And 
Scott Frost became a laughing stock, not just here, not just with his critics here, but with people across the country. He became the poster child for, wow, this is what can happen to you when you don't put enough effort into your work. 100%. Uh, Michael, not severe, he sends in a screenshot of a, of a particular moment in the column where Dodd writes, Nebraska's last 13 losses under Frost all came by single digits. All nine losses in 2021 were by single digits, the most in the AP Top 25 era, which is since 1936. Nebraska was 4-21 in games decided by seven points or fewer under Frost. Uh, Dennis Dodd still. That's either a trend or some terrible luck. Maybe both. Whatever the case, it shouldn't damn his prospects of stepping back into the coaching profession. To which Michael says, every business I've managed has gone bankrupt and I've been charged with embezzlement. Either a luck or trend. It shouldn't damn my prospects. Yeah, that's a wild uh, opinion to have on top of it. And not to relitigate the whole you know, number of losses by single digit stuff again, because we did that plenty back in 2021. But it, it, like, I'm look, and I've never really disliked Dot as much as you have, but that's a... I feel like you're going out on a limb there saying, whoa, what do you mean? He, he was horrible and he finished all these games under 500, but that shouldn't, that shouldn't stop somebody else from hiring him. He knew he knew he lost a lot of those close games to teams. They should have beaten because his teams were not well prepared enough. Mm-hmm. Close losses when they happen that often, that regularly. It's why we had so many people panicking after two close or two games of the Matt rule era and how the Minnesota game turned so many people sour in such a quick because it looked so similar mm-hmm. to how it, how the pattern was under Scott Frost. Now, the good news is, to a degree, Matt Rule pulled the nose up, though there were a few of those types of losses at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. But the reason why people had shell shock and PD, PTSD over the way that Nebraska lost some games last year was because they saw this same pattern happen the previous four and five years, and they can point it back to one thing. The team was not well coached. Bingo. Yeah, and Sam points it out too. A lot of garbage time touchdowns in that close loss stat. Yeah, that that was the thing that infuriated me most in 2021 was like they were down by 20-something against Illinois at one point in time. Like that that was a cheap one-score loss, and they had quite a few of those cheap one-score losses uh, throughout his time. But, yeah, this is a guy definitely who – Wants to get back into coaching. I don't. I don't. You know, think that he's lying there. But my guess is that the response has just not been very, very good. Coming up next, dumb debates live from the ballpark, sixteen twenty. The zone live from the host coffee studio. This is sixteen twenty. The zone sixteen twenty. The zone traffic. From the Pyramid Roofing Time Saving Traffic Center, heads up an earlier crash on Dodge at 40th Street and cleanup stages still causing a little bit of delay there. We've got significant delays on westbound I-80 starting at 42nd going all the way to at least 72nd. If you're east on I-80, significant delays from 680 all the way to 72nd. Delays on eastbound Industrial Road from 156th to 132nd. Also delays on eastbound L Street basically from 132nd to 90th. And then if you're west on Dodge, the usual delays from 680 to 114th. I'm Mike Neville. This time-saving traffic is brought to you by Saul's Jewelry and Loan. Sometimes life throws you a curveball and you need a solution fast. A solution to help you make payroll, to save your house, to keep growing, or fund a startup, to fix a roof or other major repair. Saul's is your fast, local, confidential solution. Get the cash you need today with Saul's. Don't miss this week's Zone Deal. This week's deal is to McSintley Restaurant in downtown Omaha at 16th and Hardy. Get $50 in gift certificates for only $25. McSintley Restaurant offers authentic Mexican cuisine with the traditional flavors in your favorite Mexican dishes with an innovative touch. McSintley Restaurant in downtown Omaha. This week's half-off deal. Zone deals go fast. 9 a.m. Friday, 1620thezone.com. A toast to our new college grad who fills us with so much joy, almost as much as when we're in our RV. Oh, the world is your oyster, kiddo, and ours too. Now that we're covered with Progressive, Dad and I can hop in our RV anytime we want. Might even splurge on a retractable awning. Look out. (laughs) Sorry, what was I talking about? 
Protect your loved one with an RV policy from Progressive. Take as little as four minutes to see what you could save at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Hey, baseball fans, join the Blur Tailgate at Hilton Omaha this June for our 12th annual hospitality event during the College Baseball Championship Series. Book an experience for your clients or employees with an inclusive bar, buffet, TVs, music, and tailgate games. Secure your spot today and let Blur Events take care of all the work so you can enjoy the day. Plus, we're just steps away from Charles Schwab Field. Visit Blur Events com to book your group, buy tickets, or learn about sponsorships. That's BlurEvents.com, your college baseball and football tailgate destination. Nominations for the Step Forward Awards are now open. These awards are the state's most prestigious awards for volunteerism, and we need your help to find outstanding volunteers from your region of the state. If you know a volunteer who deserves to be honored for their service, visit serve.nebraska.gov and click Nominate Now. Made possible by sponsors like Omaha Public Power District. Nominations must be submitted by June 1st. Paid for by Serve Nebraska, aired by the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and this station. Hey, baseball fans, join the Blur Tailgate at Hilton Omaha this June for our 12th annual hospitality event during the College Baseball Championship Series. Book an experience for your clients or employees with an inclusive bar, buffet, TVs, music, and tailgate games. Secure your spot today and let Blur Events take care of all the work so you can enjoy the day. Plus, we're just steps away from Charles Schwab Field. Visit BlurEvents.com to book your group, buy tickets, or learn about sponsorships. That's BlurEvents.com, your college baseball and football tailgate destination. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZ and Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. Throw. 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 To have a blow throw, it would be nice. To have a blow throw, it would be nice. To have a blow throw, it would be nice. To have a blow throw, listeners and not till we did anyway. Dumb debating. John's computer sucks. Macs are the only way. Dumb debating. Fullbacks are running backs. Hamburger steaks. Josh is too dumb to eat a cupcake. Mailing a base. Does John like Nebraska or Creighton? Just, Just three, three radio, radio hosts on air. Dumb debating. Die for the pile on or give up on the plate. Dumb debating. Millennials are great and old should go away. Dumb debating. Rarely do we find any common ground. Josh wants his food to be the best around. Even if it gives him fatal flatulation. Just, Just three radio hosts on air. Dumb debating. When a tree falls down and nobody's around, you can bet your ass it won't make a sound. Water ain't wet, you know nothing about hydration. Just three radio hosts on air, dumb debating. Just three radio hosts on air, dumb debating. All right, let's rock and roll right into it. It's Dumb Debates. You can participate in the Grum by sending us your Dumb Debates anytime. A lot of times you can do your best thinking when you're sitting on the throne. That That's means where all toilet. The kings, that's where, no, I was talking about how the kings and the queens would come up with all their wonderful ways to rule various countries. All these great ideas came from sitting on a throne. I have a dumb quick one. Okay. Well, I was just setting it up by saying you can send them to us into the JTEC Construction Zone Twitter page at hashtag, USC1620. Yeah. Use the hashtag Dumb Debates, or you can email the Equitable Bank inbox, John at 1620thezone.com or Josh at 1620thezone.com. Please put Dumb Debates in the subject line, not the entire subject of the email. Yes. Nick? Okay. Well, John's lead up made me think of this Was Humpty Dumpty an egg? Yes. Yeah. Why do you think that? Because nowhere in the story does it specify ever that Humpty Dumpty was an egg. Are you sure? Yes. It never says that he's an egg. Hmm. He's always Humpty depicted Dumpty as an egg. Humpty Dumpty sat on he's... a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Does it say Humpty's an egg in that? The... I mean, I just read it. But it he's always depicted as an egg, but they never say he's an egg. So is it just a dude? Let's see. Hmm. Nick, you may have 
you may have come across. Nick, you I'm could, looking but, but, at a picture of the music, and yeah, I mean, that's not an egg. It's just a odd-looking creature. Oh, creature. Yeah. Well, I mean, it definitely looks weird. Well, in the in the wiki, yeah, it says, uh, best known in the English-speaking world, he is typically portrayed as an anthropomorphic egg, though he is not explicitly described as such. Oh, here we go. Okay, so this is uh, scrolling down on the Wikipedia page to the meaning section. The rhyme does not explicitly state that the subject is an egg, possibly because it may have originally been posed as a riddle. Mm. So you were supposed to figure out that Humpty Dumpty was an egg. So Matt says in the YouTube. Like a may an egg. <laughs> man egg. Not a base. Matt says in the YouTube that put him together again is implying he's an egg. But when have you ever put an does... egg back together right, again? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, why would you ever put an egg back together? Sam says this was the dumbest debate. Wow, we've had some dumb no, ones. No, this says, isn't this the is the dumbest no. that we've ever done. No. no, actually, 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 I just learned something. I've always just assumed he was an egg, but it's never actually depicted as such. Yeah, that's a great. Or point. It's always depicted as such, or but depicted never that's what, but stated. never written that way. I didn't realize that that Humpty Dumpty was popularized in the United States on Broadway. Oh, in oh. the pantomime musical Humpty Dumpty. The show ran from 1868 to 1869. Nice. nice for a total of 483 performances. Whoa, people were bored back then. Yeah, they really were. Well, they They'd go were. to movies because they had air conditioning. It was can a you, uh, time. Okay, can you imagine if the play that they saw at Ford's Theater was in <laughs> was Humpty Dumpty? Was Humpty Dumpty, and that's how old Abe took the bullet. Well, it looks to the like back he's not the skull. only one that had a great fall. Am I right, Mrs. Lincoln? And could they put him back together? Exactly. Well, Jackie O tried to put JFK back together. Remember, she's grabbing his <laughs> oh, brain. All right. All <laughs> right. Jeez. You were saying it about Too Lincoln. Soon. Look at Lefty John strikes again. The mm -hmm. conservative president gets killed, and John says, "Awesome, out with the Republicans." No. But the Democratic president gets assassinated. John's like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! Let's not make fun of him." But, but too soon oh. there are people in our audience still alive who remember that that's fair that's very fair there's You're no one our... in our audience who remembers lincoln getting shot that is also fair I as think. far as you know yeah that's true that's true uh in honor of the runs of breakfast the breakfast runs are rather which we'll talk about a little bit the later breakfast breadstick you, this is your weirdest take. This is the take, weirdest, Nick. dumbest take. Uh, Mutt asks, which fast food item would you wait in a long line for? Remember the Wendy's, was it the Pop Popeye's chicken sandwich or the Wendy's breakfast? There were lines all over Dodge for that. Yeah, the Popeye's chicken sandwich when that, we got in before the hype when we first tried it for the show, which was great. Because the line was not very long. But then because it was a limited time at first, the lines were insane. Mm-hmm. And but Stips line. perished because he waited so God, long. God, what a great... Died. I haven't had that sandwich in so long. I need to have that sandwich again. I'm really crazy. It was a fine sandwich. It was a, it's a great sandwich, it's a John. Fine Order sandwich. on the app, and it might be ready by the time you get Let's home and get there. Order on the app. Get out of here. So I'm trying to think about this from I bet the, Pope, like... Does Popeye's app, when you open the Popeye's app, does it does it just crash your phone? <laughs> no, it says, does here it just, are some does great just, deals, does daddy. Does it download a virus onto your phone and just destroy it? Nope. And ruin the phone? Because basically that's, that's the equivalent of Popeye's in-person... Nope customer service John, definitely not John. what it they does, give you a virus so on the taco bell app it gives you the option to swap out like sauces and stuff so on the popeyes app it gives you the option to swap out the mayo for spit wow you guys are absolute monsters i don't know if i have an answer to this question mainly because i mean i have waited in long lines speaking of popeyes for things before but like i i I, I'm trying to think if like there's something that we don't have in Omaha that I'd be like, yeah, I'll wait in a long line for that just because I, we don't have it right now in Omaha. I, yeah, it, it, it would be for me. It would be something if I were out of town. Like, let's say I was in California. I wanted some In-N-Out Burger. Hell yeah, yeah you do. And I made a, a made a specific plan. I'm you gonna, would wait in a, line for In-N-Out. I, I would wait in a long line for In-N-Out Burger, but that's because I don't get it here. In this, I mean, I'm serious. I'll be driving home like, like like after tonight or after a late Creighton game, and I want to get something in, in a drive through If that thing's more than three cars deep, I'm moving on. You're, you're done? I'm what moving if, on. John, what because about I, – I have, I have very little patience. Mm. What about if Taco Bell brought back your double-decker? Or the – what was that Taco Bell thing that you love so much that you miss? Uh, nothing. 
the yeah, beaver, the like bell beaver. The, no, I, <laughs> I don't remember the bell beaver. You know, if, if, which, by the way, sounds like something you'd find on the Urban Dictionary. I'm trying to remember. What is the bell beaver? Uh, Michael Severe said that Popeyes used to have onion rings. If they brought those back, I would wait in line for those just to try them. See, that's, I think, what my answer would be. Would be, like, defunct items from years past. Mm -hmm. yeah, a but... spicy McChicken. I like the spicy McChicken. They don't always have it, though. I haven't been to McDonald's in a while, but I like the spicy McChicken. Yeah, again, for something like this, it would be something that I cannot get at home. Whataburger. Yeah. I would wait forever for Whataburger. Never had Whataburger. Neither I went to I. a Whataburger after Nebraska lost to Oklahoma in the Big 12 title game, but I was so sad my stomach hurt and I didn't eat anything. Mm. I'm uh, going to Kansas City this weekend, so I'm going to see if I can stop by a Whataburger. The Whataburger. Another food-related one from Shankopotamus. Okay. <laughs> oh. If mayonnaise is a base... Is sour cream also a base? Oh, of course yes. sour cream is a base. I'm pretty sure they spe specifically they've said sour cream is a base. When well, I whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Who has said this? I like recipes, cookbooks, and stuff. They say like if you make okay. chip dip. I am the only person on the face of God's green earth who's smart enough who has identified mayonnaise as a base. And every time I say that, you mayo Nazis come whoa. after me as if I were. No, we say it because you say it has no flavor. Yeah, that's which is the part wrong. that we're confused. I, I, I say it's like it, saying it sour doesn't. cream has no flavor, which it yeah, does. Of course, sour cream flavor. does have a flavor. As does mayonnaise. That's mayonnaise what we're, has no flavor. That's it what we're adds, critical of. It adds very little to anything. It's just wasted calories. But I, in the spirit of the question, I would say yes. So why do you hate it so much then? If it doesn't add anything, why do you hate it so much? If it has no flavor and it's just calories, you shouldn't hate it. You should just deal with it no i should not deal with it then, if i'm gonna have calories i want taste that's not why you if, dislike if, it it's if because celery, you don't like the taste if Just celery, you don't no, like the taste. there's no taste to it if celery if a stalk of celery had 150 calories would anybody eat it no but people shouldn't eat exactly celery because, because it, it tastes good with peanut butter it has a flavor and the flavor is bad josh I don't like celery. I yeah, think but that celery, John, as famously, has no calories to it. I know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that John knows he's wrong, but he's pulling a Jimmy Allen and no, doubling no, down. No, 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 oh, no. Do not. Do Jimmy not. Allen No, 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 no. <laughs> I, again, I'm the only one who has correctly identified mayonnaise for what it is. It is a Good. base. At best, it is a base. If you're using it as a sandwich spread, you're doing it wrong. Once again, today, I had Jimmy John's. I told him, get that damn slime off my sandwich and give me And they mustard. said, oh, you don't like the flavor? And you said, no, it has no flavor. I, and no. Then they probably you said, know what the guy we're did? calling the cops, I think, <laughs> I think I saw a light go off in the young man's head behind the counter. He said, this guy's on this. <laughs> I should be putting mustard on my sandwiches because it actually adds flavor. Yeah. Unlike this gross ass white goo. Oh, whoa. Oh, hello. That we're just smearing all over the place. Oh, maybe, and it gets everywhere. Are you sure you're putting the right white goo on your sandwich, John? <laughs> you got to find the right goo. What, maybe that's what the issue I is. I don't put any white goo what on my What if you food? found out you actually hated Miracle Whip and not mayonnaise? What if that, oh, I like that was my thing? I thought, <sighs> I thought I hated mayonnaise. Miracle but, Whip has flavor. But it's bad. It's, it's not good. It's zip. It's good. I hate Miracle Whip. Mm -mm. I've got one more like food it. one. Okay. So you're at work, and there's yes. one microwave. What's Which, worse, okay. somebody reheating something potent like Indian food? And wow, they could Nick, only reheat geez. it. This is me. I was reheating Indian food. Racist. Or somebody who, like, it takes a minute to reheat this, right? Or somebody who takes three to four minutes to reheat one item. Which is worse? Uh, neither is honestly going to bother oh, me. I'm honestly really? not bothered by either of those things. You got to reheat your food. I don't care how it smells. And it... I sometimes will bring in a frozen mac and cheese from Trader Joe's, and it takes like five minutes to cook. So, like, I can't yeah. be bothered. I'm not going to be bothered by either. No, of those and it's not like there's always a line for the microwave. Seriously, our microwave is barely ever in use. It's, yeah, exactly. It's hardly ever in what use. What annoys me about our microwave is that it's like people unplug it all the time, and then the clock isn't shown. And I then will input the time on the microwave at work. I've stopped doing this, but it annoys me. Who's unplugging the microwave? Why do you care if the time is I on like the microwave? I like seeing the time on the microwave. The, why do you need Look to see your the watch. time on the microwave? It's just because it's yeah. common courtesy. Oh, oh, I get it, because you have one of those Crapple watches no, and the damn thing I don't have work. an Apple Watch, John. I have a Koros now. Oh. A what? A Koros. It's for people who run. Get a Garmin. No, I don't want a Garmin, What do you Nick? need a watch for for running to look at it? Wow, boy, I've, I've wasted a lot of time of my life. 
just aimlessly I running. I don't think you understand how running works, John. Every time I, I bring up running, you're like, what do you talk about? How to take a step? <laughs> Well, yeah. I mean, what would you talk about? Why do you look at a watch to to tell you how? how... It tells you how. Wow, I've been doing this a long time. Imagine how many more productive things I could be doing with Uh, my life. Nothing more productive, John, than than running and having. Yeah, nothing more productive than running. Uh, By the way, oh, unless you're running from a bank (laughs) robber. Do you think it would would be be worse if we had if we worked somewhere else that wasn't here? Like when I worked at the hardware store we had a break room. if there was like more people that yeah. used the microwave i'm sure then then i would probably yes. be a little annoyed we, but... i did have a co-worker who notoriously would Check always reheat their indian food in the microwave and, Grim. <laughs> and it no no this is back in, in lincoln yeah, yeah, yeah and it did stink up the place there was a guy at home depot who would bring in a full totino's pizza and just microwave it I didn't know you Ew, could microwave. I bet that them. isn't very good. Yeah, that's gross. Yeah, you he would put just, those in the oven. He would just the throw it in the microwave. The only good thing about the Totino's pizza is the crunch. The, yeah. yeah, seriously. I mean, obviously. You want it to have, like, somewhat of a pizza type thing. Yeah, yeah, you want it to have at least some redeeming characteristic because the flavor certainly isn't. Uh, many people, by the way, reaching out about mayonnaise. But before that, I did want to oh, read this Oh, they always Dave. do, and you're all a Dave bunch says, of- Communist. Strange fact, the last living person who witnessed the Lincoln assassination was able to appear on a 1950s game show. What a life. Wow. That person has seen some stuff. I think you can find clips of that somewhere. Wow. Interesting. All right. Here we go. Uh, by the way, a lot of people also bringing up uh, fish as, as the thing not to microwave. I've never been in, in a... I don't think anyone's ever done that at our station. I don't know what fish smells like in the microwave. I don't know. All right. Here Bad. we go. Uh, unnamed texture says it's the texture of mayo, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> But slime. El Scorcho says I'm with John on most food takes, but the flavorless mayo take is just wrong. Steve writes Miracle Whip is mayonnaise that grew up in a trailer park. <laughs> Jeff says it takes more calories to digest celery than the amount of celery you consume. That is pretty wild. That's why it you is. put peanut butter. But on imagine, the celery. P- imagine if celery had 150 calories, no one would eat it. That's that's yeah. the thought process. People do eat celery that because is, of the lack of calories. That is the thought process that should be in all of your Just minds when it comes water. to mayonnaise. But John, do you watch like what you eat to that degree that mayonnaise is like the one thing that you'll say no? no Why is mayonnaise I, no, the line no, no. you draw health? I don't. I don't. I don't necessarily draw the line health wise, but it's like if I'm going to consume calories, mm-hmm. consume. I boy. want it to taste good and have taste to it. You want it to taste good, interesting, and so have you taste do, to so it. So you don't like the taste of mayonnaise. Again, we if celery were there. 150 calories, nobody would eat it. Have we finally got there? John says no. mayonnaise has taste. No, mm. it has no taste. Mm, no taste. It has no taste. It does nothing unless you put flavor into it. Thus, it is a base. Jimmy Allen says celery is garbage. By the way, I did agree with the sour cream being a, a base thing because when I make the dill dip, that many people on many sides I love the dill dip praise. It actually the base of that is actually mayonnaise and sour cream. Mm. Yes, that's how that's how it yes, begins. Yes, the base. Mm-hmm. And what do you taste in that dip? The Again, dill. John, nobody's oh. arguing that mayo is a base. That's not what we're yes. arguing. Ooh, and, it, and it has no taste. Sam says, "John, just run. You can eat whatever you want. Bingo. That's why you run, John. I can eat whatever I want. It's awesome. Oh yeah, and then I can go and get my knees repaired and my ankles repaired. It's bad for your joints. That's a plus. It doesn't lives, do any it's an old, old lifestyle. The human body has not changed that much in. Everyone always says a that. Billion years. Well, who are all these people you that you know that run and had to get their knees replaced all the time? It's bad for your joints. That's what. Who told you this? Common sense told me this. Common sense. Mm-hmm. Plus, well, plus these baseball players like, better watch out. They're running around. Yeah, yeah but at least they're, research. At, but they're running to something. They're running to the ball. I'm running. They're running to I'm the running base. to the kitchen table so I can eat food. That's what Why? I'm running what are to. You, go to a monster. Are you running to the kitchen table? How many things are you bowling over? Many things. Many tables. One or you're I not running fast soup. enough to, to roll anything over. Uh, by the way, yeah, uh, we're we're not. I'm not going to have time for this today because the show is almost over. But oh, God. I know. Andrew Marchand and Stuart Mandel. I was wondering why he didn't have a mailbag today. Mm. They just put up a story that is titled Inside the College Football Super League, One Powerful Group's Idea to Fix a Doomed System. Cool. When this happens, and it sucks, I just want everyone who said that we were wrong mm. to apologize to us. Mm. All right, so that's something we'll probably talk about tomorrow. Yeah, probably. All right, mm. we'll come back and have more. It's on Sportsmanlike Conduct on 1620 The Zone. But first, John, 
What? We are here for the FanDuel Sportsbook, and uh, right now there is no college football and no Super Leagues that we have to worry about, but what we do have is the end of the college basketball playoff for both the men and the women. You got two games for the women on Friday night, two games for the men on Saturday, and then one for each on both Sunday and Monday, but whether it's that, John, whether it's Major League Baseball, the NBA, the NHL, there are so many ways to go and bet on sports on the FanDuel Sportsbook. And right now, if you go to FanDuel.com slash 1620, you as a new customer can get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. So maybe, John, you do it for one of those basketball games on Friday or Saturday night. It's, not, it's a capital idea, Josh. It is a great idea, and that's $200 you can use on point spreads, money lines, parlays, whatever. You can pick who's going to win it all this weekend. Just visit FanDuel.com slash 1620. Bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Again, new customers, $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. 21 plus and present in Iowa. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued in non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem call 1-800-BETS-OFF. The Connor Happer Show. Basketball is better than football. It's time to finally admit it to ourselves. This state has brainwashed you for years and years and years. Football this, football this. We have to talk about all these football topics. Who's going to be the fourth string running back this year? I'll never know. Does it matter? No, it doesn't. You ever notice how we're so happy right now and we haven't talked about football in weeks, Josh? Weeks. The Connor Happer Show. Weekdays from 10 to 2 on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from a Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Sunny, windy, and cool into the evening with the temperatures in the lower 50s. We'll be cold tonight with clear skies drop back in the low 30s for a low. Sunny and still chilly and a little bit breezy on Thursday, high in the upper 50s. I am Chief Meteorologist Bill Ranby from KETV News Watch 7. 1620 The Zone's unsportsmanlike conduct brought to you by a great friend of the program, Union Bank and Trust. 1620 The Zone. Traffic. From the Pyramid Roofing Time Saving Traffic Center, we're getting reports of a crash on southbound 72nd just before Grover, causing delays through there. If you're headed west on I 80, delays start at 24th going all the way to 84th. If you're east on I 80, delays from 680 to 84th. The road work on Dodge at 36th has traffic down to one lane for both directions, causing delays through there. You're also going to see delays if you're west on Dodge from 680 all the way to 120th. And then if you're headed west on West Center Road, delays between 168th and 180th. I'm Mike Neville. This time-saving traffic is brought to you by the Nebraska Lottery. The Nebraska Lottery has raised over $978 million, which has helped provide more than 117,000 college scholarships, save wildlife habitats across the state, and fund new facilities at the Nebraska State Fair. The Nebraska Lottery, helping to build a better Nebraska. There is only one constant in the universe, and that's change. Brent Rasmussen of Mortgage Specialists. I'm sure many of you remember the incredibly low interest rates that were available only a few years ago. Well, things changed. Now rates are higher. But would you believe me if I told you there was a time when people were paying double-digit rates? And that's the thing. Everything changes. Rates go up. Rates go down. So if you're waiting for the perfect time when rates drop before you buy a home, you might miss out on the home you really want. So when you think about it, what's a thing today might not be a thing tomorrow. See, change is good. I'm Brent Rasmussen. Call me at Mortgage Specialists and we can show you all the details. Mortgage Specialists, driven, trusted, reliable. Click mtg-specialists.com. And MLS number 5918, Equal Housing Lender. Hi friends, Kent Pavelka, courtside, getting ready for this year's matchup between the average roofing companies and the rooferees at John Higgins WeatherGuard. The average roofers are just that, average at best, not very impressive. The rooferees, above and beyond the opponent, more dependable, service that exceeds the norm, good sportsmanship, fairness, and integrity. You know them, you love them, and they're ready to win for you. Make the right call with John Higgins WeatherGuard. It's tip-off time with the rooferees at John Higgins WeatherGuard. You need it six inches. This is unsportsmanlike conduct on 1620 The Zone. 
All right, John, real quick before we get to uh, – we have content coming up soon. We oh, do have crotch content. shot. Crotch shot. Two things. Oh, uh, crotch oh. John. Shut up. I have a follow for you on the Super League that, again, we'll probably discuss more tomorrow. But how about Sam, John Bishop here for Fake News. Multiple studies have shown that regular running strengthens the joints and actually protects – Against development. Is this, is this the kind of boring ass stuff you talk about in your on your podcast? No, I would never talk about. <laughs> hey, are you worried about your knees exploding? You should. It's a positive you podcast, should. John. It's you very, should. That's positive. If if your knees aren't exploding, that's a positive, man. If I'm spending more time on this. I better Instead, not. Instead, you're just talking about our love of running. Okay. How much fun it okay. is. Okay. Do you do two right steps and then a left? Listen to one of the episodes, John. Steps, and maybe you'll change right your and two three lefts. Uh, by the way, so Stuart where Man- could you find that podcast if I wanted to? It's called listen. Chasing Three Hours, John. It comes out every Friday. Wait, morning. isn't that the name of this stuff? That yeah, Matt, Matt Rule. Rule I'm coming for you, bro. Stealing my podcast. Now, are you man. coming for him running at full speed, jogging speed, and are you running with two left steps? Hey, Matt, let's run a 10K. I'll whoop your ass. I would destroy this man. I would destroy him. Now, you, you does know he what? know stuff about the Tampa 2 more than I do? Sure. I would whoop his ass, though, in the marathon. You should invite Matt Rule on the podcast if, for anything else, confront him about stealing the name of your podcast. That would be very, very nice. Uh, I have not had a chance to read the uh, Mandel-Andrew Marchand story, um, but the group of sports executives and college presidents that are proposing this new Super League, and David Oven just had a funny, because he said, I actually kind of like this idea. It's maybe more fleshed out than anything I've seen before. But don't call it the Super League because it has a negative connotation. Mm-hmm. But the Super League would be 80 schools. They would pay players and collectively bargain and increase revenue. Quote, the current model for college athletics is dead. So, again, something to read before the grum tomorrow. 80 schools is certainly a lot more schools than we have ever heard, though, for a situation like this. I Are all... I mean, are are these, well, we'll do it tomorrow. We'll do it tomorrow. We'll do it tomorrow. We'll do it live. Yeah, because we want to have, I I think we should take an earlier break than normal. I want Nick to be able to spread his wings with his questions. And maybe we could spread our wings with our answers. Oh, thank you. That is a a great, great idea. Mm -hmm. Spread to that. We'll take a little bit earlier break. We'll get to some content. We'll get to some uh, what's for dinner. And we'll also get ready for tomorrow's Grum. Yeah. Here on 1620 The Zone. Remember, no matter how you listen, it's still AM radio. 1620 The Zone. Is reviewing life insurance on your to-do list? Now's the perfect time to add it. A friend recently told me that securing life insurance sooner rather than later can help you lock in lower rates for years to come. So I bumped this up on my list and got it done. I called Select Quote and couldn't believe how easy and affordable life insurance is. I'm 40 and got a $500,000 policy for $16 a month. My husband's also 40 and his $500,000 policy was only $18 a month. Plus, with Select Quote's same day coverage, there was no medical exam required and we were covered by the time we hung up. Knowing I have this checked off my list feels amazing, but the peace of mind knowing my family is protected feels even better. Call Select Quote 1 800 670 5151. That's 1 800 670 5151. Or go to selectquote.com to get your free quote today. 1 800 670 5151. Details on example rate at selectquote.com. Omaha Maverick Baseball is coming off a series victory over 2023 College World Series qualifier Oral Roberts. And the Mavs are ready to take on crosstown rival Creighton on Tuesday, April 9th at Tal Anderson Field. Don't miss this classic matchup. Plus, it's $2 Tuesdays when all Pepsi products and Bush Light cans are $2 when the gates open until the third inning. Get your tickets for this game and all baseball and softball games by calling 402-554-MAVS or by going to omavs.com slash ticks. Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. Equitableonline.com. Host is roasting every morning. Host is roasting every day. Put your coffee department in good hands with Host Coffee Service, providing direct delivery and loaned coffee equipment with service programs. If you're ready to change to a better coffee provider, it's time for Host Coffee. Omaha's best coffee since 1972. Host Coffee is always roasting something good for you.
Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same, but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash radio. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. 1620 The Zone's unsportsmanlike conduct is brought to you by Union Bank and Trust. Now back to the program. Look, I made you some unsportsmanlike content. On sportsmanlike content. content. On sportsmanlike content. Content. Content that's unsportsmanlike. Getting ready to wind down the grum. Uh, for those of you uh, interested in Creighton baseball tonight, uh, six o'clock. Uh, pre-game starts in about fifteen minutes over on eleven eighty the zone. I'll be with either Connor Happer or Nick Handley. We don't know. I'm just going to cover my bases. I'm going to guarantee it. Grumball, Grumball that it's going to be Connor Happer. Grumball. Oh, oh, wow. Grumball okay, doesn't well, matter anymore. All right. Well, I guess well, I'll be Nick. on with Nick. Nick. Grumball's you dead. Were on my side with the Grumball. It's See, dead Grumball. now, though. It, yeah, I, you broke his heart. Off. And he said, you broke Grumball. his heart. Just need to run it through the dish dishwasher. It'll be fine. It'll be nice. Run it and through the dishwasher. More like run it through the de louser. You know the the decam the, the decontamination chamber. Like it's got like take yes, it through exactly. my dentist. You, you put the lice on it. You hose it off. You throw the clothes at them. They're here's all stark the, naked, the Bible, walking with their Bible. Yeah, here's here's a- your Bible. <laughs> anyway. Oh wait, it's time for content. Oh yeah, that too. Stephon Diggs is leaving Buffalo. The Texans traded a second-round pick next year for the star wide receiver, giving C.J. Stroud another weapon and leaving Josh Allen with what exactly? Uh, Here's my question. The Bills are getting a pick next year. Mm -hmm. They're not getting a 2024 second-round pick for a four-time Pro Bowler and the leading receiver in receptions the last four years. No, they're getting a second-round pick next year were they this desperate to get rid of Diggs, who's been kind of you know he's got you know like most receivers they got kind of the diva attitude in fact he had a he had something on social media yesterday um that implied that he wasn't essential to josh allen's success and he replied to it are you sure um you know so there's been like this contentious relationship but how is this guy not worth a, a first-round pick, and B, a pick this year in the draft. This is this is a weird trade to me. Well, I mean, in fairness to the Bills, his production fell off pretty big, uh, especially, John, towards the end of the season. Now, part of that could be, um, you know, like maybe why he was frustrated and why he wants to move on, but he'll turn 31 throughout next season. And if you look at the end of the year – Wow, his last 100 yard game in in the in the season, the whole season, was on October the 15th on a Sunday night versus mm. the Giants. Okay. Uh, he had an 86 yard game. He finished the season versus Nick's Dolphins with an 87 yard game. Ends up. Now again, his his targets dropped quite a bit. Uh, he only had a couple double digit target games after November uh, going into the playoffs. He ne- he didn't get double digit targets in the playoffs. Like I guess my question is ultimately with this. How much of, of that was on him and his age versus how much of it was on the, the Bills and the change at, at offensive coordinator getting rid of Ken Dorsey and what they did in the, the back half of the season? I, I still like Diggs, but th- there were times where I just didn't think he was able to get the separation that he was when he was a younger wide receiver. Last season, five wideouts caught a pass for Buffalo. Four of them are gone. 
Wow. Yeah. I mean, that, now Khalil Shakir, to- Khalil, Khalil Shakir is the only wide receiver who caught a pass last year from Josh Allen in a Buffalo uniform, still in a Buffalo uniform, at least as of today. Yeah. And so it's going to be a year where there's going to be more pressure on him as always, because he's the quarterback and he's a very, you know, uh, marketable and, and known commodity. There's going to be more pressure on him now. And, and not just from like the outside, but internally, because seemingly they don't have the stars that they used to, certainly not the targets that they used to. So do we now have to change? We look at the AFC pecking order. Obviously, yes, the I Chiefs think. are number one. The Texans so. are definitely on the rise. They also got Joe Mixon, remember, from Cincinnati. Um, so Buffalo's coming down. The Bengals, we assume, are going to be better they'll because back. they'll be they'll be healthier. But you got to consider the Browns in there somewhere. But, yeah, right now the AFC pecking order, the Bills are slowly falling What's going to happen in the AFC East? Does this now become Miami's division to dominate? Great oh, question. Oh, I like that. Mm. Seems like always it's it's like there's never a balance. One team just gets out there and runs away with it. And now it seems like that the best candidate for that would be Miami. Fins up. Yesterday, Creighton women's star Emma Ronzik announced she was entering the portal. How big of a blow and how much of a surprise is this? I don't think that this one is that big of a, a surprise. Um, now, I guess, John, it's it's maybe harder for me to answer this question given that I was so in tune with things throughout the year. And of all of the players that I thought, you know, had not no chance to return, but very little chance to return, I would have put her at the very top of that list. Now, how big of a blow is it? Huge. She was, in my opinion... She had the best combination of like floor and ceiling um, where the floor was very high and her ceiling was incredibly high. I thought that she had her most efficient year yet. Um, She is so creative around the basket. She obviously has a a great outside game as well. Um, I think that she will be a really tough piece to replace, assuming that she doesn't just stay in the portal, but she goes somewhere else when she uh, is in there. Yeah, the, the rumor mill had been that this was probably in the works. Or her sister plays at Colorado State, uh, that there was the chance that maybe there was going to be an opportunity for those two to either reunite there or elsewhere. We're not sure. But, yeah, it, it's uh, it, it's not terribly surprising. Uh, but if, you know, if we take the words of Jim Flannery from last week to heart, uh, he, he thought that most of that core group was coming back. So if this is the one departure, yes, it does hurt, but – if you've got the rest back and with the portal being what it is and what Flan has done is in, in building that program, Creighton basketball, women's basketball has a pretty good reputation. Uh, I don't I don't think you can replace an Emma Ronsick, but you can certainly replenish the lineup and uh, and and still have a very good team next year. So much for Bronny James coming to Lincoln as part of USC's basketball team. LeBron's son has entered the transfer portal. Wait. Doesn't Nebraska have some open scholarships right now? Oh, I don't. Could Nebraska? Could Lincoln, Nebraska, handle the Bronny James Celebrity Express, knowing that you already have Dylan Rayola and the celebrity Rayola. that surrounds him? I mean, could 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 can two mega stars like this exist in the same small? We call it small. I mean, compared to you know New York City, small town. I don't know. This could be. This could be rather interesting. Um, though I, John, I, I it, it, it all play serious. On the West Coast now in the Big Ten, so his dad could still watch Nebraska, USC, and hoops. That's true. Now, in all seriousness, I do still have questions about how good James is, Bronny James. That is, because yeah. you know he had the unfortunate heart episode last year. Uh, his season got off to a slow start. Um, just how much talent is there, how much ceiling is actually there. I'll be very curious to see who goes after him and where he ends up because you're bringing the celebrity with him no matter what. And so how much of this is going to be predicated on what he can do as a player for that team or what his celebrity can do for a program that might need an infusion of attention, if you will. Yeah, you know, he was already going to be a player – that people uh, looked at in terms of prospects for the NBA and said, okay, let's like chill out. Uh, He wasn't, you know, the, he wasn't the best high school player last year. Um, He didn't even average five points a game. And this this is not to pick on him as an individual. It's just to compare him to his contemporaries that are going to get drafted. 
uh, I, you know, like I hope that he just is able to to go out and, and do his thing on his own. Like I know that that's basically impossible because his last name and his first name, like we know, we know the lineage there. We know who he is. Yeah, like you just you kind of wish for his sake that he was able to kind of go to a low level school and and find success because I imagine he'd be good. He's obviously has some modicum of talent, but he he's gonna live under the uh, in or in the shadow rather of his dad for his entire life, let alone on the floor. The women's basketball committee was scheduled to revisit its decision to hold the first two rounds of the tournament at campus sites for highly ranked teams and to hold its second weekend games in two sites rather than four sites after the 2025 championships. Good idea? I mean, we hit on this a little bit, was it last week, John, or two weeks ago? I still like that the women's game has a a home court advantage built into it. I think it's super cool. I think it's super unique. I will uh, admit, though, that I love home field home court home ice advantages in all of sports it's it's something that i uh find uh i don't know it's just very close to my my heart in all honesty that said growing the game continuing to grow the game is having more neutral site games because it allows for more money to be infused um within the sport that said like you know you turn on a a men's tournament game in the first weekend hell even in the second weekend it's not like these places are packed all the time omaha does a very great job of filling up the arena no matter who the opponents are as long as Creighton's not playing at the same time. But otherwise, you turn it around. I mean, you saw John in Pittsburgh, empty arena at times. We saw it this last weekend in Los Angeles, empty arena at times. So um, it's not even a diss so much on on the game itself. It's just more, are you sure you're going to be able to have the atmospheres that we have, uh, you know, or as we have had over the last few years in this sport? I, I don't think it's necessary to go all in like the men's tournament has. Um, I still think this is a product that can grow and flourish, and yet you can also give some motivation to teams having a good season to host tournament games. Because, listen, I get it. The ratings are really good. Uh, There's more attention on the women's game. Now, There's it's yet to be determined how the post-Caitlin Clark era is going to look. We talked about this earlier. Yeah. But I, I I think there's room here for a little compromise. I think instead of doing two sites for the regionals like they have been doing, doing actually four regionals where you east, yes. west, midwest, south, I, I think you can do that. But I would keep the on-campus because you want to start building the on-campus excitement for the sport and keep that um, exciting and keep that natural. And it's a great motivation for teams who have a really good season that they get to host games on site. Oops. I think the ship has already sailed on the men's side. I would love to see yeah. this on the men's side. Oh, Absolutely it'd be awesome. I would. But that ship has sailed. That's never going to change. You don't have to change everything at once. I think you can do a better job for the growth of the sport. Yeah, expand the regionals to four different sites, but keep the first and second round games on campus for now and build the product locally because that's where it's always going to come from. The grassroots is always going to be local, and you're always going to want that interest to be there. And if you lose that, then any momentum that you may have gained from the last couple of years can be lost. Providence guard and Big East player of the year, Devin Carter, announced he's leaving for the NBA draft. How big is this for the rest of the conference, and do you see Carter having a good NBA career? It's big for the league. I mean, this was, in my opinion, the player of the year. And, of course, he did end up winning the player of the year. He was a tremendous – I mean, he could do everything. Obviously, he could shoot from deep. He could score inside. He could make plays on defense. And he can rebound. He's going to be one of those guys who, at the next level, is going to be one of those off-the-bench, you know, great reserve-type you know, guys who can do a little bit of everything. I mean, his, his outside shot is not a traditional, you know, textbook jumper. So I don't think he's going to be a huge three-point threat because uh, while he did shoot very well from three this year, he'd improved 10% from the year before. So his history wasn't the best. But I think he can certainly do a lot. He's a little undersized. So uh, I think I see him as coming off the bench. But as we've seen in the NBA, once you get that contract, you make some money, you're going to be set for life. 
I think he wants to leave the Big East behind because he thinks it's an overrated conference. That's, I mean, that's what people are reporting, John. I think so they're doing a Josh, new 30 dumb, for 30. Dumb, dumb overrated was dumb last league. segment. Dumb debates was last segment. No, it was two segments ago, John. We well, did whatever. Two you, you're, ago. I mean, idiotic Feeble minded. Takes. Idiotic takes. <laughs> this is not the name of the segment, idiotic takes. Oh, we all God. know, and we saw it again in full display last night, the Big East rules the world. Mm. Wait, what happened? Was was there a random basketball game last night that I missed? Well, you missed everything last night because I was busy. busy. I watched the. I watched the. I don't movie. know if you saw this, but but Creighton won last night over oh. Nebraska uh, once again, proving Big East superiority. But I get it. You were too busy. Do they get any? Uh, do they get money for that? Do they get the shares for winning a baseball game in the regular season? No, that only happens in the tournament. Oh, okay, my bad. The I just wanted to. Tournament. I just wanted to know. I just wanted to know. Sad. Once again, the education of Josh continues. Before Shohei, the man who had money stolen from him, whatever, came onto the scene. The baseball world was in love with Bryce. Oh, Bryce Harper, we love oh, you. Bryce, There's tears Bryce. in eyes. Oh, nice Bryce. Beard. While Shohei tries to figure out his story and what he's going to do now that he doesn't have his <laughs> once trusted translator who wronged nice, him, Nick. Harper great, great was. Job. Harper was hitting three home runs last night in a win by the Phillies. Why can't America have good, decent, moral, non-gambling heroes like Bryce Harper and Shohei minus his translator? Mm, uh, I do I do really like Bryce Harper. How about last night too, John? The funny thing where he accidentally started going around the horn and John Cruck is... Did you see this? Did you hear about this? Yeah. John Cruck's laughing about it. Um, and, and then he asked him about it in the post game. I do really like Bryce Harper. That's a guy that came in. Uh, you can certainly speak better to like hype baseball players in 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 your lifetime. My lifetime, I don't remember a player that came in with as much hype as Bryce Harper. The dude graduated high school early to go play community college ball when he was still what a sixteen or seventeen year old. He got drafted super young. He came into the pros. I know that that he had a couple of down years before he left Washington, but. I do really like Bryce Harper. Plus, it's yeah, nice beard. Nice beard. Uh, a decent, good, non-gambling gentleman. It's Someone nice. who's never done anything to embarrass his organization or his country. Um, <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> nice. You should see right now, everyone in Japan right now, their heads are hanging low. It's like... Mm. It, it, they come up like, with tears in their eyes, but they literal do. tears. They do. It's like, Shohei, how could you lead us so astray? They're like, this yeah. is the worst thing that's so ever happened to our country. Not paying attention to what's going on. Oh, my gosh. Did you hear what Nick just said? No. <laughs> so Nick, say it again. They say this is the worst thing to ever happen to our country. <laughs> well, that would be just like millennial uh, Japanese to ignore history. <laughs> ah! That'd be hilarious. The old, the old Japanese folks are like, "Are you serious right now? Are you kidding me right now?" <laughs> David Schoenfield has ranked all MLB teams in terms of watchability, and the Dodgers lead the way. John, your Cubs are sixth, and my sad sack Rockies are twenty seventh, which isn't last. No, it's not. But that's still gross. Why do I like this sport again? No, seriously, please explain this because I don't get it. I don't. John, I don't brought, understand it. You could have picked so many other teams. I know. I could have. You know, why did you pick the Rockies, Nick? It, Is it because you like the phrase Rocktober? No, it's because it felt right. I've watched I've watched games here and there, and none of it felt right. We'd always have the games on in the studio, and then that one day we had a Rockies game on. It just it clicked. It felt right, and I hate it. It's the worst. It's mm. my team, though. They they chose me. They are fun to watch screw up, though. It is kind of... If you put the Benny Hill theme behind any of their fielding, it's hilarious. We should do that with the A's. It's fun the to A's watch almost the Cubs, won last night. It's fun to watch the Cubs hit laser beams into the grandstands. It's fantastic. Mm. You're a big fan of that, John? I'm a are huge the Cubs fan good so far this year? Are they, are they sixth in terms of your watchability, too? Well, they're, they're, the Cubs are first in terms of watchability. Oh, my bad. Everyone else is last. John, nice. how does it feel to know that you're destroying the Rockies? Are you we scared have, to play a good team? We can only play the teams in front of us on the schedule. Josh has told me this many times when trying to defend his fraudulent football team. We can only play the teams on the schedule before. Mm. It's true. It's 100% true. 
Uh, I mentioned this team earlier. They almost beat Boston last night. The artist soon to be known as the artist formerly known as the Oakland A's are meeting with Sacramento today to see about playing ball there for three years. How sad is all of this? Dude, I heard an interview last week, John. Uh, this says a lot about me. I was listening to Jeff Passan on a podcast, and he was talking about baseball. And, you know, Jeff is – he'll give his opinions, but well, I consider him more just reporter than anything yeah, else. Dude, he was ripping this whole situation to shreds. And this was before the Sacramento stuff really started gaming or gaining a whole lot of steam. It, it, I, I feel – like, I know we have fun with Brunts every Tuesday. I feel so bad for him. I feel so bad for the fans of Oakland who lost their football team, lost their basketball team to uh, San Fran across the bay. Now we're going to lose our baseball team, but but it, it's going to take years. I mean, it's just this slow, slow death. The A's are in hospice in Oakland for seasons. It sucks. The um, I, I saw a tweet today. There's a, there's a place called Last Dive Bar, mm. which is an online store that, quote, celebrates uh unique and stylish apparel that celebrates the iconic oakland coliseum right oh boy so they sell shirts and hoodies and they you know they're they, they're going all in on boycott the team sell the team going after the a's owner john fisher well uh their twitter account tweeted out pictures of four different oakland a's wearing this place's wristbands oh this place called last dive bar and wow. all four of those players have either been demoted, benched, or released by the team. Since, wow. Since Not then. fishy at all. Not fishy at all. This is a this is a, I, and it's it's crazy because when I when I was in high school, this was the best team in baseball. Seriously. You know, this was the Tony La Russa, the Bash brothers, you know, uh, Carney Lansford, Dave Stewart. John, they made the playoffs great. within the last decade. Like this is they're not this isn't a franchise. Like I'm trying to think of like, you know, woe be gone franchises for like like this isn't the Browns when they first came back to the NFL and they were horrible forever. You know, Oakland in my lifetime, they've not well, I guess had they won a World Series in my lifetime, yes, but I was one year old yeah. when they won a World Series. But this was a team that won their division a ton in my lifetime. They had all the money ball teams. Um, you know, they the last time they went to the wild card, they went to the playoffs in 2020. Like, that's four years ago. COVID was happening. They were probably playing down in Texas or whatever that stupid playoff system was. Unreal. All right, coming up next, the breakfast runs that was real, and it was spectacular for causing traffic jams. <laughs> that and more. What's for dinner as we wrap up the Grum on 1620 The Zone? Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. It's Champions Replacement Window Season, and we're celebrating with Buy Two Windows Get Two Free. If your windows are drafty, difficult to operate, or costing you money on your energy bill, it's time to replace them. Champion Windows is here to help. Champion builds our own windows right here in the USA. We make the process easy. We help you choose the best design options for your home. We then build your project in our very own factory. Our install team manages your project every step of the way, and it's all backed by our lifetime guarantee. Turn your house into your dream home with more livable space in a new champion sunroom or enhance your curb appeal with new siding. Now 30% off. Don't wait. This sale won't last long. Buy two windows, get two free and 30% off sunrooms and siding. Call 877-GO-CHAMPION or visit championsavenow.com to schedule a free in-home estimate today. All discounts apply to our regular prices. Select style supply. Minimum purchase required. Cannot be combined with other advertised offers. See store or website for details. Champion. JTech Construction, the official exterior experts of the Huskers, offers exterior solutions that help you protect your number one investment. Whether it's roofing and siding or windows and doors, they're committed to excellence, quality, and outstanding customer service in every step of the process. When it's time to protect the exterior of your home, your choice is simple. Turn to who the Huskers turn to, JTech Construction. Check them out online and schedule a free estimate today. JTech Construction. The official exterior experts of the Huskers. At Union Bank, people don't have your money. Your money has people. First home people, investment people, people people, people who answer the phone and your chats, dream car people, dream retirement people, driving your dream car in your dream retirement people, small business people, credit card people, and all the other people you need. At Union Bank, our people help you do more than you dreamed possible. So stop in and say hello. We can't wait to see you. 
Union Bank and Trust, member FDIC. How powerful is Cox Fiber? Powerful enough to let your band members in Vegas, Phoenix, and Omaha jam like you're all in the same garage. Introducing Cox Fiber from the company with the fastest download speeds eight years in a row. It's internet built for tomorrow, today. Cox, always building better. Limited availability in select areas. Speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms and other restrictions may apply. Analysis by Ookla, Speed Test Intelligence in Las Vegas, Omaha, Phoenix. Fixed media download speeds Q2 2016 to Q3 2023. College basketball's <laughs> biggest tournament is coming and it's time to start betting like a pro with the world's largest sports book right at your fingertips. Circa Sports Iowa. It's sports betting the way it should be. High betting limits, tight money line splits, exceptional customer service, and more. Fund and bet like a pro anywhere, anywhere time it's never been easier download your new bookie before all of the march action at circusports.com if you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling call 1-800-238-7633 do you like to shoot fireworks would you like to get paid to shoot fireworks jnm displays wants you help shoot an omaha storm chasers game memorial park display or any of the major shows in western iowa and all of nebraska if you like to travel, JM covers Nebraska, Kansas, and most of Missouri. They offer free training and great daily pay rates, which makes it a perfect part time job. Visit JMDisplays.com and click the Join Our Team tab to find out more. JM Fireworks. I love this song. I love nachos. Loving everything? You might be buzzed. You know what I'd love? A ride when it's time to head out. If you see a buzz warning sign, call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. News Talk 1290 Coil is your radio home for Omaha Storm Chasers baseball. Proud AAA affiliate of the Kansas City Royals. Tune in to hear every pitch, every hit, and every out as the Chasers play at Warner Park and across the International League in 2024. With the voice of the Omaha Storm Chasers, Nick Batters, on News Talk 1290 Coil. Tune in at 1290 Coil all season long for your Omaha Storm Chasers baseball as they take on the International League. It's Storm Chasers baseball on 1290 Coil. This is Unsportsmanlike Conduct. Can I get in on this? Sub 16, 20, the zone. When you knock us down, we're going to get up. And on the way up, we're going to bite a kneecap off. Crust is good on your pizza, not your ass. I will eat your ass first. He's tough as a Woolworth steak. And then it's going to take two more shots to knock us down. All right, and on the way up, we're going to take your other kneecap. I'm ready to hang them up, gut them, and skin them, and chop them up. You know what? I'm ready. My daughters aren't starving to death. I'll eat my neighbors. And we're going to get up, and then it's going to take three shots to get us down. And when we do, we're going to take another hunk out of you. Cliff, what's your, what are you going to take away as your best memory from playing basketball at Boston College? Probably just, like, going on to eat. Oh, well, once again, it's ballpark food. Yeah, what did you have last night? Well, actually, I didn't have it. Well, I was eating it during. Oh, during that's the right. I don't even I remember what it was. Chicken fingers. Chicken. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, that was weird. Oh, I lied last night. So I, I said I was going to do the chicken thighs, but uh, I got home and my, uh, my wife, she'd already made brats. And so I had brats in this really delicious potato situation where. Situation. I mean, it was like situation. Yeah, it was like potatoes in the crock pot with cheese and bacon. And then I drizzled a little ranch on it. I think oh. I'm going to do that again. For my dinner side, I don't know what I'm going to do is the main thing. I still have not made those thighs, so maybe I'll do the thighs, hmm. or maybe I'll do a couple more brats again just because it's easier and it would save time. But uh, I got to get home and take Banks for a walk. I also lied last night. I ended up having oh. a dog and a beer at the ballpark. Nice. Now, yeah, they don't have rice at the ballpark. They don't. I was hoping they would. Yeah. All right, what are you What are you doing tonight? No, probably rice. I think tonight's a rice night. Rice. Ah, okay. rice night. Well, today was the uh, the one day only unveiling of the breakfast runza. Yeah, at the 56th and Holdridge location here in Lincoln. I say here because that's where my home is. Um, the yeah, because you're at the ballpark right now, John. The line, the line at 7:45 this morning, and I tweeted this out earlier this morning. Yeah, and this was 15 minutes before it opened. The line was at least. On 56th Street, was down the street. I counted, and the video was only 30 seconds, and I still think there were cars lined up. It was at least three blocks long. It may have been longer than that to get this rare opportunity. Now, our friend Jack Mitchell did get his hands on a sandwich. Yes. And said it was very cheese forward. 
cheese and I eggs. The picture looked yesterday. Just didn't look like it was full of a whole lot of egg and meat. It didn't look good. Well, no, the the the, the picture that he had was different. better than the ones from yesterday. Yeah. Than the one yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I still think there's probably the work they would have to do on it. The problem is I don't think it'll ever happen. I don't think it will ever what happen. What time does runs it usually open? Well, probably like 10 30 or 11 okay, for lunch. yeah so yeah i mean it would they would completely have to change their not so much their business model but in terms of the hours what time you get in to start because it's not like you just flip on the the machines at 8 a.m and start right cooking stuff, you know so you'd have to it would change the hours of the employees quite a bit so yeah, it, it would be quite the expense to do it right and to do it Correct. at every location and that so. is what they you would theoretically think that they would want to do they would want to do you right in the words of Gary Sharp. People were late to work because of that. Of course they were, yeah. Yes. What if that's an the excuse? The priorities we have in this country. Mm -hmm. We like, hey, most important meal of the day, John. People forget. Yours. That's true. That is a good point. It is the most Yours. important meal of the day. Yeah, indeed. All right. Uh, great show today. I want to thank all of our guests. Uh, and uh, coming up tomorrow, it's Thursday. Mm, who do we have tomorrow, Nick? That is a good question. Our normal well, Robin, Thursday guest. Ro Robin Washett is usually Robin Washett. Yes. Nice. I'm looking forward to that. Yep. Any surprises, Nick? You get a surprise. Are you going to surprise us with a guest? Maybe. Maybe I will. Maybe we'll, Maybe. we'll do a little surprise. Let's and get we'll an NBA all be, guest on. And we'll all yeah. be back in studio for only the second time this week. Yeah. And then we're back. We're back at the ballpark again on Friday. Nice. Yes. Back, back right here, live at this ballpark. Where pregame has already started, I've got to get down the hall. Quickly. Yeah, you've got to get down the yeah, hall John. to do the, the game with Connor Happer, who you are doing the game with tonight. Grumball. Grumball's dead. It doesn't matter no, anymore. Nick, it's clean. It, I took it out of the dishwasher. I didn't know it was a dishwasher safe. It is. Of course it is. Oh. All right. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll talk to you tomorrow here on 1620. Bye. Bye. The best way to catch all the action is on 1620 The Zone. And no line for the bathroom. 1620 The Zone. Traffic. From the Pyramid Roofing Time Saving Traffic Center. No wrecks to avoid. If you're west on I-80, you're going to run into slow going from 42nd all the way to 72nd. If you're east on I-80, delays from 680 to 84th. Also, out on West Center Road around 180th, delays for both directions. If you're west on Dodge, stop and go traffic from 680 to 120th. And also delays on Dodge for both directions around 90th. I'm Mike Neville. This time-saving traffic is brought to you by the Nebraska Lottery. The Nebraska Lottery has raised over $978 million, which has helped provide more than 117,000 college scholarships, save wildlife habitats across the state, and fund new facilities at the Nebraska State Fair. The Nebraska Lottery, helping to build a better Nebraska. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Sharp for Lindley Clothing and